and we are back for the afternoon of day 18 of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. We are going to see a live witness after lunch after Depo testimony this morning. The first deposition of friend, ex-friend Rocky Pennington was, mm, it was what it was. It was hard to follow. It seemed a bit evasive. It wasn't uh, it wasn't really doing anything, but then everyone in the stream and apparently in court as well perked up for Josh Drew's testimony, which I actually thought was very good. So with that, we are going to be getting back into the courtroom in just a moment to see who this live witness is. Will they try to call Johnny Depp to the stand? Will they call Amber Heard's sister Whitney to the stand? I think that's more likely, but we will have live witness testimony this afternoon. I think that Josh Drew has been the best witness we've seen so far for Amber Heard's team. And again, that's fair. So welcome back in. Thank you for being Lawnards. You guys, we have been noticing extreme, uh, extreme growth on this channel today. And that has been, uh, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate you. Uh, thank you, Lawnards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, we are now at Oh, 410,000 subscribers on the back end. It's wild. There are almost 30,000 of you here. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm really truly blown away um, that you guys want to see what's happening in this courthouse and see how it goes one way or the other and evaluate the testimony. And we need to evaluate the testimony. What's good, what's bad. It doesn't matter what side you're like rooting for, like, Ooh, what do I want to see happen? We need to look at what's actually happening in court so we can understand what these jurors are seeing because ultimately they're the ones who decide. And with that, please let me know what you're coming in from. I haven't even had a chance to pour my Waterloo into my cup yet. There's food here that I'll start eating when court resumes, but we have got to get rolling because court should be back in literally like a minute. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. Court is not back yet. A lot of the questions I got um, this morning. Ah, did I close something? I closed something. No, <laughs> me. Oh, no, it shut down on its own. That wasn't me. I was like, I don't think I closed something. All right, let me go re re uh, restart the court feed because my browser crashed. It's why I've been using separate browsers for this stream and for the court stream. There we go. We have we have been restored. I just had a minor panic attack. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mercury Retrograde. Court is not back yet. Uh, just kidding. JK, I'm hearing audio from the court feed now, which means court is just about to come back. So let me go ahead and share that screen. The judge is taking the bench. And we are just about to call the next witness and find out who it is. That's my biggest question right now. Who this new witness? Who's this? Um, I think it's probably Whitney. It could be Johnny Depp. I think it's probably Whitney. So thank you, thank you, thank you all um, for your support this morning. I know this morning's stream was, uh, well, we needed to tell a story. So we we did the things. We did the things. All right. Judge A is looking at, who is she looking at? The jurors maybe coming back in? Perhaps? I'm going to guess that she's looking at the jurors coming back in. I like the blue with the uh, with the robes. I always love being able to see See the robes? It looks like they're standing up. This is a much, much emptier courtroom. Look at that. Um, you know, Runkle told us that jurors, or jurors, pardon, the gallery, that observers had walked out during Josh Drew's testimony, not because they weren't bored, but it seemed like they didn't want to watch it. So had Did walked out for an it? early lunch and aren't Your back yet. Witness. Your Honor, we'd like to call Whitney and there we go. to the stand. All right. Amber Heard's Before sister. You. Now she can pronounce Enriquez, but can't pronounce Vasquez, and I am confused. Oh no, not Umbridge. Well, Umbridge is doing the direct examination. So that's happening. That's happening. That's happening. All right. Amber's sister Whitney has taken the witness stand. Here we go. All right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Will Does her hair look like Amber's hair? Name for the record, Whitney Enriquez. And where do you live? Uh, in Glendale, California. And you're Amber's sister. I am. Are you? How old are you? Thirty-four. So you're her younger sister. Yes. Okay. Her baby sister. Are you married? Sister, and do you will? have any children? I am. I don't I'm know married if any of this is relevant, but okay. Okay. How old are your children? A three-year-old and a newborn who's just over two months old. Okay. What is your profession? Before the pandemic, I worked in hotels doing various food and beverage management jobs, primarily events as well. Okay. Now I'm going to take you to Mr. Depp and Amber, the early stages. When did you first meet Mr. Depp? I met him sometime in 2011 for the Rum Diary Press Tour, um, but I did not meet him until 2012 as Amber's boyfriend. And were you living with Amber at the time? Yes, we had an apartment together on Orange Avenue. Um, I split my time between there as well as a, an apartment I shared with my boyfriend at the time. Audio is better. Now, describe your relationship with Mr. Depp in the early stages. We got along really well at first. Didn't you teach him um, to start cocaine? He was sober at the time. And Johnny, when he's sober, is very bright and beautiful and lovely and kind and generous. And he was very easy to get to know. And warning, frankly, we warning. all fell your, in love with him. Your sister testified that you taught him how to snort describe coke. Describe your observations of Amber warning. and Mr. Depp's relationship in the early stages. Again, at first, that was wonderful. They were incredibly in love. I actually, to this day, have never seen my sister fall so madly for somebody. Um, and things were wonderful. They seemed to really understand each other and get along well. And But very quickly, this pattern emerged uh, as their relationship went on that if Johnny was using, there almost always was a fight. There was always a Objection, fight. Your Honor. <clears throat> Cause for speculation, lack of foundation. Oh, and this is the attorney that will be foundation. doing the cross okay. Okay. Does, does, What, if any His changes name, in their the relationship moment. did you observe? My testimony is so good. That when Johnny was using, there would be a fight. I saw it firsthand. <clears throat> objection, Your Honor. Same objection. Overruled this one. Thank you. I saw it Please firsthand is what she was saying. If, if he was using or if he was drinking, there was almost always a fight. There was always an argument. There was always a period where they weren't getting along. And it seemed to oscillate pretty quickly. He would be sober for a little bit and then almost just as quickly fall off the wagon and start to use or drink and there would be some big blowout and it seemed to go back and forth pretty frequently. There was never an extended period of time where it was one or the other. What if any changes did you observe in Amber over the period of her relationship with Johnny? Uh, at first Amber was Amber. She was, she was loud, fun, funny. She laughed a lot. She uh, was just this, happy, bright, fun, loving thing, always surrounded by friends. And then it just, it was a progression that took over such a long period of time. And it was so slow. In hindsight, it was like watching a slow motion gunshot. She suddenly stopped sleeping as much. She wasn't as funny. She wasn't as loud. Analogy. She wasn't as gregarious as she used to be. Cut to the end of their relationship. She was so physically unwell. She maybe weighed a hundred pounds soaking oh, wet. She at was emaciated. She wasn't sleeping. She had developed a heart condition and her eyes were sunken in. She just looked Objection like two right. different. Uh, lack of foundation calls for hearsay. She's giving her observations. Well, heart condition. I'll sustain as to heart. Calls okay. for expert Other testimony than the heart as condition, to heart please condition. Please continue. Uh, she just, if you were to do a photograph side by side, you would see two very different people. And people that knew her throughout the entirety of their relationships, all the same thing. What, if any, observations Bailey. did you uh, make about Mr. Depp's, <laughs> uh, Mr. Depp exhibiting controlling behavior over the course of their relationship relating to Amber's clothing? Objection, Your Honor. <clears throat> Leading. What, if any, observations did you make about... Too. I'll sustain the objection. It is leading. What, what if, if any observations did you Elaine? make about Mr. Depp's um, uh, treatment of Amber relating to clothing? At first, you know, he would. We're back to what if like anything. Light jokes or 
you know, if she left the house wearing something like, oh, you're going to wear that, you know, or just some joke. It was very subtle, you know. And then over time, again, just like the progression of their relationship, it just intensified. Uh, then suddenly it's, you know, she's, uh, they have the same stylist. He, um, he, and I, I forgot. Is that name, weird? But um, suddenly they have the same stylist and he had been essentially controlling what she wore to events and things like that. So she you went from thought. being able to wear whatever the hell she wanted. And then suddenly she's wearing Ooh. anything that her she stylist, annoyed. his stylist wanted her to wear. She sounds mad. Uh, or wanted him to wear. And it, her style over time just got more and more conservative. It should be. What, if any, observations oh, did you make about Mr. Hell. Depp uh, with respect to Amber's work? That, too, was one thing at first. It was he was saying he was protective over the kinds of jobs she was taking. You know, oh, that's not going to be good for her career. That's not going to be good for this, not going to be good for that. And then suddenly it's, he has a that? problem with her taking any sort of job or any sort of audition. And then it became every time that did she he tell you thought that? about taking a meeting. Or did she tell you that? It was another fight. He would often say things like, I don't even understand why she needs to work. I'll take care of her. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of everyone else. She doesn't need to work at all. It was one of those things that she he was seems angry. at the end vehemently against her working at all. What, if any, observations did you make about Mr. Depp's uh, uh Treatment of Amber with respect to friends. Uh, that, again, these are all things that just very she slowly over so time pissed. just changed. You know, at first, um, you know, he was very inclusive of all of us. At one point, we all lived downtown together in these beautiful lofts. You know, at first it was that was part of the relationship was um, getting to know him and him getting to know us. And then just, again, slowly over time, he took issue with Brandon at one point, and then Brandon wasn't allowed Who's in Brandon? the fold. Time went on, he had an issue with Io. Io wasn't allowed in the fold anymore. And then at some point, even me, he had accused me of Teaching doing just do something cocaine. horrendous that I had never done. Um, and then suddenly, I'm not allowed around anymore. And just over time, she had such a small network of people that were there to support her. It was hard to watch. Except for James. What if any observations did you make about Mr. Depp's uh, attitude or, or treatment of Amber with respect to health, her health? That's leading as fuck. Amber was, and it's her a, say. she was a pretty healthy person at first. She didn't have any, any medical issues that, you know, didn't need intervention of any sort. What if any MDMA um, did she But use? in one of Johnny's attempts to get sober, he had employed uh, Dr. Kipper, who had these nurses, and uh, he had a personal nurse that would like administer medication. And you she know, seems mad. I think the intention was to make sure that he stayed clean and objection, your honor. He calls for speculation. Yeah, it is. No, it Without doesn't call discussing for state the objections. objections, were just go ahead and give us what your observations were with respect to Mr. Depp. Buckle up, with Pam. Respect to Amber. We'll have what if any. Sure. Um, all of a sudden, for. Uh, really unclear reasons. Amber had uh, her own personal nurse just administering medication. And this might I, be how I, they're when I, from what I saw, it was strange. I didn't think Amber needed, you know, medication on the daily or whatever. And then all of a sudden she has a therapist that is employed by Dr. Kipper. Um, even her medical treatment was somehow controlled by or paid for by Johnny. Uh, objection, Your Honor. Uh, calls for speculation with respect to the control. Move to strike. Well, to She's coming for it. A lot. Okay, thank you. What, if anything, did Mr. Depp say about Amber's electronic devices? That's leading. Well, every time they fought or had an argument, one a, a device was going to get smashed. And she lost every a phone, time. a tablet, a computer. You could almost guarantee that something would get destroyed when they fought. Um, very often there were uh, fights were at least in part surrounded by text messages or something that he would find on her phones what or her you know, whatever. Like and at some point screens, she wasn't though. even allowed to have passwords on her phone or if she did have a password. That's it was fair, something Tina. really simple that he memorized, but there was zero expectation of privacy for her in terms of what was on her device or accessibility of her devices. How many times did you observe Mr. Depp drunk? Uh, I uh, countless. I mean, uh, too many times for me to quantify. 
How many times did you observe Mr. Depp high on drugs? Again, I, it would be really hard to put a number to that. It was a lot. She's undoing all of Josh what types Drew's of good drugs testimony. Did Mr. Depp use to your knowledge and your observation? Well, I personally, I've done cocaine and drank with him on a number of occasions. So that um, he almost always had weed of some sort, uh, marijuana, like you know, closet. joints or whatever. Um, I have seen him take MDMA um, on an occasion, shrooms as well. Uh, I once saw him consume a bag, a Ziploc bag that had a bunch of just unknown pills, some prescriptions, some not. He just took them all at once to see what would happen and he laughed about it. Um, so I, those are what I can recall. Okay. Yes. Now, you said that there you also did cocaine with Maybe Mr. Tomorrow. Depp, is that correct? Yes. Uh, what, if any, observations did you make as to what Mr. Depp carried in his pockets? Well, he always had... Pocket full of sunshine? Uh, he always had cigarettes or rolling papers. Um, um, when I say cigarettes, I mean the tobacco and rolling papers. That's fair. It could be tense and nervous. joint on him. Um, if he was he in a phase angry. of using coke, he would carry around a little pill box that had his cocaine in it. Um, no, don't do that. He always had a pocket knife uh a lighter and um yeah it's about what i can recall okay not a pocket what if full, any a behavior pocket full of sunshine? changes did you observe when mr depp had been drinking alcohol or using drugs um like i said it was why, why the you know long size a completely with everybody? different version you know he was almost unrecognizable when he was drinking because we have to end this trial excess. sometime if it was alcohol and coke he would he would slur he would go on these paranoid delusional rants about things that didn't make any sense he you know uh, his speech would be slurred i almost never knew him to use cocaine without drinking those were generally combined um when he would smoke weed he was much more relaxed he was kind of what you would expect happy on a couch laughing That's but when weird. he was drinking he would just get very angry it's and fair he that would she's just nervous. say really nasty, unkind things. And it almost didn't, usually about Amber, sometimes about me, but it almost didn't matter if she was in the room or not. He would just say really horrible, no. horrible, horrible things about her or to her. Can you give the jury an, a few examples that you can recall? Pardon my language, fucking cunt. He called her a fucking used up trash bag. Uh, not Slimy a trash whore, bag. Saggy whore. Uh, just, you know, fucking cunt was thrown out a bunch. Um, just horrible things like that. I'm going to take you to March 21st, 2013. Uh, we've called it uh, Thank you. the painting or Keith Richards incident. The Keith when Richards did you incident. arrive at the Orange Apartment on March 21st, 2013? Um, it was sometime in the afternoon. It was sometime in the afternoon. Um, I came in and um, Orange was typically a very neat, clean place. But uh, as soon as I walked in, there was a bunch of, there was smoke in the air. I remember there's, it smelled like cigarette smoke and there was smoke in the air. So somebody the had been smoking inside, new. which was odd because Amber and I don't smoke. And Johnny used to always just go outside to smoke. Um, but walking a little bit further in, there was like furniture askew, uh, going into the kitchen. There was, you know, uh, Johnny was sat at our little breakfast nook table that we had there and he was wearing glasses. He had, you know, so there loud. was cocaine in front of him. There was out booze in front of him, journal, like no newspaper, things like that, just kind of scattered around at the table. I don't think they need to be objecting and too I much sat yet. Down this is foundational to stuff. Talk to him to see what was going on. And it was really hard to understand what he was getting at. It was really clear that he had been drinking for some time. His speech was slurred and again, he was really it was really hard to follow what he was trying to tell me. At first he seemed to be upset that um, my sister had been photographed with our friend Marie in France. Uh, he then started saying that it must have meant that she was having an affair with her and, you know, everyone would be laughing at her. And um, 
this woman, her father was a French politician. So he then starts rambling on about, oh, he knows what her, her father's up to and her this, that, and the other. And again, it was just this strange paranoid tailspin is the only way I can describe it. That just, it wasn't true. My sister wasn't having an affair with this person. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, I think this is pretty non-responsive at this point. Yep. Uh, all right. Next question. Please, please, same objection. Please describe what your conversations were and your observations were with Mr. Depp. Um, uh, I'll actually, so uh, as I'm sitting there talking to him, Amber is in the, the kitchen and, you know, she's not sat at the table or anything. She's kind of hanging back and Johnny's still talking to me about what the problem was. And then all of a sudden the focus shifts to this painting that has been on the wall ever since Amber and I moved in and uh, the painting was done by one of my sister's exes. Um, so he was convinced that it was on the wall to taunt him, to tease him and how disrespectful that he had to wake up next to this painting. And it surely meant that Amber and Tasha were back together again, which of course was not true. Um, but he was then upset about that. He was upset about this painting that was on the wall. Um, we had, I was trying to talk to him, not only to just try to figure out what was going on, but I was trying to get him out of the house because he was already very late for uh, filming this That's documentary fair. that was being shot at one of his houses. Was that with Keith Richards? Correct. Okay. That was my understanding of it. Please continue. Um, so for hours we sat there. That's also I was fair. trying to you know, Carla. talk to him, make him feel like everything was That's okay, just try to get him out of the house. He, uh, his assistant kept coming in and out at one point. Um, and all the while, Amber is just in the kitchen. She's, again, she's like giving us space, but she's in earshot and he's saying these things about her. And at one point she tries to come over to like check on him and she kind of embraces him, embraces him from behind and he's just like, fuck off and, you know, continues to say these things about her. And again, we sat there forever and eventually we did get him to leave the house. So... Um, I, but he insisted that Amber come too, and that if they were going to work it out, she'd have to be there and they would talk about it at some other point, I guess. Let me just stop you for a minute. What if any injuries did you <gasps> observe on Amber at that time? She might be, this might be a at nervous the time. I, it was fair, before I had a real understanding of what me. was going on. It was pretty, I, I didn't know, frankly, I, and her face was swollen and but I didn't, and it was kind of red. I, I thought she had just been crying. Um, and her lip did appear to be cut. But again, that at the time, that wasn't what we were trying to do. It wouldn't have been appropriate to, you know, talk to her about it or anything. That wasn't my focus, frankly. My focus was just sitting there trying to figure out what he was upset about and get him out of the house. So how long were you at Orange with Mr. Depp and Amber before he left to go to the Keith Richards? A few hours. Um, I couldn't say yeah, maybe around like four or five hours. Okay. It was a, it took a minute. Now, did you accompany Mr. Depp over to the recording or did you stay? I did. Um, and did Amber, Amber, did Amber go too? Correct. Okay. That was, that was part of the condition of him leaving. He, is that Amber had to go with us. All right. Well, please describe to the jury what happened next then on your ride over there. So Amber and Johnny were sitting in the back. Um, I was in the front with uh, Sterling, the driver, and I, they weren't saying much back there. There was music playing pretty loudly, so I couldn't really hear what was going on back there. Um, but at some point, I heard the back door open, or the back window open, and Johnny is holding our dog out the window. And I, I froze. I was scared. Because I just remember thinking I knew how inebriated he was, and if and the dog was very small, I thought if she very twitched small. or you know if he lost her somehow, she was just going to go out the window. Um, and Amber, of course, was just saying, "Objection, you know, Your Honor." <clears throat> Um, not often to prove the truth of the matter asserted, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. It's okay. non -responsive Don't say what Amber point. said. Just go ahead and, and continue your with say. your uh, observations. He brought the dog back into the car. Um, and he was just laughing this really scary, loud, like it was almost like a cackle. And um, he then made some joke about putting her in the microwave. And that was the joke after that was putting the dog in the microwave. Okay. So 
During the year 2013, what, if any, marks did you uh, observe on Amber? Any injuries or signs of markings, anything like that? Occasionally I'd see bruising, cut lips, split lips, weird marks, burns, or I don't know, on her arm, scratches on her arm, things like that. It was just, it was just weird and it was periodic. It wasn't like a, a constant thing, burns? but there were, there were injuries to her. And, and what, if anything, did you do? Did you ask her about them? Burns? I did at some point confront her and ask her and she... Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Don't tell, don't tell us. Objection. Okay. Next question. Okay. But you did ask this her. This is going to unravel. Yes. yes. Objection, okay. Your Honor. Same objection. Next question. Uh, no, that, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. Overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for um, saying it's fine, right, Elaine. I'm going to take you to June 2013, Hicksville. Thank you. Were you in attendance at that event with Mr. Uh, Depp and Amber? Yes. yes. Please describe for the jury what you can recall from that event. So Hicksville is like this, um, it's this like collection of themed airstreams. It's like a little, uh, it's in the middle of the desert. It's just like a fun little place Didn't to go. YouTubers so we went with a group of our Did friends. Did Hype House go there? Is that where Hype House um, went on their show? And I think that is yeah, where so Hype House one of us show. had our own little airstream or whatever. So uh, my partner and I at the time, we got there last so as we're going around checking out the different airstreams, because again, each one of them had a different theme. So it was kind of fun to see, you know, who was staying in which theme or whatever. Um, I open Amber and Johnny's and there's cocaine on the table. And I didn't really think much of it at the time. I was just like, all right, fine. We're all here to have fun. Um, and that night, you know, we sat around the campfire. Uh, everyone was drinking. Some people were taking shrooms, you know, um, and then I, I drank too much and I went to bed early before everyone else. It's fair. Um, and then the next day, uh, you know, when everyone was cleaning up, I, I had heard about something that had happened the night before and, uh, an altercation that objection, your honor here. Don't, don't tell us what you heard. Go ahead and just tell the jury what you observed. I observed people cleaning up after what appeared to be just a night of, friends hanging out. They prepped the witnesses um, to look at the jury. I then went to my to sister's tell what trailer, they were told. Just, you know, where she was staying Come with Johnny. On. And it it looked like a bomb went off in there. There was it looked like a bomb broken things. Uh, things had been skewed. It just looked incredibly messy. It looked like somebody had ransacked it. That's very different than what um, we heard from Rocky. That's what I observed. Okay. Now I'm going to take you to September 2013. What, if anything, did you do with Mr. Depp relating to going to London? There's a better way to ask these questions. Uh, so September 2013, that was uh, around the time of my birthday. Amber was filming in London, and um, it, she wasn't able to make it back for my birthday. And it was also a friend of ours, um, Io, also has a birthday at the same time That's or around the same said. time as, us, uh, as me. And um, Johnny thought it would be great to load up and surprise Amber on set. Uh, he thought she'd really enjoy it. And like roll out on so a private we jet. Did. We loaded up, we went on a plane that he chartered and uh, I believe my father was with us as well. And yeah, Johnny and I drank and did a lot of cocaine on that plane and I ended up passing out, but um, we get to London and, you know, we had, it was, it was wonderful to see Amber and uh, we had a dinner that night at the hotel that we were staying at, or it was either that night or the next night. I can't remember exactly, but um, at one point, Johnny picked up a steak knife and he hurled it at his assistant, um, missed him, but Obviously, Nathan got upset and he left and he was upset as well. And I, it, a fight broke out between Amber and Johnny that night. Uh, I didn't, I, I didn't witness it. I wasn't there. I just, I knew objection, that they were. Objection, you're on a lack of foundation. No, I, I didn't witness it. Time. I wasn't there being so the key word. You can't tell us that. about it if you weren't there. So okay. what happened next that you were aware Did of? you not prep your witnesses? To know what I they left can and can't sometime talk about. after that. And when I touched down um, in Los Angeles, I uh, I learned that they had. Objection, been, Your Honor. Uh, 
No effort to prove the truth. No, I'm sustain the objection. Next question. Oh, here we go. I haven't when had enough food for this, engaged? Elaine. I'm getting they angry. got engaged at some point when I was questions. on the plane. I left London. By the time I landed in London, they were engaged. Okay. Thank you. Now I'm going to jump all the way to November 2014, the 2014 Hollywood Film Awards. What, if any, involvement did you have with Mr. Depp relating to the Hollywood Film Awards? That's a good question. Ish. I was called over to where he was getting ready, 80. Um, and when, 80? when you say 80, are we what? talking about Sweet Sir? Yes, that's one of the houses that is on uh, Again, that street that like Johnny his. had. He had several houses on that street. 80 was the one that um, he referred to as like the man cave. That's where he spent a lot of time. Is that where his recording um, So I was, was summoned to 80. Again, following a fight that he and my sister were having. And Ob objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. Yep. I <laughs> just go no, on. No, just no, don't no. talk about what you weren't party to. You got okay. there. Yes. Please tell the jury. Okay. Oh, okay. Please okay. tell the jury what you observed, what, what happened sure. when you were there. Witness sure. prep uh, when I got should there, not happen in real time. Johnny was, uh, was outside and he was very drunk already and he was continuing to drink. Um, he was again rambling about my sister having affairs oh, with John people that it, it just wasn't John true and John just kept saying things. It was, you know, that she doesn't need to work and I, he doesn't understand why she continues to take jobs. She must be doing it to insult him or to hurt him or she's only taking these jobs because she, you know, she wants to meet people. I don't know. It, the entire time that we were talking, his sister and his, um, you know, uh, assistants at one point, everyone was trying to get him out of the house uh, because he was already very late for this. Um, but eventually they did get him to leave the house. And yeah, I, I saw the award show later at some point. And what did you observe when you watched the award show? Unfortunately, an extension of what I had seen at the house. He was I'm more still upset with very Elaine drunk. at this point. Um, actually, Elaine a little bit more drunk than when I saw him at the house. Didn't prep her as a witness. And what was he doing that caused you to believe he was very drunk? Well, Elaine, he was drinking the entire Elaine's time that we the were problem talking. Here, more than witness. And at the moment. you know, in general, at this point, I I had understood what Johnny looks like when he's drunk. He's stammering. He, his speech was hard to understand. He was slurring. He was super unsteady on his feet. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I recognize what he looks like when he's drunk. Okay. Now I'm going to take you to March 23rd, 2015. And that description of him drunk um, is consistent with his time, security guards. Were you living at the penthouse suite? I was. Okay. Um, excuse me. Sorry. When, when approximately did you move into the penthouse suite? Uh, whew. Yeah, Elaine is. Um, I want to. I, I actually don't know for sure when I moved in. I would take me a minute to remember. It was sometime in 2000. That's um, fair. Slow down. Take a breath. Four, I'm uh, 14, I think. Okay. Good. We've and now so slowed down. As of March 23rd, 2015, you're living there, correct? And she looks frozen. Yes. And, and where. Where are you living in those penthouse suites? What is it called? So I was in what they call PH4. Uh, the layout is. You know, the entire top floor of this that building, nerves, um, Johnny owns them all and he was kind enough that to let us nerves. all live there. So I was I was in PH4. Amber and Johnny were in PH3. Um, I believe Isaac was in two and Rocky and Josh were in one. But the only ones that actually connected were three, four and five. So, again, I was kind of sandwiched between where Johnny and Amber stayed and Amber's basically closet so basically you had to cut through closet. to get to one the point to the other house not the other penthouse um so i was sleeping i woke up to amber in my bedroom saying can you believe he's cheating on me objection your honor you're not offered to prove no. the truth oh, of the oh, matter oh, asserted oh, Thank oh, you. Lane, Thank you. stop Please yelling continue. uh she said something she no, said no, so she, she said overruled it's okay oh. for you to say what oh just sorry brief brief just briefly what you just explained she, I woke up to her saying, can you believe he's cheating on me? Your fucking brother is cheating on me. I got up. I told her to stay right Objection, there. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. It's not offered to prove the truth of the matter That's asserted. That's ruled for that statement. Go ahead. Please I, continue. I instructed her to stay in my apartment while I go and talk to Johnny. 
Um, so I, I, I leave pH4, events. I leave her in pH4. And let me just stop. Are, are you Don't sober, you drunk? Have you been drinking? Oh, rare occasions where I was sober. <laughs> I was, oh. I was, I was in the, was in the middle of the night. I was asleep. Um, so I'm sorry. I'm not sure that I understood your question. So you were sober. Oh, right? absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Please, um, con please continue. Rare so occasion I go to where I was sober. Five where um, Amber, I'm sorry, Johnny, um, Debbie, and Travis were all standing in the kitchen um, of PH five. I was, I went down there to talk to him, and again, I can, I can tell he's clearly drunk. And he has a bottle of, uh, of alcohol of some sort in front of him as well. And again, he's talking to me about how he, how Amber found these text messages between him and a woman uh, called Rochelle. And then he starts saying that this woman was meaningless. Uh, it was just, it wasn't anything special. She's nothing special. But then he immediately shifted to, well, Amber, Amber pushed me. Amber made me do it. And yeah, of course I'm cheating on her, you know whatever, and it suddenly became about Amber making him do it. Um, at some point, then Amber is on the mezzanine level of pH 5. So she is, it's kind of hard to explain. So the kitchen's down here and the mezzanine's up here. So she's there, it's her little office nook, and she starts shouting at him, uh, saying, you know, Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. It's not offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted, Your Honor. She's screaming expletives at him. I mean, that's not offered right. to prove oh, the truth. Oh. Thank you. It goes more to state of mind. Please they're, continue. They're saying horrible things to one another. Fuck you. You know, he's calling her a fucking whore, fucking cunt, used up trash bag, you know, whatever. They were saying horrible things bag. to one another. She was calling him old and fat. It was a fight. They were saying really nasty things to one another. I leave them in the kitchen to go up the stairs, was trying to calm Amber down, hopefully get her back into my apartment. And Debbie had come up with me. De and Debbie, who's Debbie? Debbie was his nurse. At Debbie the time. Lloyd? Uh, yes, I believe that was her name. Okay. Um, leading. So we're with Amber on the mezzanine level. I'm sorry, just so we know who Weir is. Is it you and Debbie that are with Amber? or is Yes, Debbie, okay. Debbie, Amber, this and I are on nerves. the little mezzanine. This this area moving forward um, this and as I nice. mentioned the mezzanine looks overlooks the the kitchen and the living room so Johnny then hurls a red bull can and it hits Debbie in the back this is she the didn't staircase even incident. react she didn't really seem to notice um but I'm I'm standing up there talking or I'm standing up there I'm at the top of the stairs with my back to the stairs and that's when Johnny runs up the stairs and my again I'm facing Amber he comes up behind me, strikes me in the back, kind of just somewhere over here. He strikes me in the back. I hear Amber shout, don't hit my fucking sister. She he smacks hits him, her now? lands one. And then he grabs, at that point, that's when Travis runs up the stairs after Amber landed one. And But by that time, Johnny had already grabbed Amber by the hair with one hand and was whacking her repeatedly in the face with the other as I was standing there. Travis pulls them apart. I get Amber into mine. I close the doors behind me and lock them. I then hear Johnny's voice <clears throat> shouting. Uh, never mind. With John. Okay. Sorry. I hear Johnny's voice shouting, "You! I fucking hate you. I hate you both. You fucking cunts. You fucking whores. And I hear crashing. I hear crashing and banging and smashing. And he starts screaming like an animal. And... I then like an just moved Amber into the next room and I just kept her there all night. The next day I go and I see her closet has been completely destroyed. Um, racks were overturned. Yeah, one of the clothing, ra clothing racks had been like tossed down the stairs. There was art off the wall. Um, and down in the kitchen, there was broken glass. Like it just, the place was destroyed. The Michelle, was can destroyed. you bring up defendants exhibit 400? She is going rapid Whitney, fire. Do you recognize this this text exchange here? I do. Okay. And it's on March 23, 2015 at 657. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Could you describe, Objection just identify it, please? After Sorry, Australia, he would have. All right, you want to approach? We'll take a look. 
So this is after Australia. His hand would have been in a cast, which was what Depp's team had pointed out in other testimony. If his hand was in a cast, how was he grabbing hair and punching? He was recovering from MRSA pins in his cast. And if he was punching someone in the face with a cast, then why wasn't there more, um, more visible injury? Um, she lands one, landed one. Amber Heard's words exactly. Yes. I'm holding her hair, punching her face. Didn't he have his hand in a cast? He did. I'm going to answer some of y'all's questions. I wonder if she's nervous. It seems like she's just like, uh, like this rapid fire. I don't know if this is consistent with previous testimony because we will see it. Um, and we will see, oh, I don't know what the, the judge was making a face. We will see that on cross-examination. I haven't sought out any of her other testimony. I have not seen her testimony. So um, with that, you guys, this witness is now, you know, on television, likely nervous, didn't finish her depot, knows that this attorney whose name I don't know is going to be doing her cross. She is likely nervous and or frustrated and or angry and or exhausted of this whole thing. So please no name calling. Um, I understand the frustration that it seems that, you know, Johnny Depp does drugs, big bad monster. She says, this was one of the rare times I was sober and everybody's like, okay, it's totally fine. Um, it's just odd. Amber Heard wants Johnny Depp to get better, but still has her rarely sober sister around. Yes. These are excellent points that will come up on cross. I don't, I clocked that. We all clocked that. It was like, oh, this is one of the rare times I was sober. Um, but Johnny's in recovery. So it's just going to be very interesting seeing where this goes. So chat, thank you for sticking to the facts of what we're seeing and not accusing someone of being under drugs, under testimony. That would be a very odd circumstance. I think nerves and or fear and or anger are more likely. How is she a reliable witness if she's really sober? Uh, they'll get to it and cross. Um, it looks like you're taking your own notes. Can I ask why I am taking my own notes for the things I want to remember and cover when I do rebuttals, things that stick out in my mind. Um, because that's how I would do it. If I was watching this trial for a friend, if I was doing this trial myself, or, I mean, if I was sitting on a jury. So if I was sitting there watching the attorneys do this trial, this is what I would be doing. So I do take notes because there are things that stick out to me while I'm doing this. And that's one so of this them. Is, uh, can we publish your honor? Yes, his hand would have been wrapped. Thank you. How does she remember every detail from years ago? So, it's a good question. Whitney, this is dated March 23rd, 2015, 6.57. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's to Kevin. Who's Kevin? Who's Kevin? Kevin Murphy. He was Johnny's estate manager. Okay. And then, Michelle, if you can scroll up. So let's stop at the first one. Can you please describe to the jury what this is? That is one of Amber's clothing racks um, on the stairs that lead up to the, the bedroom area. And you took this picture? I did. Okay. I Michelle, thought this was from December. Again? I thought this was the December. I thought the closing um, racks were December. I'm jury, so confused. What's depicted in this photo? These are more of Amber's racks. They, these were her shoes and purses and such. Those were all like taken off the walls. And you can see here all of her clothes are on the floor. I don't her see shoes. everything taken off the walls. Okay. These look freestanding, but okay. I mean, okay. And we're up to the next one. Could you please describe what the next picture depicts? More of the same. Uh, clothing racks that have been kind of toppled over or moved. Um, they used to, they were like neat. It, it looked like a, you know, it's a closet room. But these ones were just toppled over or moved. Uh, this is the room that adjoined my room. So, okay. Let's go to the next one. And could you describe for the jury, please, what this is? That's another clothing rack that has been taken down and Don't taken know. apart, kind of. Taken apart. It looks pushed over. Okay. But all right. And we'll go to the next one. And please describe for the jury what's depicted here. More, just more clothing racks that have been taken down, moved. Okay. And please describe for the jury what's depicted here. Same, Same thing, just more clothing racks that were toppled over. All right. And if we go to the next one. And this is the kitchen area. This is the, the uh, taken from the mezzanine level that I was describing earlier, but that looks like broken glass or On something. There? Blue ceramic, broken. That looks like okay. Okay. And if we go up, 
And the, the top one there uh, looks like part of what was earlier. Let's go to the bottom one. I think we have a bigger picture there. Does that help? Don't testify a yes. What's depicted there? I still can't tell what it was. Maybe a plate, plate? of some sort, but Maybe. there's also um, a rolled cigarette, a couple bottles of water. Where's but the yeah, rolled cigarette? Whatever the, oh, that blue thing is, water. it's broken. There's the cigarette. So it's all over the, the kitchen there and also next to the stove. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, after the staircase incident, uh, what, if anything, did Mr. Depp ask you my to incident. sign? Uh, there was an NDA on my kitchen table. Can you tell the jury what an NDA is? It's Calls for uh, a non-disclosure agreement. It's basically, um, my understanding is it's a contract to uh, keep things private. To shut to the fuck up. Keep your mouth shut, essentially. All right. And you were given one or asked to sign one? I was asked to sign one. Um, I don't I did I don't believe yes. I signed it. I okay. left sometime after. So you moved out after that? It was yes, it was after this point that Johnny had accused me of selling stories to the media, which were absolutely untrue, but I moved out after that point. Okay. So moved out after now, the staircase. Did there come a time that Amber asked you to move back in? Yes, um, February 2016. She texted me asking me to come back. Okay. And so so you were living with her from February, sometime in February 2016 forward? Uh, I think on and off. I think I had my own apartment by then, but I spent a lot more time at the Eastern after that. Okay. I'm going to take you to April 21, 2016, Amber's 30th birthday party. Were you present for that? I was. Can you please describe to the jury what you observed that night? At least this is moving faster it than other testimony. It was her thirtieth birthday, so we wanted to make it, excuse me, really special. It, um, we had made this beautiful dinner. Um, was it tacos? You know, and it was it was great. All of her close friends were there, and um, everyone was having a really good time. Everyone was having fun. Um, you know, Johnny showed up very very late. Um, and he was drunk when he showed up. Um, Amber was obviously upset about it, but um, there came a time in the party where we all went around the table and said our favorite thing about Amber, you know, just funny memories or whatever. Sounds like a real uh, housewife's dinner. When it came to Johnny's turn, he told this story about how they first met when uh, they met for the rum diary. So, you know, he had this story about how she came in to his office and she sat on the couch and she, her perfect ass left a perfect imprint on the couch and he wouldn't let anyone sit there after she left that day. And it was one of those stories that I, everyone was kind of embarrassed. You know, we had all gone around the table saying really nice things about her and gets to him and he's talking about her ass. Um, we were all kind of embarrassed and secondhand embarrassed you were you secondhand embarrassed i left uh pretty shortly after that okay and i went home what if any conversation did you have with mr depp about his plans to attend coachella is, the next day this is about he was planning on coming to coachella with us um party opponent you know statement uh, at some you know whenever at some point we were talking about what was happening the next day and so that night, he told First us I've he was going to come to Coachella with us the next day. I remember. Okay. And did he ultimately come to Coachella with you the next day? Nope. Okay. I'm going to jump oh, that's forward right. he to talked, he talk testified about, why he uh, changed his mind. Some statements that were made, the counterclaim. Um, what, if any, observations did you make She's moving about quick. how the statements, we're talking about the three statements from that we're quoting Adam Waldman. Uh, She's moving real quick. Impacted Amber. And I'm asking for your uh, observations. Just tell the jury what your observations were of how these statements impacted Amber. How did Amber. you know it's the statements, though? I think it calls for a conclusion. Uh, lack of foundation. Calls for a conclusion. Oh, it's all the Thank things. Thank you. Amber has worked so hard to overcome everything that she went through in the duration of their relationship. She is really, really tried her best to move past it. And this is moving past it. Anybody that knows Amber at all knows that and this is non-responsive. Some of the most important things to her 
are honesty, integrity. It's her reputation is all she has. She doesn't have she said, piles of money and private islands or objection, Your Honor. Oh, it's so non-responsive. I sustain the objection. I'm please. She please was. I, she, she was devastated I, by the. She sustained she, the objection. It, are they wearing best friend necklaces? To say that they're not true, it it devastated her. And also, we had just buried our mother. Um, you know, so Amber, she started having panic attacks they randomly. Are. They're she wearing was not sleeping. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. That is hearsay. These are oh, your oh, observations. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Please, How did she observe continue. her not sleeping? Damn it. I needed a picture of the These necklace. These statements devastated her. They devastated her because they weren't true. And... How do you know that? Okay. They were just very, very, very much affecting her. And you talked about panic attacks. What else did you observe that, that she would do as a result of these? A physical. She would just like per like periodically just break into tears. She, uh, she, I don't know how else to describe it. She was, she was, she was so unwell. She stopped sleeping again. She, was super anxious. She couldn't. She couldn't relax. She couldn't sit still. It was very similar to the Amber that I had seen back in 2016 as she was trying to get out of this relationship. It launched her back into this space where she was just so physically unwell, and she she cried a lot. Thank you. I have no further questions. Wow, That's that was fast. That was really fast. They moved in and out on that. That was um, that was actually better than Amber Heard's direct, but they moved very, very Good afternoon, quickly. Yes. Very quickly. We haven't met before. My name's Rebecca Leckeros. I'm one of the lawyers representing Mr. Depp in this case. What up, Rebecca? Thank you for um, introducing yourself. You grew up in Texas with your sister and your parents, right? Correct. And you were wow, really was quick. close with Ms. Heard growing up? We were. And you're still close now, right? We are. And you love her, of course. And your childhood, though, had some difficult moments, right? It wasn't perfect. Your father hit you and your sister at times, right? Yes. And your sister would protect you um, from that abuse when she could, wouldn't she? We would protect each other, for sure. And when you graduated from high school, you moved out to Los Angeles, right? I did. And your sister gave you a place to live in LA? Yes. And she helped support you? Um, in, in part, I also was working myself and yeah. And you're grateful to her for being there when you needed her, right? Of course. Goes to bias, yep. And just like she protected and cared for you, you wanna protect and care for her, right? She, it, and when I can, of course, but it's, yeah. Um, you uh, testified to having a great relationship with Mr. Depp um, when you first started dating your sister, right? Correct. And you thought of him as a brother? Yes. He called you sis? Yes. And you had affectionate nicknames for him too, didn't you? A number of them, yes. Yeah. And you testified that for a time you lived in the ECB penthouses um, with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. That's correct. And Mr. Depp owned those penthouses? He did. You didn't pay rent while you were living there, right? You didn't pay for any of the bills for the penthouses? No, it's very generous. And Rocky Pennington lived in one of those penthouses also, right? She did. And at some point her boyfriend, Josh Drew, moved in, right? Yes. And Isaac Bruch uh, lived in one of those penthouses too? Yes. And you know that he testified here that you call him your spirit animal, right? <laughs> I did not know that, but <laughs> he, yeah, he's wonderful. You, you call him your spirit animal? Uh, I, at one point I did, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you took trips with your sister and Mr. Depp also, right? Occasionally. You didn't pay for those either, right? Nope. I did not. She's doing a good job of During not backing course away from these things that are Mr. obviously Depp and true relationship, and not standing um, down from them, just in their arguments, answering right? them honestly. Yes. Just good testimony. In fact, uh, you had a nickname, right? Marriage counselor. Yes. Um, you often felt, found yourself mediating disputes between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, right? Clearly not very well, but yes. And Fair. when you were in that role of marriage counselor, you empathized with Mr. Depp, right? Yes, on occasion. Because you had a pretty good understanding of what he was going through? 
Oh, uh, interesting. It depended on the situation. Sometimes I could totally see from his perspective. Other times I saw it from her perspective. Well, you'd been there with Ms. Hurd before, right? We're sisters. Of course we've argued. And you knew what it was like to want to run away for days and do your own thing and not have Ms. Hurd there fighting with you, right? I think that that's sounds like kind testimony. of taken out of context a little bit. I, you know, I think more metaphorically. Um, but yes, I have, I have been in arguments with my sister. And you have wanted to run away for days, right? Sure. And not have her there fighting with you. Sure. You talked a little bit about the incident in March 2013, right? Which one? Yep. That was the one before um, you went to the Keith Richards yes. documentary set? And you were present with Mr. Depp at Orange that day? I was. Um, didn't you do cocaine with Mr. Depp that afternoon? Yes. And she isn't backing you said away Mr. From Depp's already intoxicated? Good responses on he was cross. by the time I got there. And he was fighting with your sister? He wasn't doing much of anything. He was sat at the table. He was telling me about the fight that they had. Her pacing is so different. So he was been kind fighting, of he'd been fighting with your sister that day when you arrived. That was my understanding. And does she seem she more comfortable face. on cross? Yes. And despite all of that, you decided it was a good idea to do mis cocaine with Mr. Depp at that juncture? I hadn't yet connected the dots. I hadn't yet Did understood what that more meant relaxed? or what that would do. That, that was a yes? Yes, you took cocaine with Mr. Depp. I did. Yes, I already said that. <clears throat> right? She seems more comfortable talking to opposing counsel. Um, you testified that you had suspicions uh, that Mr. Depp was allegedly hitting your sister by some point in 2013, right? This is so odd. Suspicions. Like it and notwithstanding that, in June 2013, you were actually joking quick. with Mr. Depp about hitting your sister, right? Regrettably, over a text message, yes. You were encouraging him to hit her? I was not literally encouraging him to hit her. But you were joking about it? Regrettably, yes. Again, lax. I did not have an understanding Lex Foundation? fully Lex of what context. I was. I never would have said that now, knowing what I know. But that was alleged. That was around the time that you allegedly became aware that he was. That I don't there were know injuries on your sister that caused you to have suspicions. I don't know if it was around the same time. Turning to the um, the staircase incident in March two thousand fifteen. So interesting. Um, you testified that Mr. Depp allegedly hit you during that incident, right? Yes. But you aren't sure if that contact was even meant for you, right? I honestly don't. I don't know what he was aiming for. My back was to him. And you weren't injured Maybe. during that incident, right? No, I wasn't. And you didn't seek medical attention? No. And you said Debbie Lloyd was there during all of that, correct? She was. And Mr. Depp's security, Travis McGivern, was there too? Yes, he was. And you saw your sister hit Mr. Depp on the stairs that day, right? After he struck me, yes. This is much more consistent on cross the way you look at the she questioning one, right? attorney. And then the next day you found some damage in the adjoining penthouse. Correct. And we saw some pictures of what you saw that day, right? Yes. I don't think they need to be aggressive yet you on cross. You thought it was important There's to no document that to. damage. Right? I think this is a good tone Not to for document. Cross. Um, it was Kevin's job to kind of clean up the houses, oh, take care of the sense. houses. Um, I took pictures just so he could be aware of what he would need to bring. Please clean um, this up. I didn't know if he had tools here or whatever. I was just preparing him for what he was going to have to fix. That makes but sense. But you didn't take any pictures of your sister that day, right? No, I didn't. Now, she does, after she March 2015... Relaxed. You continued to have a close relationship with Mr. Depp, right? This is a good pacing for Cross. Yes. And you still loved him. Of course. And you were there for him if he needed you, right? Of course. And in fact, just a couple of weeks after that staircase incident, you were still acting as the marriage counselor, weren't you? Yeah, an aggressive point, Cross sure. is not a good play here. Unless it needs and, to. Uh, that fall, after the staircase incident, October 2015, um, you claim you had seen Mr. Depp hitting your sister. And then in October 2015, you were actually still trying to reconcile him and your sister when they were fighting, right? Interesting. Yes. I was asked to support. I was just trying to help what I thought they both wanted. 
I was just trying to support or trying my best to support them the way that I thought I could. You still love Mr. Fair. Depp at that point, right? I did. You love and someone you who didn't beats think up your that sister? he and your sister were past the point of no return, right? What I thought was irrelevant at that point. I, I really, it, those two were in love and they were working very hard. They wanted to be together, it seemed like. So what they both wanted, I, yeah. I just helped as best as I could. I don't know how else to describe it. Your, sis, your sister still wanted to be with Mr. Depp, right? And she loved him. And you didn't think they were past the point of no return? I don't know what you mean by that exactly. Okay. Um, let's take a look at um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 1283. It's not yet in evidence. So we'll just show that to the witness. Late to viewing, thought the questioning attorney was for Amber Heard. Such affable okay, chemistry um, for opposing counsel. It is. I might approach your honor. It's I interesting. Have this in, um, redacted and unredacted. But okay. this testimony is very interesting because, again, she's locked in on uh, the questioning attorney, which is very consistent and common in cross examination. You don't really know what's coming, and you're looking at them so you can hear what they're saying and process the question. It's very common that you're going to see that. Just looking at the attorney, not trying to look to the jury for every answer. She looked at the jury quite a lot um, in her direct, but her direct, her pace was flying to the point where it sounded a bit angry to me. It could have been nervous. It looks like we're going to get some text messages here. It could have been nerves. It could have been, it could have been, you know, anything fear. It could have been stress. It could have been anger, but you know, it's interesting watching her not know what to answer and what not to answer because witnesses should be prepared for testimony, not told what to say, not scripted, but prepared. Hey, you're only going to be able to testify to what you saw, what you did, what you experienced, not what you were told, not what you think somebody else was thinking, only what you saw, what you heard, what you did. And even when it comes to hurt, it's going to be noises, not what someone told you. Like I heard a car crash or what have you. So it's interesting to me when I say this witness was not prepped, it didn't seem to me like this witness was prepared for, you can't say what was said to you. You can't, the, you can't speculate about why someone else was motivated to do something. It's like, if you're testifying, oh, and then I, you know, somebody's running down the street. Well, I saw this person running down the street. I guess someone was chasing them. That's speculative. You can say, I saw someone running down the street. That's it. So she should be prepared to understand what she can and can't testify to. And it's kind of a mess that they haven't. They knew this trial was coming. They have been at this for a long time. So to not have preparation. And again, I was frustrated with Amber, but it might be that her attorneys didn't prepare her, which I didn't even conceive of in a case that's cost them. We know from Amber slipping on the stand over $6 million. How are your and witnesses not prepped? It's a mess. Uh, Ms. Enriquez, if I could just direct your attention, uh, we can go to the third page, please. Do I have control of this or no? No, you I do not. Think Sorry, she we'll, meant we'll put it up for rare you. Rare occasion that she was sober during this period of and time when this was all going on. We can go back to the, to the first page if you'd like, or um, we can take a look at the unredacted version if we need to. But do you, do you recognize these as text Everybody's messages got that you clear sent to glasses. Mr. Depp on I... October 2nd, 2015? Do I need clear reading glasses? Do I need new frames? Everyone um, has the same kind of clear glasses. Yeah, vaguely. I mean, they're clearly my text messages, but yeah, I recognize them. Thank okay. you. And if we can go to the third page, please, Tom. Thanks, Tom. And you'll see the, the second blue box from the bottom there. You texted Mr. Depp and you said, I love both of you so much and would fucking stay out of it if I thought this shit were past the point of no return. Mm -hmm. But that's not where you guys are right now. Did I read that right? Oh, but that's not where you guys are at. Yes. So you, you didn't think they were past the point of no return in October 2015, right? Not here. At that point, clearly, I didn't. This is cross. So this is, she didn't say that. So um, this is impeachment. Oh. Like, oh, but you did say that. So that's why. So it's not hearsay because it's she's being impeached with her own prior inconsistent statement. You wanted Miss Heard to stay with Mr. Depp even after you allegedly saw him hit her, right? That's really oversimplifying something that's far from simple. Um, that's not the again, question. That's Amber not the question. Was Objection, not very responsive. much in love. So was Johnny. 
she's telling me that she wants something, whether or not I agree to it or not, whether or not I was okay with what was happening. It wasn't my place. If my sister said that she still wanted to be with Johnny and if I could help with that in any way, I was going to support her. I was going to be there for her to support that. Yeah. You you didn't want to contradict your sister, right? Pardon? You didn't want to contradict your sister. I don't know if I'd characterize it that way. I just, I, again, I was trying to support my sister the best that I could or knew how or thought she wanted. And you say you wanted to protect her though, right? At that point, I don't know if I would categorize it as that. I was just trying to support my sister. You went to Coachella with your sister for her 30th birthday in 2016, right? Yes. And you testified that you were aware, um, I believe, that she and Mr. Depp uh, had fought the night before. You could have turned your microphone on, Ms. Bretterhoff. (laughs) Elaine, turn on the fucking mic. You can answer the question. Yes, I was aware that they had argued the night before. You didn't see any bruises on Ms. Hurd at Coachella that year, though, right? Yeah, she was wearing a lot of makeup. You didn't see any marks on her? Not that I can recall. Didn't notice any swelling, right? To the best of my recollection, uh, I don't. She doesn't want to say that. You can hear it. And your sister didn't have a working phone on her that day, did she? No, she didn't. But you did? Yes, I did. And you wanted Mr. Depp to know that um, Ms. Hurd's phone wasn't working, right? Uh, I believe I reached out to him for her, yeah. And you were encouraging him to reach out to her through you if he was trying to reach her, right? I believe so at one point, yes. You didn't want him to think that he was ignoring her? I'm sorry? You didn't want him to think that he was ignoring her, right? Sure. Um, And you wanted them to reconcile, didn't you? Amber really wanted him there. Despite the fact that they had had a fight the night before, it was very complicated. It was very nuanced you know they fought they got back together they fought they loved each other they hated each other they loved each other uh i just remember her wanting johnny to come to coachella at some point whitney's like it was a I wasn't trying to reconcile them i was just trying to roller coaster help facilitate and i was doing what my sister wanted that's, and you did that even fair. though you were concerned about marks that you say you'd seen on her since at least 2013 and during the course of their relationship right Again, that's really oversimplifying something. The mods told me how to we do it. We all saw this. Uh, it is a solid cross. We all thought that Johnny, we would see Johnny on the other end of this. Because, again, when he was sober, things were wonderful. When they weren't, when he wasn't sober, they were terrible, sure. But we all thought that he was just going to get better. We all wanted to just see the other side of that. So, yes, sure, if you look at it simply. But it's not simple at all. I S- and Don't addiction is not simple. And, and, I and think this that's was after fair. you allegedly saw him hit her, right? Yes. And you knew that they had just had another fight, right? Yes. I like the pace of this cross. It's so You know much who Jennifer easier. Howell is, right, Ms. Enriquez? I do. Oh, She's shit. the founder of the Art of Elysium nonprofit. She is. Here we go. And you worked there for a time, didn't you? I did. A lot of you know what's coming. Around May 2015, you actually moved in with Ms. Howell, right? May 2015? Yes. Whoop. There it and is. You moved out of the penthouses because at that point you and your sister were fighting, right? It was, yeah, it was around the time that, you know, he had accused me of leaking stories. And that was the impetus of me leaving. And you, te- you testified earlier, I think, that he had asked you to sign an NDA, right? At some point. And that was around the same time that he was concerned you were leaking stories about their wedding to the media. <laughs> I believe so. Um, you and Ms. Howell were close. We were. Close enough that you lived with her for around a year? I don't recall if it was that long. And you confided in, you confided in Ms. Howell, right? About some things, yes. She was my friend. You called her your chosen sister? Ms. Enriquez, um, you claim uh-huh. to have seen signs of injuries on your sister during the course of her relationship with Mr. Depp, right? Yes. But you never witnessed any incidents uh, that result- resulted in visible injuries to your sister, right? Uh, other than the staircase incident? 
I, I witnessed that incident. What are you asking me exactly? You never witnessed mm, any trying incident to figure out that the resulted purpose in of the question. signs of injury that you were concerned about over the course of their relationship. The thing about a trap is Other than the staircase incident, I did witness that. No, at no other time when you- No, that was the only time that I saw him. And you didn't see what caused any of the injuries you claim to have seen saw during the course of what? their relationship, right? Other than the staircase incident. Yeah, staircase incident is the only one that I saw. But you have seen your sister land a blow on Mr. Depp, right? That was the time, yes, after he hit me. After he hit me. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, redirect. I have no redirect. All right, is this witness subject to recall? No. Wait, that's it? Is this subject to recall? No. Okay, all right, ma'am, you are free to go or you can stay in the courtroom. Are they okay? saving Thank you. it? That was way faster than I thought. No all redirect. Right. Our next witness, Your Honor, is another deposition designation. Okay. Damn it. It's going to be, um, how long is it? Was, this particular one is about 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Okay. All right. While we go ahead and it's early, while we go ahead and take our afternoon recess, though, I'll answer questions. Um, that way we can get everything ready uh, for you. Much so we'll just take our 15 minute break now and then we'll come back shorter. and have that deposition. Okay. So uh, that was we'll see much you in 15 shorter. minutes. Don't do any outside research and don't talk to anybody. That was much shorter than I anticipated. Much, much. I thought we were going to get into Jennifer Howell saying that Whitney Heard said she didn't, or Whitney Enriquez didn't uh, see injuries or didn't say that. And they kind of went down that line. I don't know if this is going to be a rebuttal witness. It looks like the jury's so getting ready. So that's 45 minutes. And what do you, you have another? Uh, yes. Then we have another one. And another. So we, have we have a few more. How okay, many so they're both depositions. Yes. Yeah, all the rest of them today are depositions. Okay, I just want to make sure we, we don't need any uh, other items from that. Okay, that's fine. We'll, we'll come back at 3.05 then? Okay, all right. Thank you. Interesting. So we will be back in court in about 15 minutes. That witness left the courtroom as quickly as humanly possible. Um, did you see how fast she was walking off the stand? We are going to go... Um, we are going to go through some of the questions and super chats. There's over 118,000 of you here. Thank you so much. That was interesting. I might need to watch that again at some point, but that was, that was shorter than I anticipated. I mean, much shorter than I anticipated. How could be a rebuttal witness um, on deposition if they have the deposition? It absolutely could be. So is it, uh, let me see if I wonder if how will be a rebuttal witness seems odd to end on that and not have the nail in the coffin. It does. It felt very, <laughs> for all of us that know that how could how's testimony contradicts. Um, it's very, very interesting that I think what we got there is a very different recitation of the staircase incident with a Depp hit me and you never saw any injuries on your sister and, that was it. It was just odd. But Whitney was strong, but it was very short. And the, look, I think it is highly likely that Whitney's testimony was very limited by the court in advance because she didn't finish her deposition. And her pacing on direct was so different than her pacing on cross that it was odd. And that was a very short testimony. I will probably watch that testimony back to parse it a little bit more. Because her her testimony with regard to the staircase in, uh, incident was wildly, just wildly different. So let's get to some of these questions. For those of you that are new here, welcome. Um, if you want to stay in the loop, if you're in North America, textemily.com is a free texting service like the one Phil DeFranco uses and others where I can keep you in the loop with what I'm doing and my recaps and videos and say hello and happy birthday and things like that. So you're welcome to join me there. I'm going to go look real quick because we have been watching the binger today. Today's been absolutely um, unprecedented in channel growth. And that has been very interesting to see. So thank you all so much for your support. Let's get to some of the super chat questions. Um, her story makes no sense. The way she delivered her testimony was hard to follow. It was so so fast on, um, it was so fast on her direct examination that it was jarring. It was kind of odd. It was just a very odd rapid fire cross. Um, so that is, that is just absolutely something. So let us just, there we are. We're y'all, y'all are doing the things y'all are doing the things. So, um, 
she's more prepared for the cross-examination with Elaine. I don't know if she was more prepared or more comfortable. It was odd. Elaine needs to trademark what, if any. Oh, don't do that, Elaine. Don't do that, Elaine. Amber is looking at her sister in a very intimidating way. Um, I've seen that look from a narcissist. I was subject to not good. It, it, it's interesting. The necklaces are interesting. Do you think Elaine was quick as to not catch any inconsistencies like Amber? Maybe, maybe. E.G. sister asking her not to lie. I maybe, maybe it was just like get the get in and get out. I mean, not always a bad if you're worried about a witness. Not a bad strategy. Look at the necklaces on Sister and Amber. They're each wearing half a heart to make. I know I saw the the best friends necklaces. We talked about that. What happens if a witness becomes unwell on the stand? Uh, the lawyer could ask for a break um, and take a break and then sort it out. Can Amber Heard claim incompetence of her lawyers? No. Uh, and get a retrial? No. Her lawyers haven't done anything that we've seen. I don't always like their style, but we haven't seen any um, incompetence at this point. I've... I've, I've not always been complimentary, but we're not at that level. If they grew up, like she said, would it make sense being confronted aggressively would be more comfortable? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm not, I am a lawyer, not a therapist. Uh, do you think Johnny Depp's team is worried at all? If so, why? I mean, they always have to be worried. This is a hard case for them, but I think today is going as well as can be expected. They are going to have hard days during Amber Heard's case in chief. I think Amber, Amber had more bad days so far than Johnny Depp did, and that should be comfortable for them. I don't know if she is terrified of her own sister, but I just got a message from one of our mods um, from Trevor. Uh, let's see. Where is this? Trevor, Tre Trey Vader 30. I would like to propose to the most beautiful woman in the world. Nicole, will you marry me? Well, Nicole, Trey Vader 30 would like to know if you would marry him. That's a very sweet proposal. And again, we're loners here. We get to share these things. Uh, Runkle tweeted, y'all are like, the judge is back. We had a wedding proposal. We had to get to the proposal first. <laughs> we had to get to the proposal first. And then after Trey's proposal proposal to Nicole, and Trey, you're welcome to clip this, send it to Nicole. Um, we will we will go look at Twitter. I will go look. I will go look at Twitter. I'm going to the Twitter. All right, I'm going to turn that up now that they've cut the audio feed. Runkle must have stepped out. Uh, and our friend, you know, friend of the channel, friend of LawTube, well, LawTube, LawTuber, uh, Runkle the Bailey is in court today. So let's see. Um, Runkle said, weaker cross on Whitney, but jury wasn't liking her at all. I think her evidence won't move things either way in the end. And now back in more comments later. Sorry, folks. But if you thought Hurd's team wouldn't ever manage to move the ball during their time, that's not a real, like, realistic expectation. That's totally fair. No trial is ever just a one-sided slaughter. Um, this one has been unusual in how bad Amber's team has been doing so far. That's very fair. And weaker cross on Whitney, but jury wasn't liking her. And again, you get in and get out. You get in and get out. You get in and get out. Proposals like pledges versus donations. <laughs> No, like real proposals. Like it's meant, it's meant. Emily needs to become certified to conduct weddings at this point. Uh, ZB, actually, I am. I've done three weddings. <laughs> I have done three weddings. It's a lot of fun. Sent you tons of DMs from an old case. Okay, I will I will look at it. They didn't ask about whether um, Amber had ever hit Whitney. I know there's been allegations of that. So we will see. All right. Um, Let's see was in domestic court in North Carolina today and told a couple other attorneys to come to your channel to catch up on this trial. Hi, thank you very much, uh, Dana Dane. I had, uh, my friend was in court the other day and was like, no, I told some of the judges to go watch you. Law and Crime just read a text from someone that works with Whitney uh, that said that Whitney is lying. Whitney told her that she, Whitney, was scared of Amber, was going to kill Johnny, and he didn't hit Amber. There, um that's probably the individual that they were alluding to at the end of it. Um, Jennifer Howell, who has filed a sworn declaration that Whitney told her she was lying and is probably a rebuttal witness. So we will see how come Depp's lawyer isn't digging any deeper onto Whitney. I think they're going to point it out later. I don't think, I don't know if there's any point because Amber Heard's 
testimony was so bad. I don't know if there's any point of digging in on Whitney other than being like, well, that story is completely like, why even address it? That story is so different than the other ones. Forget it. We're just not even going to pay attention to it. It's preposterous. Sometimes writing off testimony is more powerful than giving it credence. Um, so it's just like, ugh, whatever she's, and again, they went into all the bias questions. You love your sister. You're protecting your sister. Your behavior is inconsistent. You were asking your sister to get back together. You were advocating for them. You still love Johnny after he hurt them. Look, I still remember um, my brother was playing basketball. God, I was in college. He must have been in the end of junior high, high school, early high school. He was playing basketball um, in a like a rec basketball league. And another kid pushed him while he was up going for a, a hoop thing, pushed his legs out from under him and he landed on his wrist and you heard his arm crack. I was literally out of my seat running because that was my response to someone hurting my brother. Um, I was so furious. I, and just wanting to make sure my brother was okay and wanting to make sure someone was away from them. And after that, when they played on the same sports team later, I was still looking at that kid. Like, I know what you did as a child. When you played basketball with my brother, I have not forgiven you. Um, so if your sibling is in a domestic relationship like this and you're advocating as the marriage counselor for them to get to back together, it's just odd. It's odd. Do you think they could only ask questions that Whitney covered in depot? Probably. I think it's probably limited to that. My mind goes to the fact that she said she had a, uh, my mind goes to the fact that she said she had a two month old. It might be why there was no time to prep her. Like maybe they weren't sure if she was going to be here. This can happen on a phone call though. Hey, remember, you can't say this, you can't say that. It can happen over lunch. It doesn't have to be formal. She was clearly there before lunch. She testified after the lunch break. So, you know, so you know how Coke and alcohol turns Johnny Depp into a violent, crazy person and you repeatedly do Coke and drink with him. Well, and then she said she fell asleep and, um, and teach him a better way to do Coke. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's stuff they're all going to point out. I think they're going to write off Whitney's testimony and be like, she's protecting her sister. She's protecting her sister here. She's she's buying into her sister's side of the story. And that's what we would expect. Do you think it's distracting to whoever is testifying when Johnny and his lawyers are talking to each other? Possibly. It would distract me. Um, she broke out in hives when questioned by Umbridge. I do that when I'm put on the spot and highly nervous. It's, I mean, very possible. Can the jury take notes from everyone's testimony? They absolutely can take notes. Question, is there a chain of command with the lawyers on each side generally? Um, example, Chu is in charge and directs Camille. Uh, yeah, there's generally a lead counsel. That's kind of the, the kind of tiebreaker on strategy. But what I'm seeing on Depp's team, because we've seen more interactions there on camera more, what I'm seeing on Depp's team is that they are working as a really well-oiled machine. But yeah, uh, Ben Chu is clearly lead counsel on that team, but they are working as a very well-oiled machine where everybody knows kind of their role and knows what they're in charge of. It seems a little different looking at the other side of the table. She's comfortable talking to opposing counsel because she's not talking to her abuser. I mean, I, oh, I don't know if you're talking about Hurd or Bretta Hoft. Interesting how Hurd's family does not want to wear, does not wear any makeup to make them look pure, genuine, down to earth, vulnerable, whatever. I, I don't know, but she had her hair done by, it seemed that she had her hair done by the same person who's been doing Amber's hair because the style was similar with the braid and the kind of elaborate bun at the back. So you could have talked to her while she was in hair and makeup. Somebody could have, an associate counsel could have, one of the research attorneys sitting in the back row. Somebody could have prepped her about what she can and can't testify about. I don't understand. Why do they keep saying everything was destroyed when we see pictures as a couple of pieces of broken glass and spilled wine? Will the jury pick up on that? I think the jury's going to ask why the testimony and the photos don't match. Emily, please check timestamp um, 1815 on the stream. Whitney said that Amber Heard woke her up and said, your effing brother is cheating on me. Isn't Whitney Amber Heard's sister? Yes, but she and Johnny Depp referred to each other like siblings is what I got because Johnny Depp called her sis. And so I, the way I took that when I heard the testimony was that Amber Heard is like, oh, well, you're all so close. He calls you sis. So he's your fucking brother. Go do something about it. That's how I interpreted hearing that. I'm not surprised. Thank you for what you're doing. Best commentary on YouTube and congrats on surpassing 400K. Thank you. We are, should we check in with where we're at? Now it's just like, it's just a thing that we do apparently right now. Um, yeah, that's where we're at. That's it. She and Amber changed 
Whitney's story, at least twice in the UK trial seemed then that Amber was directing what Whitney said on the trial. I don't know. It'll come out. Um, can the jury communicate while in the courtroom? No, they can't. I mean, they can talk to each other at breaks, but not about the trial. They shouldn't talk in open court, but they can't talk about what they're watching or anything. They can't be like, did you catch the necklaces? They can't talk about the trial. They can't be like, so what'd you have for dinner last night? Anybody want tacos? <laughs> Why is she allowed to testify if no depot? It must've been sorted out by the court. Cause again, that was an objection. They objected to her testifying with no depot. You guys, this is just bananas. It's bananas bananas. So, um, oh, thank you for reminding about the likes. Do the YouTube things, the likey, subscribe uh, YouTube things. You can find me around the internet at the Emily D Baker. If you're new, that's where we are. She's saying that she, that he was controlling, but everyone had keys to their house and living together until after the TRO. Yeah, that's, that's what the testimony has borne out. They never talked about the control of the devices either. My ADHD mind uh, would keep me from being able to get dressed if I was in a room with that many clothing choices. I imagine maybe the stylist makes those decisions. I don't know how that works. I pick a black shirt every day. <laughs> and that's how I keep it easy. We pick a black shirt. Oh, we're at, we're at like 413 in a minute, you guys. This is crazy. Hi, from Switzerland. Question, do you think, here, we're going to go this way. Do you think um, as a sibling, being a witness is considered more than someone that isn't related? I think the jury could interpret it either that they had a better opportunity to observe it or that they have more motivation or bias to maybe not be truthful. So it depends on the juror's own experiences. Interesting. Isolation of a victim goes hand in hand with abuse. It does. They talk about Depp and the cell phone, but he moved all of her friends and family in. Mm -hmm. That happened. It's a question because that happened. I'm still trying to understand how Johnny Depp didn't cause damage to his cast at hand when allegedly hitting Amber Heard. Cast or no, um, you can ruin reconstructive work. That's why they were trying to pin down when he had the pin in his finger and Amber was very loose as to the dates about the pin in the finger. But again, if Amber told her sister about what happened in Australia, would her sister even want to be around Johnny Depp? <sighs> Does each jury member have a screen in front of them? They don't. There are big screens in the courtroom. And then there's a large screen that it looks like it turns uh, or it comes up where the witness stand is that faces the jurors for them to watch the video depositions. So there's screens around the courtroom, but no, they don't have individual screens or they have one at the witness stand. So that's why they're getting ready. And here I thought today was going to be boring. Well, you might speak too soon. There have been moments and that Josh Drew depot was very good. And we might see some good depots this afternoon. Is it weird that they use the same verbiage? No, because I imagine Whitney has heard these stories from Amber a lot. So it's not weird to me that they mimic each other or mirror each other's languaging. I think it'll come up on closing. Um, do they differentiate between domestic dispute and domestic violence? This case is over defamation regarding domestic abuse. The jury gets to decide what domestic abuse means, how broad or how narrow, which is why this is a hard case for Depp. If the jurors are like, no, living in an environment where you're fearful, um, if somebody is using and then they're going to be aggressive or yelling or whatever, that can count. And I think this jury might find that it does count. But that goes to the print article. If the jury finds that that headline in the digital article is not proven, then they can split these charges. But we will see um, what happens. Let's see. Um, Runkle just tweeted. Um, let's see. There we go. It should, I should note that Elaine seemed to be happier with Whitney than I would have been. She, but she was probably also mindful of cameras. They've been seeming to really push the, we all like each other as PR today. Interesting. Um, this says only if you disregard the police body cam footage, which was released after his right, deposition and contradicts jury? every single right. one of his assertions about the incident. Yep. But Depp's team is going to have to beat that drum and they haven't had a chance yet. That's fair. Oh, judge is back. Um, they have changed the timeline of these events more than once trying to confuse the jury. If you go back, you can really tell. And that's going to be wrapped up in closing. That's exactly what closing is for. So 
That text says 6.57 a.m., 23rd March. She just testified that the stairs happened on 23 March. How could the closet be trashed before the actual event? And those are the kinds of things that they need to point out on closing to the jurors. Should we do one more? Let's do one more peek. I'm just nervous. I'm just curious. Um, I was just curious. That's where we're at. She doesn't seem nervous so much as terrified. That's very fair. I think we'll all read her testimony differently. But something was up on direct that wasn't up on cross. Where's the NDA? How is she able to state that fact with having it as proof? I don't think anyone contested it. And she never signed it. Do they? Oh, we got to that one. I'm going to get the jury's not back in yet. There we go. We're going to have, let's see who's Be next. Seated. All right, your next witness. Can she appeal? She Our didn't have bad counsel. Your Honor, is Elizabeth Mars. But she can't appeal. Oh, Mars, M A R S. M A R Z. M A R Z. Elizabeth Mars, M A R Z, is the next video depot. Let me make. Please state your full name for the record. Elizabeth Ray Mars. Not Kim Between Kardashian. Between the time that you lived in New York, so let's say 2007, 2008 through 2015. So this is likely 16? Camille Vasquez. Mm -hmm. How many times would you estimate that you saw Ms. Heard? I don't remember. I have no idea who this More is times? or what they're going to say. Mm, no. This could in be a makeup artist. And 16. Do you recall how close you and Miss Pennington were as friends? I'm glad you guys like checking the numbers. Yeah, Thanks we for indulging me. Close. Um, she does look like Kim Kardashian. Close. Mm -hmm. In your previous testimony, I'll represent to you, Miss Mars, that you testified that in at least in July of 2016, you would communicate with Miss Pennington weekly. I don't remember. Maybe at that time, perhaps we were communicating. Like I said, there were moments where we were communicating weekly or daily. I agree with me that you would remember something as significant as one of your girlfriends telling you. The jury doesn't know how to talk about that at the break. I want to Texas, talk about that at the break. When you were young girls, you would remember if Miss Heard told you that her husband or fiance or boyfriend was beating her. I'm so saying you remember much. that, correct? And your testimony is that you only lived at the Eastern Columbia building in February of 2016 for two weeks. Oh, she it lived there. It was around two weeks. I don't know the specific amount of time, but it was definitely a little over two weeks, less than a month. I mean, she stayed there. That's um, not living there. That's yes. staying there. I mean. And when you stayed at the Eastern Columbia building, did you stay in one of the penthouses? Yes. Okay. And did you understand that that penthouse was owned by Mr. Duff at the time? I assumed it was, yes. And for what purpose did you go to the Eastern huh. Columbia building on May 21st, 2016? The jacket on, jacket off is hot. To is assist weird. Raquel in getting ready for a bead show that she was going to be doing the following day. Did you ever see Mr. Depp be violent towards anyone? Well, I experienced him that night as... Um, like, I was personally, I was scared of him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, that's all I can say from the moment that uh, the one interaction I had with him that night, it was frightening to me. His behavior was frightening to me. No, she wouldn't wear no, makeup? I mean. Oh, the cut I was didn't, weird. I don't think of her as someone who wears a lot of makeup. No. Yeah, you've um, known her a long time. Amber? Right? She's never been somebody that wears a lot of makeup, correct? Exactly. Interesting. Unless she's going to something that she needs to put makeup on for. Unless she's going to but something. But other than that, she's usually... Bare-faced and beautiful. Yeah. What about Amica your Cream? Your best oh, she liked being called beautiful by Camille. Look at that. Penthouse five, and never huh. left with Miss Heard before Mr. Duff arrived. Is that correct? Correct. So you hear some type of commotion. No, I.O. called 911. You don't know where it's coming from, correct? It sounds like, yeah. It's, I mean, it sounds like it's coming from... CR, I know it, you have. I hear, we hear commotion, and it feels like it's getting closer and closer and closer. Did it sound like she did love that voices or did it sound like destruction? It sounded like voices and destruction that the door was abruptly opened. Correct. Abruptly open. Oh, if Camille called me beautiful, I would. Okay. Also so you enjoy hear it. the commotion. It feels like it's getting closer. Mm -hmm. That's when closer. the depot was done. What happened next? Then, you know, soon after the door slammed open and Johnny came like bursting through the door. Who opened the door? Johnny. Okay. Was Johnny alone? There was the two men behind him. Okay. Following you, him. This is 45 minutes. So Johnny minutes. opens the door. He's got his two, what we'll assume are his bodyguards with him. What happens next? So it all happened very fast. He I'll basically, talk about this at the, break. the door kind of burst open. 
And he came in very, just from my perspective, really under the influence of something, drugs or alcohol, because he was very sloppily, like, he looked wasted. He was holding um, a very large bottle of wine, looked like some sort of like a magnum bottle of wine, which was kind of spilling all over the place. And as he opened the door, he just, what I remember what he mumbled was, get your bitch out of here. And I just remember it all happened very fast, like the door slamming him saying, get your bitch out of here, the wine, that whole, you know, his way, his whole being really frightened me. It almost felt like he was coming towards me from my perspective. Whether he was coming towards me or not, it scared me. And I just ran out past him. All my housewives fans. Said, Mr. That's Jeff all I thought of when she said wasted. I thought either naked drunk wasted. or high. Is that correct? He was seemed to be intoxicated. Okay. Is that different than drunk? <laughs> um, no. I mean, yeah, I guess. No, yeah, I he mean, definitely yeah. seemed like he was under the influence of something. <sighs> and on May 21st, 2016, how is Mr. Depp's demeanor different? He was... It was a much more sloppy no, this and is all over the Mars. place and frightening and um, yeah, combative, you know, felt very angry. He felt angry and yeah. And when you say combative, what was combative specifically about mm. his demeanor? Just the way he burst through the room, just very forcefully and rushed in very quickly oh. to the point that it made me want to get past him and run out very quickly. Like it wasn't an invite. It was, it was very, yeah, it was intense. Okay. They so count Mr. Depp towards the side that's questioning the door, when they're questioning. Penthouse five. So this is Depp's side. you hear him say something to the effect of get your bitch out of here. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then you ran out immediately. I noticed that too, and I didn't yes. want to say anything, Did but you I'm see feeling. Mr. Depp spill any wine. Style of speech. In Penthouse Five, before you ran out. Yeah. Yes. Yes. How much wine did you see him spill? I don't remember. A lot. The entire bottle. Not the entire bottle. What my so what I remember was it was flailing, and it was there was definitely wine that was coming out. Would you say that being sloppy is different than being combative? Um, yeah, I would say sloppy and combative are two different things. And it's your testimony that Mr. Depp was on May 21st, 2016, both combative and sloppy, correct? Yeah, I would describe it that there was a little bit of both. Of com yes, but combative and sloppy. Was he more sloppy than he was combative? It felt more combative and sloppy. And just to clarify, the only thing that was combative was the words he was speaking? No, it was his, completely the way he entered into the room, rushed in, his energy, the way it felt like he was coming after me, like he almost felt like from my, where I was standing, it felt like he was charging towards me and I was scared and it was, um, Interesting because Josh Drew said he was charging towards um, him. It felt, yeah, combative. It felt... I'm trying to look for another word that can describe like he was pissed? what I felt, but it was, you know, it was scary. My heart was beating really fast, very quickly, and I was freaked out. Okay, so after you exchanged some text messages with Miss Pennington, you came out of your hiding spot. At least Camille's and doing then the questioning. Went to Miss Pennington and Mr. Drew's penthouse. Is that right. correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So who was in Penthouse 1 when you got out of the hiding spot and came to Penthouse 1? I mean, uh, it was Josh, Raquel, Amber, and I were the people that were at some point in there during that time. Okay. Do you remember the first time you saw Ms. Hurd after this incident? I remember seeing her after that, that incident, and it was in the, that apartment. In Penthouse 1. Correct. So the first time you saw Ms. Hurd after this incident on May 21st, 2016, was in Penthouse 1. What do you recall seeing, the first thing you saw when you saw Ms. Heard? Mm, I just remember she looked really upset and disheveled and her hair was a mess and she had a 
swollen face. Red, she had a red swollen face. Okay. Had you ever seen Ms. Heard cry before May 21st, 2016? I don't think so. Not that I can remember. Interesting after just hearing Whitney's testimony that she would just burst into tears. What side of her face? The timing is hard. I think it was her right side of her face. Do you have an independent recollection that it was the right side of her face that was swollen? I'm taking myself back there and trying to remember like where I was standing versus, you know what I mean? I think it was, yeah, I think looking at her, it was on my left and her right side. Okay, so let's talk about her hair seemed disheveled. So you said her mm -hmm. hair was disheveled. Mm -hmm. Was she crying? Yeah, there was definitely tears. Was she animated? Yeah, she was visibly really upset. Okay, so visibly very upset means what? She was crying. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what else? Uh, tears, sadness, uh, felt like confusion. The pacing of this um, is brutal. Felt like those were the main things. Would happened. you describe it? It's in fact what brutal did out here. Drew say, if anything. <clears throat> I don't remember him saying what he said. I think everybody was just shaken up. So soon after you went into Penthouse One, you remember some police officers coming. To I remember, one. yeah, I remember there was police officers in the hallway. Mm -hmm. okay. Was Ms. Heard icing her face? After the incident, but before the police arrived? I think so. Who gave her the ice? This pacing is remember. brutal. So you were in Penthouse One when the police came. Um, how do you know that they came? What did you hear? What did you see? Um, because it, they, they said the police are here. So I don't, know, I don't remember. Again, this is a very long time ago, so specific details are going to be really hard for me to remember. And I, think I just that's know, fair. knowing that police were there. But wasn't the it dramatic? And in February, like, aren't the police being called dr for dramatic? Weeks, you didn't hear or see any abuse by Mr. Depp towards Ms. Hurd, correct? Correct. And did you go to Amber and Johnny's penthouse thereafter, yeah. or where did you go next? So I, I just remember at some point ending up, yes, at some point we were in their penthouse afterwards in Johnny and Amber's. At some point we went over there. And did you go over there, you think, after the police came? It was after the first two police officers came. Okay. Do you remember glass on the floor? At this point in time, I don't remember what I saw. I don't remember if it was cleaned up by the time I got there or Weren't you if there, there was glass there? on the floor when I walked in. Do you recall seeing wine spilled? I recall seeing wine spilled in the hallway, like a lot of wine spilled in the hallway. When do you recall seeing the wine spilled in the hallway? at some point in the night, maybe after, you know, before. Uh, I, I recall, I mean, I don't remember specifically, but I remember seeing wine spilled in the hallway. I remember that being one of the things that I saw that was part of the destruction of whatever went, happened. Okay, so the police come and you stayed in Penthouse. The destruction. One. Correct. Okay, it was after the police officers left that you went to penthouse three yo correct? i forgot to Lee. grab jelly beans call scene and i'm regretting that hallway. deeply i remember seeing wines fall in the hallway yeah okay and you saw the wine after the police officers came correct i think so didn't miss pennington take any photographs of the scene i remember raquel taking photographs of amber's face and now going to your description of Ms. Hurd's face, you said it was the right side of her face. Actually, Io called the police in you New York and was, was on the phone what, with Amber and heard mm -hmm, Amber and right. Johnny fighting mm -hmm. is Io's what testimony. Else? 
and Amber's um, testimony. Yeah, it was swollen. Partly Depp's red. testimony because Depp said I was on the phone. Was any part of her face more swollen than others? It was around her eye. Had bruising developed already? No, it was red. And Nick, swollen. yes. They, if you don't know 100%, so I don't you know is the only any correct answer. On Miss Heard's face the evening of May 21st, 2016, correct? I saw a red, swollen, puffy. Yep, that was important okay. testimony. And just on Pictures the right side, correct? After correct. police left. But it, wasn't it your testimony, Miss Mars, that you were inside Penthouse? One, when the first police officers came to the Correct, scene. correct. Okay. And how much time do you estimate they spent in the penthouses? I don't remember. The second group of officers, there was two sets of officers that came. The second set of officers that I actually um, was in the apartment in PH3, I think it was. Did you hear about either Ms. Hurd? Mr. Drew or Ms. I don't have candy in cleaning the kitchen. anything. No worries. That Mr. Depp allegedly we'll grab some in a minute. destroyed. I don't remember, but I'm I I do remember that I, I'm pretty sure that Josh was He's picking up kids. helping to clean up soon. Before I got into the I remember that knowing that the place was cleaned up before I entered in there. Before you entered into where? I just need into to get to my kitchen. It's apartment. fine. So you recall Josh Drew cleaning up before I'm not surprised you but the entered jury doesn't Penthouse have it yet. The jury needs that three. declaration. What was he cleaning up exactly? I uh, just remember up. by the time that I had got gotten into that apartment that someone had cleaned up the glass and the wine that had been that was on the floor. Called who told you that Penthouse three had been cleaned up? I don't, no one specifically told me it was, um, what I was expressing is that it was cleaned up before I got there for the most part. I just remember that for the most part, from what I, rem I don't remember. To clarify, <laughs> Mars, when you came from what I was told three, after the police officers, the first set of police officers came and left, you did not see <sighs> silver candlesticks, candelabra sticks, broken on the floor, baskets of fruit that had been on the kitchen island, she fruit didn't everywhere, see baskets it. on the ground, she didn't containers see it, holding Bessie. spoons and forks, kitchen utensils spilled, a lamp, She's trying to explain why she might not have seen it messy. Broken in penthouse five. I'm sorry, penthouse three. Now that I'm reading this, I'm sort of remembering that there was like some stuff that had like something that had been broken, like a little statue, like the statue thing kind of sounds familiar to me now that I'm reading this. But again, I don't remember when I walked in, if there was, if, and I don't remember this being on the, on the floor. I don't remember seeing. Okay. So you don't remember seeing it. And that's yeah, I don't remember seeing it. I don't remember. But again, as I'm reading this, statue, the when I see the statue, I kind of, there's something that's like, oh, maybe, yeah, I feel like I remember there was some. Like I've seen it before. Okay. Something that was some things that were broken, but I don't specifically remember what they were. You did not witness firsthand. I didn't what? firsthand anything. I didn't witness. I didn't I witness didn't firsthand anything. Johnny abusing Amber. But do you recall testifying to that effect that Johnny charged at you and then you were scared? He charged towards me, and I was scared. I ran past him. You didn't run past him because he told Camille. everyone in that penthouse to get out of his penthouse? I ran past him for t because he was, because he ran into the unit and it scared the shit out of me because he was wasted and screaming. So that's why I ran out. She was scared if because he was wasted and screaming. coming at you and man. saying, get your bitch out of here and swing a magnum sized bottle of wine. I'm sure, I don't know what anyone do. <laughs> I can't say what anyone do, but I ran out. And will you just remind us what side of Ms. Hart's face you recall the marks being on on May 21st, 2016? Huh. He was the right side of her face. Wasted and screaming, swinging a magnum, magnum yeah. bottle Have of wine. Have you ever done Ms. Hurd's makeup? No. You testified earlier today that um, Ms. Hurd often, in the times you saw her, would not be wearing makeup. Is that correct? Correct. Is it possible in some of those times that she was oh, wearing to the type of makeup we 
ladies sometimes use to not appear as though we're wearing makeup. There's a difference. Yeah. So you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell whether or not she was wearing basic concealer or foundation. Correct. Uh, talk to me about the loud noises. What really? did you hear? Yeah, just um, screaming, yelling, um, door slamming, commotion. Could you tell whether the screaming and the yelling was a male voice or a female voice? I think that's what From the what large bottles of wine now. are called, magnum bottles of wine, the big, big ones. And could you tell I'm, where I'm the trying, trying to be serious. screaming and the yelling was coming from? I feel like we're sitting in the back it, of the class when like the coming, teacher is put on a movie and we're all just making jokes now because we're bored. That's what's like happened closer. here. So essentially, all of us are just I mean, like, I don't know, but it could have been the hallway. I mean, apparently Amber Heard's a level three, I mean, excuse me, a level two sommelier, so, so maybe they all know. And so after hearing the screaming and the yelling and the door slamming and the commotion, you testify that Mr. Drew got up and went to the door? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are what, now all the kids experience. in the back of the class getting trouble for he talking. He was while the kind of on. pacing by the door um, <laughs> and looking through the peephole. And what happened next? And then the door like burst open and Johnny came charging in and screamed again, holding the the magnum sized bottle of wine might have been you know, the flailing it around. I don't think he knew she had moved in. They talked about that in earlier testimony. And I, I don't think they knew she was there. So maybe she was in my scared. direction. And I was scared. It, it was very, it was very frightening and, and ex, you know, just scary and unexpected. And so I just I don't always like being yelled at either. Him and ran up <clears throat> towards the pool gym area and hid there. <laughs> Chat. You guys are my favorite. Prior to the night of May 21, 2016, had a man ever charged I always got in trouble for talking. A magnum bottle of wine. My teachers moved me. It didn't help. It's not going to help. You can't move. What was your reaction? You can't move to me. This event when it Just happened on May 21, 2016. Fear. Fear. You know. Besides. <sighs> The screaming and the door slamming and the wine waving. Do you recall anything Wait. else about Mr. Depp's actions that he What? During that moment, I guess I should say. Jerry, I have questions. Mm -hmm. We're learning something, y'all. We're learning. We're learning. It's erratic. I would describe it as erratic behavior. Um, erratic, like was angry. Miss, was anyone else with Mr. Depp when he charged into Penthouse Five? Behind him were two men. What about Miss Heard? No. What about Miss Pennington? No. I saw the note so that said "pass my note around." I'm trying to pull it up, and it jumped. After Miss Depp, Mr. Depp burst into the apartment and started charging towards you. That you darted out and hid. And I believe it's a communal exercise area. Is that correct? Yeah. I, I darted out and went up the stairs and hid somewhere over by there. Why did you hide? Because I was yeah, scared. Actually, sorry, say again. Why did you hide? Why because I was scared. Hide? What were you scared of? Where were you I hiding? I just didn't know what he would do. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know what he would do. Yes, there was security video and of the, the hallway. And the who? Johnny. Oh, no. This is a 45-minute depot. Thinking? when you were hiding in the communal exercise area? <laughs> I don't remember just that I was, I mean, I just remember being scared and not wanting to leave that area until like I was clear that there was- What is on the screen in front of Camille and Johnny? This. Attacked. And at this. some point, did you leave the area? Yes. This. And what prompted you to leave the area? Uh, a text with Raquel, just, telling her to come to her and Josh's apartment. And did you do as Ms. Pennington said and go to her and Josh's apartment? Yes. Sitting here today, do you remember what you were thinking as you were sort of coming out of your hiding spot and walking towards the penthouses again? I think that I the, characterization I think is sending me. Just bizarre, like really frightening and bizarre to me. I don't, I don't specifically remember what I was thinking other than like, holy shit, 
what the fuck just happened. That's you know? WTF um, is fair. And is he gone? Maybe I was thinking that. I don't remember specifically. And when you say, is he gone, who's the he you're referring to there? Johnny. Thank you, Carla. Pass it on in the chat. When you got to Miss Pennington's and Mr. Drew's penthouse, um, who'd you see? Who was there? I don't remember who was specifically there when I first walked in, but throughout the time being in there in that moment, definitely Amber, Raquel, and Josh. And maybe like just by peeping into the hallway. Local fry kind of kills officers. me. I gotta be honest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you saw Miss Hurd after you came back down from your hiding spot and you're in Mr. Drew's and Miss Pennington's apartment, how did she look? She looked frazzled and just completely um, disheveled. Right. Her hair was all over the place. She had a swollen face, um, looked like she had been crying and yeah. Do you think the swollen face was a result of her having been crying? Law nerds, you also no. smart. What do you think it was a result of? Calls for speculation. Like, like hit in some way. Like it was definitely, it was not from crying. And she had markings on her face. Were the marks that she saw in Miss Hurd's face after you came down from your hiding spot present when you had been hanging out with her earlier in the day? It's good questioning, no. though. It you reiterates the hiding spot today, and the fear. It's good you questioning. Some, I believe it was Mr. Penny, Miss, Miss Pennington. Who's Mr. this attorney? Why aren't they in court? Miss Hurd's face. Do you remember that? Yes. This is an attorney um, for her. I'd like to mark what will Who's be infinitely Mars more listenable. 13. Um, Who is this? I need to know. Ms. I Mars want is the court reporter. Why aren't they in court? <clears throat> Exhibit 13. This question is much better. To you that these were some photos taken on the night of May 21st, 2016. So if you turn to the second photo in the set, do you recognize the person in this photograph? Yes. Who is it? I think Amber. Well, she said she was hiding. And do you see any marks on her face in this photograph? Yes. And do these know. marks look like the marks that you saw in person on her face? This lawyer is way better than this lawyer from 2019 yes. is way better than what we've been seeing. And just to clarify, these marks were not on her face when you saw Miss Hurd earlier that same afternoon, and we're helping Miss Pennington make beads. Correct. There are other photos in this set. Um, why don't we turn back to the first one? Some broken frames on a bed. Do you know what this picture is of? No, I don't think it's uh, yeah, coincident I mean, at all. Amber and, and John's brilliant marketing bed, and there's there's photographs on it. So I take it that you've seen Amber and Johnny's bedroom before. Yeah, right. they nobody asked that, but yes. Do you recall you went into Mr. Depp's and Miss Hurd's bedroom that night? No. No, you don't recall, or no, you didn't. No, I don't recall. This attorney's great. Um, the next photo on the set is the picture of Miss Hurd. Just after that, there's a photo. You're with me of what appears to be a, a hallway. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. Do you recognize what this is an image of? Yes. What is it an image of? It's the Welcome. hallway between all the penthouse apartments. So you've been on this hallway many times. This is insufferable. Yes. Do uh, what you, you need to do. sort of red staining we'll be here. on the right hand corner of the page? Yes. Um, it's time when mobile gaming helps. that red staining the night of May 21, 2016? Yes. And what was it? It was wine. So you saw that staining on the night of May 21, 2016. Again, yes. wouldn't Do you the recall cops whether have it was smelled there when you arrived in the afternoon? I don't remember seeing it, no. So when was the first time you remember seeing it? Um, I think <laughs> when I came out of my hiding spot and came downstairs. Yes, Kato Kalen lived in Penthouse 3, I Josh's think. Apartment. But you didn't see the wine get spilled? Not this, no. You saw other wine get spilled? I saw, yeah, as he was, and when he came in the apartment, Accu this he is was accurate. flailing the wine. And the he there is Johnny. Then the last photo in this set appears to be of some picture frames hanging on the wall. Do you see that? This attorney yeah. is great. The questioning is so good. I think, but again, I don't remember if it's in her studio. I don't know. Do you recall seeing this photo in one of the penthouses before? Yes. We're learning and so when much you today. Saw it, was it Chad. broken? 
No. And what, if anything, do you remember about Miss Pennington's state? Also, she's going to stand in for one of them when distraught. Courtney stops filming again now that she's married to Travis Barker. You've been friends with Miss Pennington for many years at that point, correct? Correct. Had you ever seen her similarly distraught? Mm -hmm. Not similarly, but her sad. Well, your cousin just informed me they but now refer to a witness getting destroyed on cross as the full Vasquez. That's no. fucking amazing. So you also testify that you saw Mr. Drew in his and Ms. Pennington's penthouse? I called Camille Crossboss um, yesterday on social media. About Mr. My new nickname state. for her. I just remember him being just a grounding energy. Just trying to be supportive to Amber and to Raquel and just really This lawyer is questioning quite to be good. Like a, it's a man much, in the situation much that was easier to like listen really to. Be grounded amongst like women that were sort of like frightened and Bev, sort of yes, that is more consistent. More frantic. He was very grounded and very like clear and I remember like feeling safe. Oh my god, like, the was, fucking first, car was, like, horns. Protection. You testified earlier today that quote there are some things that I really remember and some things that are a little shady. End quote. Which bucket do the marks that you saw on Miss Hurd's face on the evening of May 21, 2016 fall into? The things that were a little shady or the things that you really remember? That I really remember. <gasps> Are we done? Oh, All right. We done? Your next witness. Next witness, Your Honor, is Melanie Inglesis. And right. that is also by video. And I will say that that begins with Ms. Vasquez questioning first, and then, okay. then I come Vasquez. Back. All right. And can oh. you spell it last name just for the court it's order? It's I-N-G-L-E-S-S-I-S. -S -S -S. Thank you. Oh, good. More questioning from Elaine. It's going to be such a stark contrast. Please state your name and address for the record. To what we just witnessed. My name is Melanie Inglesis. And Ms. Inglesis, what Oops, is it's me first. I'm a makeup artist. <laughs> Makeup artist. And Thank you, you, in fact, are a professional makeup artist, correct? Good. Correct. When did you first meet Amber Heard? Well, the pacing of this is better. April 2015. We love and this pacing. Occasion. Tribeca Film Festival in New York. Her glasses are and adorable. were you providing makeup services for her on that occasion? Correct. Okay. And did you become friends with Amber Heard after that? I did. Ms. Inglesias, I'm going to show you what has been marked as right, you exhibit witness. number seven. Do you recognize what's depicted in this photograph? Was she there? Yes. I recall seeing this um, on the kitchen of the penthouse. When you enter, we jumped the, in time. Our kitchen to the left, and that was there. Yes. But when you came to the penthouse after. Uh, after Amber We've jumped had so far in you, time. Whether it was That's that night or the video next depots. day, you saw this in the kitchen. Is that correct? Painted? And lack right. of foundation. And so you do recall being there that, that evening? I do recall being there. You know, my my only concern with all of this is, is it that was it the, the day before or during another incident? But it says, if, if my text said I was there the, the night before, then I was there the night before. Ms. Iglesias, I'm going to ask you to look at, at what has been marked as deposition exhibit number nine. Do you recognize huh. what is depicted in this photo? Well, it's a bed. It looks like, I mean, it's a very tight picture of the bed, but I must... Yep. It, it's the bed. And, and do you recall seeing this the night of, of December 15 with the broken part of the bed? Upstairs, yes. Okay. And when you say upstairs, what, what do you mean? Well, her be the, the bedroom was upstairs. And the downstairs had the kitchen with the writing. Do you remember where the uh, other property that you saw was? Was that downstairs or upstairs? The property that was damaged. Was that upstairs or downstairs? downstairs. What property was damaged? Right, and just so I'm clear, the jumping you is recall killing damage me. to the bed. Is that correct? And ask right. an answer. On December 16, 2015, did you return to Amber Heard's penthouse? Yes. And why did you come to Amber Heard's James penthouse Horton on show, December yeah? 16? Yeah. 
It yes. was the James Corden show. She had an appearance. So I, I went back and back to. I'm actually work. really interested and in this testimony. When you arrived at the penthouse on December 16, would you take the bed down? Please like describe for me show? what you observed about Amber Heard's face yeah, not at all. and she can't pronounce any injuries. All. When I came to the mm -hmm. penthouse on December 16 to do Amber's makeup, she had injuries. Um, she had too light, like, too I, I don't know light. how, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a medical expert. I don't know how I would describe Fair. them, but it could have looked like somebody had headbutted her lightly. So she had a discoloration here under both eyes and on the bridge of the, and the bridge of the nose. Uh, and she had what I would call a split lip or something on the lip, like a, a gash or a split lip. Ms. Inglesias, I'm going to ask you to look at what has been marked as exhibit number 11. Do you recognize this photo as being Amber Heard's head? Yes. Okay. How? And could you please describe for me what what this photo is? is How do you uh, know that's Amber Heard's head? Showing? Establish some foundation. How do you it's know? It's showing a chunk of missing hair. And what, if anything, did you observe on December 16 about Amber Heard missing a chunk of hair? I remember this because she showed it to us and I looked at it. Okay. And can that's you consistent with Rocky's testimony. Uh, what is depicted right along of them getting ready for the James Corden show? I don't know. D do you recall that there was some bruising along the scalp and some pus? For lack of a better word, I don't recall. Bruising and pus is pretty Ms. specific, Glacius, Elaine. I'm going to ask you to take a look at uh, pus for lack of a better word. It's either pus. 14. Do you recognize the not. person in this photo? Yes. And who is that? This is Amber Heard. Okay. And uh, were these, you, you just described what you saw on the 16th with respect to Amber Heard's injuries does this accurately depict i think what she was told on about Amber the headbutt on december 16 2015 yes i hope they asked Iglesias, i'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as uh, exhibit 16. Uh, again do you recognize the person in this photo i hope they talk about yes. color correcting and who is that amber heard okay it's fair and does this picture reflect the injuries that you saw on Amber Heard on December 16, 2015? I don't yes. remember the, I don't, and I then think I'm gonna it was ask this you incident. Take a look at one more of those, and that is uh, exhibit 17. And I'm going to ask again, Ms. Inglesias, do you recognize the person in this picture and maybe to try to move it along? I is will. it Amber Heard? Yes. Okay. And does this, uh, reflect what you saw as well oh, on December 6th, totally 2015. Elaine. I mean, that's three different, three pictures with very different light, but yes. Now, do you also Sorry. recall there being an injury to Amber, Amber Heard's lip? Correct. And Ms. Inglesias, I'm going to ask you to take a look at exhibit number 19. And do you recognize the person in this uh, photograph as Amber Heard? Yes. And does this picture accurately reflect uh, what you saw on Amber Heard on December 16, 2015? Yes. Ms. Iglesias, could you please describe what you did by way of makeup to prepare Amber Heard for the James Corden show on December 16, 2015? Yes, uh, we covered, you know, I just did makeup but just a little heavier way it knitted so we covered a little heavier you know, the, the discoloration didn't say the bruises color correcting with a little slightly heavier concealer slightly heavier um, one that has a little more of a peach undertone oh, uh, which i normally color correcting. don't use on amber but peach to cancel blue so i did that under the eyes and i although amber always you know has a red lip is one of the signature look i remember huh clearly talking that we had no other option that night but then to use a red blood like a, a really red lipstick to you know make sure we could cover up um the injuries on the lip 
And were you able to cover all of the injuries with the makeup that you applied and as you just described? She said slightly yes. heavier. She didn't talk about color correcting. Ms. Iglesias, if you could look at what has been marked. She talked about using a different 22. foundation, but no color correcting, like uh, Amber Hardin no special patient? color correcting products. Yes. Okay. And was is this the picture of her? Is this a picture of her? that evening, December 16, 2015, on the James Corden show? Yes. What, if anything, did you observe on the difference in Amber Heard's demeanor before the show and then on the show? That she had the ability to, you know, turn it on. That it, she, you know, the ability to do her job and, and, and perform how she was supposed to perform on the show. I don't think anyone and takes issue with how she talked on the show. Amber they take issue with the lip the movement when it's split you were on the show. With her on her makeup, That's the issue. How would you describe Not the behavior. Amber's mood and demeanor? Angry, sad, a little erratic, um, I think through waves of emotions, you know? Do you recall someone named Ms. McMillan having uh, any role in, in helping to prepare Amber Heard for that James Corden show that night, December 16th? <coughs> yes. What do you recall? Um, uh, Samantha. Samantha was a stylist. Samantha was there um, the day of the James Corden show as she was always there to get her ready before an appearance or show. And did Samantha work on uh, Amber before or after? That's why they're asking about the stylist, the before or after. I don't know if she worked on Ember, uh, but when I entered the penthouse five, Samantha was there okay. with Ember. So Samantha was there before I entered the house. The penthouse. That's because Samantha says she didn't and see any injuries. Do you recall but whether we don't have that in uh, the record Samantha yet. was hugging Ember? But they're trying the to get away from I that recall, testimony. I recall opening the penthouse. So there's two penthouses. There's the penthouse where she gets ready. So Ember at a penthouse where Samantha gets already where all Amber's clothes If I recall properly, that's the penthouse that I enter first just to say hi before I would go set up in the other penthouse. And my recollection is to when I enter, is Amber was crying, looked pretty upset on Samantha's shoulder or they were like, you know, I don't know if hugging is the right way, but they would definitely had a, a, a moment where um, they were together and Amber looked really upset. She did. Ms. Iglesias, I, I'm going to ask just a couple more questions about the makeup um, that you applied uh, on Amber on December 16, 2015 for the James Corden show. I, I think you said that you had applied some concealer and that you had some peach She undertones. said peach undertone foundation. Did it to cancel out some blue? Did, did I hear that correctly? The yeah. I, I was did she asking mean peach about, undertone I, concealer? I, I wrote down that you said that you had applied on amber concealer. You had some peach undertones to cancel blue. Is that what you said? Then I, so what type of concealer that's Did what I wanted her to apply ask. Apply to Amber, and if you use different color tones, can you please describe why you used the color tones you did? I used a different kind of concealer. A different that concealer. I really That's use fair. On Amber, uh, which I used a concealer that had peach undertone. Peach undertone concealer um, are more effective to cover any darkness of, of blue undertone than a normal concealer. Do you know what type of makeup Amber Heard so typically wore? Objection, yes. Megan. Can you please describe? Yes, uh, she's pretty natural. She has a concealer. She's pretty natural. Um, from a company called, oh, she used to have a concealer from a company called Claire de Peau. Of uh, course it was Claire de Peau. Her makeup would be pretty simple. Concealer and a little um, benefit tint that she used on her lips and she used on her cheeks. Very natural. It, it Very a, light. A natural look to it, correct? Light, natural makeup. Correct. Okay. Um, but there was, she did wear concealer and what you de described, correct? Do you mean in, in her 
daily life or that night? In her daily life. Yes. She used, she has a concealer that she uses all the time. And those, she has a couple of products that she uses all the time, daily, yes. Well, I mean, daily, yes. That's I also love Benetton. And, I see you guys and do you feel saying you love Benetton. Benetton, I love it too. Described uh, that you saw that day of Amber Heard's injuries, and I'm talking about December 16. Yeah, no talk of swelling is very notable that there's no talk of swelling. That a doubt. Because I just don't remember, you know, it's five years ago. I don't remember the exact day. And could you describe uh, Amber Heard's demeanor in that, in that those days before and after the filing for divorce and for the domestic violence restraining order? An, a, a, an area of, of, of different of emotion, you know, from, I mean, definitely from sadness to not wanting to divorce, to divorce, to anger, to to being really upset, to being really sad. So it's just, it was just a roller coaster of emotion that I think we were all there those couple of days to help navigate and, 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 and go through it. I, I take it from your response today, you still feel very emotional about this. It's very difficult for you, isn't it? It's not difficult for me, no, now, no, but I, it just reminded me at the time how I felt, yes. Why don't you first it's tell Ms. Heard that you were no longer interested in, in having her as a client and being friends with her? That, that phone call about a month ago. How was it said? Well, I just told Amber that, you know, I wish her well and I just, just have no interest in continuing a relationship. Why? Whether it's work-wise or uh, friendship-wise. Why? But is there a specific reason other than Ooh. the birth of your child and the postpartum issues that you described, both as no. a client and Ms. Iglesias? What was your impression of Mr. Depp when you first met him? Lovely. You thought he was lovely? Yeah. Was each of the... Well, let me ask the backup question. Did you interact with Mr. Depp? How many times did you interact with Mr. Depp? Through, you mean all in all? Oh, yes. The entirety of your interactions. How many were there? And you know, she might not be changing Five, emotions quickly. Maybe These are cut more? together. Maybe, so maybe there's edits here maybe, yeah. and they are very cut Would together. Would you describe all your interactions with Mr. Depp as quote, lovely? Yes. Did you ever see Mr. Depp act in a violent manner? No. Did you ever see Mr. Depp yell at Ms. Heard? No. Did you ever see him kick Ms. Heard? No. Did you ever see Mr. Depp throw an object at Ms. Heard? No. Did you ever see Mr. Depp slap Ms. Heard? No. Punch her? No. Did you ever see Mr. Depp kick Ms. Heard? No. Yes, it's fair to switched. say, Ms. Inglesias, that you never saw Mr. Depp be physically abusive towards Ms. Heard. Correct. And you never saw Mr. Depp cause any injuries to Ms. Heard. They might not correct? have agreed to. Did I ever saw him causing any injuries? No. And so any injuries that you claim to have seen on Ms. Heard, you don't know one way or another how they were caused, correct? Correct. The only source of information that you have is Ms. Heard's own words, correct? Correct. Did you hear Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard having a fight on the phone. I was there. I was present in the room. And but just to confirm, could you hear Mr. Depp's voice? No. So fair to say that the only voice you heard was with Ms. was Miss Hurd's, correct? Correct. And so you don't know what she what Mr. Depp said to Miss Hurd on that phone call, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Do you recall any other occasions where you witnessed 
a fight between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard or heard about an incident or we a always fight pin, between Mr. Depp We and always Ms. pin Heard, to the top of the chat who the, the witness is and the mods will be reminding. So it's say, pinned at the top of the chat. This is the makeup artist that worked on her I for the James Corden show, we, Samantha. My friendship Not with Samantha. Her before she files for divorce, which I mean, Melanie. timeline, I don't know, a year, maybe a year and a half. It was all, it was always, it, it was always some conflict, some fight, some, some physical fights, some verbal fights, some kind of problem, some kind of, there's always, there's always some always conflict, a problem, a problematic, it was a very consuming, um, for me, it was all consuming about that relationship. It was a very consuming friendship. Enhanced it was a very consuming friendship. Wow. Continue it. But you yourself, Miss Inglesis, didn't witness any of these altercations, fights, arguments, correct? Between correct. Mr. Depp. I think you testified that you interacted with Mr. Depp less than 10 times. When you did interact with Mr. Depp, was Ms. Heard present? Each of those times? All of those times. Did you find him particularly loving towards Ms. Heard? No, not particularly, no. And during these interactions with Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard, at that time, you were aware that Mr. Depp allegedly was abusing Ms. Heard, correct? Well, most of most of the interaction that I had was towards the end of 2015, right? I'm assuming, so I was not fully aware yet of, I guess, the... the um, Of what? The seriousness of, of, of um, the fight, if I, if I can say so. I think, um, you know, most of the time I saw them together was towards the end of December, towards before December 15. So Thanksgiving, that time, and Amber's, I think, birthday, I'm getting it from that. So the few times that I saw Mr. Depp was before I understood the seriousness of, of the fight. Understanding, again, came from Ms. Heard only, correct? Well, Ms. Heard and some of her friends Yes. Who were some of her friends? Rocky, Retro Pennington, um, Ayo, Twillet, um, I'm not sure you pronounce it, Josh, Drew, the people that were leaving, her sister, Whitney. Those were the cool group. You said you spent Thanksgiving with uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard. Was that in... Thanksgiving, November 2015? Yes, correct, because they were divorced by May 2016, so yes. How would you describe that evening? Awkward. Why? Because Marilyn Manson was there. <laughs> Did you know Marilyn Bingo. Manson? No, but it, this was an awkward Thanksgiving <laughs> sitting there. It was quite intimate. So sitting, yeah, it was just awkward. It's an awkward is an, he's just an awkward being and it's just awkward to be around. So Interesting. It was, an, it was an awkward evening. Do you recall Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard having any type of disagreement or fight that evening? Um, disagreement, maybe. Like, a, like, like, yeah, like a disagreement. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, there was, you know, Tamers, it, it thank was you. a small, intimate... Surrounded this is pick up on a things. tremendously generous super chat. Um, Thank and you. And so I, I could tell that it was it was awkward. It was just awkward. I think Mr. Depp and and Mr. Manson disappeared for a while, and everybody was at the table, so they were wondering what they were. It was just awkward. And you're pretty sure they had a fight because Miss Heard told you after the fact that they had a fight, correct? Because you were you did not witness Mr. Depp or Miss Heard you. having any type of fight the evening of Thanksgiving, correct? Correct. Ms. Iglesias, do you have an independent recollection of going I to agree, Holly. the penthouse in downtown Los Angeles on December 15th, 2015? I have an independent, I have That's an fair, Christina. independent recollection of going to the penthouse before one of the incidents. 
And at the time, I wasn't, I couldn't recall if it was the day before the James Corden or the day before the phone incident, you know, so. That's what, fair. And that is what I made sure I needed to remember that it was the day before December 16th. Where, yes. Does that, does that make sense? So I, I knew I had come a day before, a, a, a day before one of the two biggest fights. That one was, of the two biggest fights. I wasn't sure if it was that day or that day, but it was December 15th. And sitting here today, you're still not sure if you went to the penthouse on December 15th, 2015, or if it was the day before the May incident in 2016. Okay. And when you went Thank to the you, penthouse on December 15th, I believe you testified before that you didn't see any injuries on Amber Heard that evening, correct? Sorry, I don't recall seeing any injuries on Amber that day. Christina, that it's a lot Do you recall if Ms. Pennington was at the penthouse that evening? Yes. Do you recall if anybody else was at the penthouse that evening? I don't recall. But you do remember Ms. Hurd being there and Ms. Pennington, correct? Correct. I will go look at Ant's video. It's choppy because these depots are edited and that makes Heard it very the hard. They're not December fluid 15, at all, but I really like this witness a lot. Do you recall being present when any photographs of Ms. Heard were taken on December 15th, 2015? I don't recall. Do you remember being present when photographs of Ms. Heard's injuries were taken on December 16th, 2006, 2015? No. And did you take any pictures of Ms. Heard and her probably because the lawyers had said IO IO till it 2015. No, that's probably why. So I don't want to take up the time of showing you all the photographs Ms. Heard, or excuse me, Ms. Bredehoff showed you earlier today, but there were a number of exhibits. I think I marked them as um, exhibits 14 through 20 that you were shown earlier this morning. Just to confirm, you didn't take any of those photographs, correct? Not on my phone, not with my phone, and I do not recall taking Amber's or Rocky's phone to take those pictures, no. Definitely not with my phone. Uh, I do not recall taking physically myself those pictures, no. I don't recall. Thank you, Jessica. No need to be offended. Would People it be normal by the for hair. Ms. Heard to have They're makeup on her people. face before you arrived to do her makeup ahead of an appearance? It would be normal for Amber to have concealer on a little, a little of that tint there. Yes, because it is quite normal for Amber to wash her face. She always likes to wash the face before the makeup with the product that she likes, do a toner, you know, so it wouldn't be abnormal for her to have a little makeup before and then wash her face. And start that makes clean. sense. But you don't remember one way or another, whether Ms. Heard had a fresh face with toner and moisturizer on before when you arrived on December 16th, 2015, <coughs> correct? No, I do not, I don't recall. Would she usually wash her face and go through that process in front of you? Yes, I mean, in front of me uh, in her bathroom, but you know, we, we were close, so it wouldn't be abnormal for me to be chit chatting with her while she cleaned her face and- Cicely, you can just watch, it's okay. You know, I don't think specifically- No expectations. Of, you know, not in front of me, but- yeah, I mean, she would wash her Johnny face. Johnny Depp didn't the seem to mind having the mind at all. Where we get her ready. And I want to be yes. really specific. So based on your best recollection, what I'll injuries did you see on Miss Heard on December 16th, 2015? Amber had a slight decolor uh, discoloration on both eyes and on the top of a bridge of the nose. And... Hold on, uh, and I do believe the right eye had a little more of a gash right there. It was, it wasn't that strong. It wasn't that swollen. It was, but it was that's... definitely some blue and yellow discoloration there, mainly on the inner corner, and a little more here. And then she had on the right, 
on the right lip. As I said earlier, I'm not sure the exact medical term, but it looked like a split lip or like a gash here. Did you ever see Ms. Hurd's lip bleed um, on December 15th or December 16th? But you have a, you, you remember that it was not bleeding on December 16th when you were applying the makeup, correct? When I was applying the makeup, correct. Wait a second. Is this one of the bracelets from the, the other case that bleeding? we covered? Hold on, I, I got know. questions. And I think you just described it as either a gash or a split lip. From the Kristen Cavallari case? Yeah, I, I don't I'm gonna know have to what look. would be the medical term for it. I don't know what kind of injury would have caused this. I'm not a medical expert, no forensic expert, but that's fair. Uh, it was slightly swollen. And by the way, you can see it in that video. So it's crazy to me, but it was slightly swollen. And there was uh, either a a gash or a, a, a scab. No, not a That's scab. That's what I thought. Blue and it was yellow, like with some kind healing. of cut. Do you recall Miss Heard ever having Guys, don't have a to cold donate, sore on her you. lips? No need for no, no need. You can just like the video and subscribe. But thank you. You said there was slight discoloration under both eyes. Yep, was blue and yellow the day under after. Under both eyes as well. Which is interesting. Blue and yellow the day after. I'm sorry if I swelling. No um, purple. Maybe very little, but it was mainly discoloration too. I Possible. recall mainly uh, discoloration, like a like a bruise. Maybe there was a little tiny swelling on one of the eye. That was a little more. She's being generous, I think. A little more injured than the other, but not huge swelling. No. I believe your testimony earlier today was that he lightly headbutted her. Is that correct? I I wasn't there. I, I don't know. That's if what your testimony that was. That was that was your testimony that it appeared as if she had been quote lightly headbutted. Do you so remember saying said. that earlier today? Then maybe yes. I was recorded. It's not my position to say how. You said I that she was or anything. And maybe I'm, I'm misquoted. Okay. And did she show you the hair that was missing? She showed us, me and the hairdresser, the hole where the hair was missing on top of the head. And was Miss McMillan there as well? No, Miss Ma um, Senator McMillan was really never when we get ready. So it was two separate things. And Samantha never really comes up when we get ready, no. But just to confirm, these injuries, right, that you saw on Ms. Hurd on December 16th, 2015, you don't know how they were caused, correct? Correct. Thank you, JB. And so any information you have about how the cause of these injuries came from Ms. Hurd only? From December 16th? Princess correct. Leia, I wanted to hear way more about well, that. Any injuries other than Ms. Hurd and her friends, you never witnessed Mr. Depp being violent or abusive towards Ms. Hurd and yes. causing any injuries. Oh, I'll ask that at Correct. the break. So let's talk about the makeup that you actually used um, to conceal these injuries on her face on December 16th. Yes, let's talk more about that. I believe you testified you used a concealer with a peach undertone. Mm -hmm. She did say that. She did didn't say color training character. and experience um, dealing with injuries or covering up bruising on people. Do you have any specific experience or education? Or like a five o'clock shadow. Experience, I have experience like. in doing bruises and cover bruises for special effect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, throughout my career, I have created bruises and I also have covered bruises for, you know, with models or real life things, whatever it is. Hmm. So yeah, I, I have experience in covering some bruises, yes. Okay. How about swelling, same question. I mean, you, it's really, it's a little harder to cover swelling. That would be maybe, you know, un, you try to bring the swelling down. Covering covering it up would be not, really, would be harder. And how about cuts? Yeah. Specifically, as it relates to Ms. Hurd's makeup look on December 16th, do you recall what foundation you used? There's a freaking bowl of jelly beans. The brand? You probably don't remember the brand, but do you recall the shade that you used? 
How would I? No, it's five years ago. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely you really, not. No. But you do have a specific recollection of, of using a peach undertone concealer. Yes, and, and I'll tell you why. Because Amber always I'll had why, in good. her bag, we have the same concealer. She has a concealer from a brand called Clitopo. And it's a specific <laughs> shade. Uh, you know, it's beige. Beige was Amber's color for under her eyes, period. So the day, December 16, I didn't use beige. I used, there's another concealer that has a little more peach in there and orange. It's, uh, it's called Honey from the same family. And I use that instead. From the same family. And I think I also use, I have a wheel that has, is a bruise wheel. I want a bruise that wheel. That has different colors. And you pick up the color to gently touch up any darkness. <laughs> Did you make a different choice for her overall look other than the concealer as a result of the injuries that you saw on her face on December 16th? Not a different choice, but I remember we specifically, you know, as you, I know you read it before, she, we, we had a red lip that was not uncommon for her. We know she has a signature red lip, so it's not suddenly it was, oh my gosh, she has a red lip. But I remember that day we specifically I specifically structure my makeup. There's a couple of things we do with Amber. We do a smoky eye and a nude lip or a red lip. And I remember specifically thinking of my makeup about we needed to highlight there to try to not to try to not draw attention there. And the red lip was our only option to cover that red cut that was there. So that I remember very it's specifically matte. thinking that we had we had to have a red lip, sharp brows, and construct the makeup to take away. From here, so basically, I mean, it's not to mean nothing to you guys, but just basically a lot of highlight up here to kind of not focus on this. I remember talking about it very clearly. And, and forgive my ignorance, but what did you do to cover up the cut on the lip other than apply a I red lip? I wanted to lip? know. A red lip. That's it. Okay. A red lip. Uh, it, it is swollen. I can see it in a video on the James Corden show. So her lips were swollen. It was big on that side. You can see it. There's nothing I can do about that. But I did. We did a really dark red lip to to match the, that that red gash or cut, whatever that was there. But how did you fill it in if it was a do gash? Do you recall Miss Heard being hindered as a result of the injury on her lip? And when I say hindered, I mean did she have trouble? opening her mouth widely or, you know, did she complain about it hurting or splitting open and bleeding? Do you recall any of that? I don't recall. And again, just to confirm on December 15th, 2015, you don't recall seeing any injuries, including a split lip on Amber Heard, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Do you recall having any specific conversation with the hairstylist that was doing Miss Heard's hair on December 16th, 2015, as it related to the abuse that Miss Heard was describing for you? Yeah. Uh, oh. Yes. We have. We, we talked a bit about it. Yes. And what What do you recall about that conversation? They are sheer products. I mean, you know, I think everybody was a little like. Oh shit! Okay, um, I think everybody was a little surprised. Everybody was a little like not knowing how to move forward with it. I mean, but we talked. As I said, when Amber was in the chair and Adil was behind her, and I was in front of her, I recall the three of us having this conversation, and I recall Adia showing me the hole there. But just to confirm, you don't know how that chunk of hair was missing from Ms. Heard's head. You don't know what caused that chunk of hair to be missing. Saint, correct? I'm sold, I'm buying things. I don't know it, correct. You don't have any personal I knowledge, need a better I say, as well. to how that Doing chunk that. of hair came to be missing from her head. Well, I, never, I, never, I, I did not witness it, correct. Alex, may I please have you bring up DEP9? I feel like for this trial, I think glasses, you've testified previously, I'm not appropriately accessorized uh, and I needed clear glasses because every single person, clip, right? Um, you see Ms. Hurd's, I moved out of LA and went to the dark you side, see the swollen lip dark and you frame. see uh, bruising. Yeah. 
I see. I, I've, I've known that face. I I'll talk about this at the so break. Well. I've done it so many times. I can tell where the bruises are, and I can tell where the swollen lip is correct. Okay. Thank you so much, so, Linda. Ms. Inglesias, do you mind please identifying for me, is this, um, does this photograph <laughs> accurately depict Ms. Heard on the James Corbin show on December 16th, 2015? Oh, we're going to get the clip. But can you describe it, they already where it. you see bruising on Ms. Hurd's face? Well, I didn't, no, I didn't say I saw This feels bruising, like adult mock trial. Discoloration. I can see my makeup. So I see the discoloration on the right eye, just right under. I see that little dent there. I don't and know also, how they would I ever mean, prove this that. This is a, a picture that is, you know, taking, this is not a really accurate picture. She's sideways. The light is one way. You That's know, fair. Yes, there's other there's better pictures. Not an accurate picture that you can see. But if you give me the uh, the mouth. I will show you. But there's other still picture when you can see the split lip better, or the, the swollen lip. So I mean, I can see there's better pictures where you can see that side of her lip is swollen. This here. And when you're you're pointing, it's so just hard to, when they're pointing. The and we can't you're see You're pointing them. to the to the right side of Miss Hurd's lip, correct? Correct. I hate when we can't see it. It's here. Nothing, but I, as I said, there's better pictures. She's sideways. There's better pictures where you can see what I feel. You can see better, but it might be the same photograph. Yeah, she's still sideways. But Miss Igles, this is your testimony okay. that you believe you can see swelling on the right side of Miss Hurd's lip? Yes. I don't know. Do you see any bruising or concealed bruising under her eyes? Well, I mean, if I get I copy know, struck I'm for the music in the background, yes, I'll tell I you what. Because I know I did it, but so that's I can hear it. Can you guys hear the music in the background? Yeah, I mean, I can see them just on tell me the what you eyes, think it is. The right eyes, I can see the little gash right there. I feel and like I her neighbor is watching something. Right, I mean, I, I don't have the mask anymore, but all that darkness right there, that is not eyeshadow. And that is neither dark circle for not sleeping. This is part of the little, you know, the injury is showing through. Do you see any discoloration or bruising on the bridge of her nose? I do not. No, I must have done a great Oh, job. $75 concealer. Do you recall Mom. anything about Ms. Hurd's appearance when you first encountered her in Coachella Valley? Those lights do show everything. No, I don't recall. Wait, what? Where, where, you where are we? Any injuries on Miss Heard? I don't recall. Do you recall Miss Heard discussing any abuse that she had sustained the night okay, of her birthday on April twenty first, two thousand sixteen, by Mr. Depp? Yes. What do you recall about that? I recall there was a it fight. Is interesting. There was. Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to change the penthouse five. I don't. I love I, your I don't exactly handle. recall the fight. I know they were fight and there was some problem. That's why they were late coming back to Coachella's. Okay, good. I don't recall exactly what she told me, but there was some problem the night before. Yes. All of them say they're no longer. So you friends. don't remember seeing any injuries on this herd after her birthday dinner in April of 2016. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Do you recall seeing any injuries on Ms. Hurd's face at that dinner on May 24th, 2016? I, I don't recall. The Do you recall Ms. Hurd's general cuts. demeanor at the dinner on May 24th, 2016? What I remember about that dinner is that she was, ex and I'll tell you why I remember. You're welcome, Vancouver you, Vixen. She was very distraught. And thank and you for your super chat before lunch. I think very, I pulled it up, but if I didn't, I saw it. Um, confused if she should file or not for divorce and she not yet was really sad and upset and angry and all of it and i remember that because that night i actually physically took her phone so she should not so that if johnny tried to if johnny tried to reach reach out to her again she fair. wouldn't have a phone that night and she would go she would go through the divorce tomorrow the next day. So I remember physically having her phone and when I dropped when I dropped them back at the penthouse, she said, I keep my that. phone. So if you contact me, I won't know, I won't cave, and I will file for divorce tomorrow. So I went home in my house with her phone. 
And that's why I remember, that's why I stick in my mouth. And then the next morning, and you can see in those texts, she said, I need my phone. And then I had to drive to the penthouse and give her her phone back. And at the time, that day, I'm assuming she filed for divorce. And that day, the, the whole circus started. And you, you believe the that Mr. should go through with the divorce, correct? Correct. And, and that was based on what exactly, Ms. Iglesias? Ah. Oh. Is that our feed? Is that the court feed? Let's see if we can find another feed. That's odd. I wonder if that happened in the courtroom, too. All right, let's see what we've got from. I have any recollection that Amber strayed from that and did not wear makeup during the week of May 21st, 2016? Odd. That feed went no. down. Uh, like fallout. Do you have board. any recollection that week of thinking, oh, oh we're my back goodness, to, Amber Heard's we're back to Amica. isn't wearing her makeup this week? No. So do you know whether Amber Heard took any steps to reduce she bites her, her swelling. A lot. Uh, she does. We've seen it. This, uh, in preparation for the James Corden uh, show. Yes, she took Annika and uh, we had an Annika gel. And she had a, she had, I, always, I always have Annika gel in my kit anyway. Uh, and she had Annika gel. She probably, yeah, she used Annika gel. Not Amica cream. Nice. Elaine. And what does Annika gel do? Annika gel, Elaine. I use, I use Annika gel in my kit to bring any swelling, any swelling area of my client's face down. And, and how does that typically work? Can I use it under my experience? eyes? It just brings us, you know, the, uh, the, the swelling down. Uh, I mean, not drastically, but it does, it helps with wait, the swelling a little bit. Can I use it under my eyes? Wait, no, my... Questions. All right. Yes, I'm sir, in my forties. Another video. Okay, if you could approach for a moment, let me just certainly. Certainly, they're approaching because they want to see how much time is left on the next witness and determine how much left is going on. I imagine, or to give them an idea of how much time is left. I like that Camille didn't go up to the stand, but she is sitting here. This is where the live court feed is. So. Arnica doesn't bring swelling down. It takes days. I thought Arnica was for generally bruising and not swelling. That's what I thought. Uh, so I'm going to get to a few questions. Oh, everybody's very jovial up at the bench. Look at everybody. Everybody seems to be in a good mood. They're like, we get to just sit here and listen to depots. The hard work for the depositions is done in advance of this moment. They spent, and the judge said one day they were there till after 9.30 p.m. with all of the attorneys in the room going through the depositions and they have to go objection by objection on the depots, have the court rule on them, and then make the marks of where they're editing. And that takes quite a lot of work. So that's what... Um, that's what they had done in previous weeks, and then they were finished with them. So they agree, and they did it during trial. They agree during trial on what edits, what objections, and the court rules on the objections, but they're all agreeing about something. And again, these attorneys, though there have been moments, they have gotten they have seemed to work well together. Um, the court has reminded them, I'm not here for your finger pointing and whatever else. So that's where we're at. I'm going to get to a few questions. Didn't she just say, I didn't see bruising, just discoloration. She did, but I think that was to a different day. And it's hard with the jump cuts to know what line of questioning we're in. Wouldn't Amber Heard show pain when the makeup was applied or when she was talking on the James Corden show? I don't know. Um, Michelle said, I need to send you some UK sweeties. I have lots of UK sweets right now. I've been sent them, but thank you. We're always, we're always open to the international candies. Um, they're great, especially the Canadian all dressed chips. Damn, those are good. Um, does the jury room have a neutral party there, uh, that is there to keep the jury on topic and civil? No, you may have answered this yesterday. Um, I don't know if I did answer it yesterday, but no, they don't. They elect a four person and the All four right, person does that. You're right, we're going to call Christy Sexton and this is by video deposition as well. Good evening. All right. That'll be the last one for the day. Okay, thank you. And is that the stylist? Um, oh my, Josh said our daughter is in the NICU and we spent our entire day there watching you. Two of the nurses are subscribing to your page tonight. We love you. Um, oh my, Josh, I'm also a NICU mom. So Christina Lissette Sexton. Queensland, Australia. My heart goes out to you. 
We were a NICU Australia. family, so I feel you. So best, best, July best of luck. NICU nurses are the greatest. There was a transitionary period. I, would, I met my husband in December of So Australia. Um, so 16 and 17 decisions on which country we were going to move to and such. So I did not establish residency here until July and then began all my paperwork subsequently when we were married in October. Oh, no doubt. UK okay, chocolate is far superior. So I, I take it from your last far answer, superior. Ms. Sexton, that Australia was the lucky winner <laughs> for which country you and your husband would choose to live in. Yes. Correct? Yes, indeed. Um, and do you currently have a job? You currently work um, right now in Australia? Yes, I'm an acting coach. When was it Did you work with Amber Heard? that she took a class? Sorry. Uh, that you were a TA? Okay. I believe it was sometime in 2009. For how long uh, did you remain Amber Heard's primary uh, or exclusive acting coach? Um, I don't know about exclusive. We don't have any sort of exclusivity contracts. She may work with other coaches. Um, uh, the last time we worked on a project together would be Aquaman, so 2017. I don't know about exclusive. We don't have any sort of exclusivity Ugh. contracts. She may work with other coaches. Bad edit. Uh, the last time we worked on a project together would be Aquaman, so 2017. Okay, so the first movie, or the first TV series, I should say, that you were called working on uh, as an acting coach with Amber Heard was the Playboy Club. This audio is yes. horrible. And it was in 2011. Yes. And I take it from what you just described that although the frequency varied, um, it's fair to say, is it not, that you saw Ms. Heard many, many, many <laughs> times uh, during the period between... 2010 and 2017. Oh, yes. Would it be fair to say that you saw Ms. Heard during the seven-year period um, more than 100 times? Easily, yes. We'll see. And when you say easily, would it, do you think it's also fair to say that you saw her more than 200 times? Absolutely, yeah. That's a lot. Um, I'm going to go up another 100. Uh, same answer for 300 times? Yeah. Can I get five? Can I get five? As I said, when I would see her, it would be multiple times a week in preparation for a project. When's the last time that you had a uh, session with Amber Heard as her primary acting coach? Um, Mid 2017. During the, that early period when she lived on Orange Avenue, how would you describe excuse me, Amber Heard as an actor? She was really focused on moving to the next level of her career um, and really stretching herself as an actor, She, which is why she started coaching so much at that time and initially even went to classes. Um, so she was really driven to do a lot of work um, and kind of mine out everything that we could from the text and go over things. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> so she was very driven as an actor to, um, I would say, get to the next phase of her career. We're looking at Sexton 1. Refresh your recollection as to when that took place. That's the IMDb page. Yes, it was either 2011 or 2012. Um, if it's saying that it came out in 2011, then the premiere would have been in 2011. So, yeah. When My oldest says hello. Saying, uh, Johnny or Mr. Bunn? Uh, I would say sometime in the middle of the following year. So sometime in the middle of 2012, you think? Yeah. And where was that? Whoever asked uh, if this was recorded on a potato, on yes. Orange. I remember him seeing him quite a bit. In the early period. Again, I'm focused on the early period. Did you have occasion to run into Mr. Depp at your coaching sessions with Amber? later when she moved into Sweetser Avenue and then at the penthouse of downtown Los Angeles. The coughing's a mess. Yes, I did see him often at both Sweetser and uh, the downtown house. And over that period of time, did you observe changes in Mr. Jeff's behavior? Yeah, Johnny became uh, 
I would say, much darker. As I can't time tell on. who's watching the question, he, um, who's asking questions right now. It's so bad. Was, like the audio is so bad, and literally, and they didn't say in dark rooms. Um, the art overall changed. Like everything got much darker in the houses with like heavy. Um, it was always a little. I don't know what the art form would be. Um, dark, but um, it just like literally lighting would go down and big curtains would be everywhere. And he became much less talkative as time went on. Um, I would see less and less of him personally. I would hear him in the house, but I would see less and less of him interaction wise. Like he was with Tron? Um, and when I did, um, he wasn't very happy. What would you hear him say on those occasions when you could hear him the last at different points in time, I heard different things. Uh, sometimes it would just be him milling around the house. Sometimes it would be him having conversations with his no, team, bodyguards totally and happened. stuff, um, or his friends uh, that were over making music at the Switzer location. Um, sometimes it was him and Amber fighting. Um, like I was in his home, so I heard him quite a bit. You said a couple of answers ago that from time to time you would hear uh, Mr. Dunn. I don't know. And I don't know why it's buffering. Hold on. Um, can you, there we go. again, keeping in mind that it's a long time ago, can you, can you describe what you heard? I would say I would just hear a lot of him yelling. His voice would carry through kind of the halls of the house. Sorry, this feed needed to be refreshed. I remember one time in specific that... I could hear Amber was trying to get out of the room and then the door shut again and then I could just hear muffled yelling for, on his part. At the beginning of their relationship, once Ms. Hurd has revealed to you that they were in fact in a relationship, uh, did she talk to you about Mr. Depp? In LA it is. With LA internet's alcohol? horrible. I don't know what's in going on with this. In their relationship, this is unbearable. Uh, she had said that he was sober and um, she was trying to support him in his sobriety. Um, and then subsequently throughout the relationship, we would talk about his breaks in sobriety. Based on your work, uh, as Ms. Hurt's acting coach, primary acting coach, was it your understanding that Mr. Hurt, Mr. Depp had opinions about what role, um, Ms. Hurt should take? There were a couple of occasions where I actually heard Johnny say, um, uh, why would you want to do that kind of role? Um, my woman is going to play that kind of role. Uh, stuff like that. I heard a few times from him over the course of time. Other than saying that he didn't, hearing Mr. Depp say he didn't want his woman playing a role, playing a whore, excuse me, did you ever hear her can use any other language like that um, about the kind of role that Ms. Uh, Heard was being offered? I think so this is Heard's good attorney from the other 2019 depot. Sorry, I'm talking about the period when, uh, the questioning Amber style is not a lane. The questioning style is not a lane. And so you stopped being her acting coach in 2017. And I'm focusing in on what you would call hearing from Mr. Depp about what roles he thought Ms. Heard should play. As I said, it, he would be sitting, He would, initially when she lived in the orange um, location, sometimes he would be nearby. It was a fairly small house um, oh, and he would be nearby kind of uh, earshot. So I mean, I there were times that he was kind of just disparaging. That's, that's a shitty role. Why would you do that? That kind of thing. Disparaging. Um, but he wasn't super negative then. Later on, um, it, as it went on, he was very vocal about the negative terms like i said he called it a whore part or a trash part um or a piece of shit, um all sorts of things like that generally pretty negative if it was something he didn't want her to do did the number of roles that ms heard auditioned for change the audio is unfortunate because this is a good witness for amber heard and the audio yes, being did. awful uh, it, was Sucks. decreasing as it went. Sorry, I forgot to move um, these. And there would be a stretch. Ah, no. There's a time where she wasn't auditioning at all or working on anything at all. During the time that this Mr. is a good witness Jeff that's getting lost together, in the bad audio. Changes in their relationship over time. 
Yeah, early on there were incredibly lovey-dovey and um, May 27th. and um, always together in a positive way. They were very playful and friendly. Um, and then I would see less and less of them together and I would hear a lot of um, muffled arguments through the walls. Um, uh, and when I did see him, uh, sometimes it, 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 the balance would shift. It went from being like a normal couple to very tension filled, especially those last few months that they were together. It, um, and yeah. Uh, did they, uh, was there a, what's wrong? The audio, the audio is what's wrong. The number of times that Ms. Heard was late for or canceled sessions with you change as her relationship with Mr. Duck went on in time. I'm now mourning yeah. the loss of in, this attorney as I said earlier, in this case. Uh, Amber was never late when we worked at the studio. Um, and then as it went on, I began having to actually build in a cushion of an hour around her appointment. Um, it started out just an extra 15 minutes here and there because she'd be late coming downstairs or um, they'd be discussing or he had to talk to her at that moment in time. And eventually as the relationship progressed and the fighting got heavier, um, I would David, I'll talk about these at the break. She'd be sobbing at the beginning of it's, sessions, and we couldn't work until we got her. It's together. not a yes or no. Um, uh, yeah, I ended up having to do a lot of cushion time around her just so that we could actually get something accomplished because she was often very upset. Did you have a case? So wait, this person was there in the house and had to build in a buffer had, of an hour for uh, her to come downstairs. When you had coaching sessions with her during the time that she was together. Oh, a lot of facts. Everyone was living through hell in this relationship. They were together, probably 80, 90% of our sessions began with her crying. Um, uh, and that would be increasing as it went on. Um, ironically, she has a little difficulty crying um, acting wise. So, uh, <laughs> Damn. Too, um, and so, wow. Yeah, we would have to work when we were That's doing it. That's powerful. Advice, but it was a lot towards the end there. A lot of crying sessions. Based on your testimony here, Ms. Sexton, is the acting, is the crying that she did in a role different oh, than the crying you observed my God. so often in the last year of her relationship with Mr. Dutt? Yes, inherently acting crying is very different. Um, unless somebody is working in what's called method, in which that's they couldn't have known. They focus on their own stuff, um, so she is not a method actor. So it would be completely different. They couldn't have known. Speaking for your own self, Miss Sexton, how did you react? The voices from the past saw, ring true. Uh, Amber at these sessions, crying the way you described. They didn't know in 2019. I have a caretaker personality, so. I would prioritize taking care of the person in front of me over um, doing work, which is why I ended up building in all that extra time because uh, I cared about her as a human and I wanted to be there for her in as much as I could as a friend. Um, so th there's no point on working on something if someone isn't fully there or they're upset. Um, it's more important to deal with the person and take care of them than work. And during those sessions, particularly in the last year when you saw Ms. Her crying so often, what was your understanding of the reason for her tears? I would hear them fighting and then hear her come in um, and she would be a wreck after she came in. I, could, I couldn't make out what they were saying and I personally wasn't trying to listen to their fights. Um, so I would just hear the sounds of the screaming. Um, and her usually, she, uh, you could tell she would open the door and try to get him to be quiet and then it'd go back to him yelling. And, um, and I think this is good testimony so for her. That would directly occur before she would come this down. This is a much better lawyer. Upset and trying to pull herself or together. What do you recall saying that they were fighting about? I was witness to some of those who didn't want her going out without 
any sort of security or any team. Um, he didn't want her going and doing things um, just on her own. You described earlier in your testimony, Ms. Sexton, what uh, Amber Heard was like when you first met her. Um, during this period when she was involved with Mr. Depp and particularly toward the end of their relationship, did her behavior change? Over the course of time, she became uh, more and more of a hermit, um, only leaving the house when she had to. Um, again, as I said earlier, literally the house houses became darker with the curtains drawn all the time. Um, a, a, I remember one time in particular when we she was living at the Eastern Columbia that um, we went downstairs to get a slice of pizza. <coughs> I think there were four of us. Um, and Amber oh. gave a homeless kid down there some money and we helped him get to the bus stop and we came back up and uh, Johnny yelled at her about going out and um, that she knew better than to be going out at night and that kind of thing. Um, and when we tried to kind of be like, it's fine, we got pizza downstairs at the building across the street. Then he just started screaming and getting really angry. So um, we, I made my way out. What about her weight? Did you notice any changes during that period? I like this witness a lot too, Amanda. Clear, I like this witness a lot. The time that she was so Amber is one of those people that loses weight when she's stressed out. Um, so she uh, would drop weight and look skeletal. Um, skeletal? At certain point, points in time. Uh, I remember right before their wedding, she had lost a significant amount of weight um, to the point that I was asking her if she was eating regularly. Um, uh, so she's always been fit but she would drop down and get a little gaunt if she was super stressed out and in that last year that she was involved uh, with mr Depp, you know changes in her weight yeah she lost a significant amount of weight and i noticed it specifically because um i had been in australia doing a film and then when i came back uh so I'd been in Australia since December. I came back in February and she looked, uh, she was skin and bones. Um, like she was much thinner than she normally was at that point. So I know during that time period that she had lost a lot of weight and she was very gaunt. Now I'm gonna uh, shortly move on to the other incidents. But for now, it's like I wanna keep generally about things you observed and saw. Um, and the first question I have in that regard is... This fucking uh, sound. During the time that you were Amber Heard's acting coach and she was involved with yeah. Mr. Depp, did you... Yeah, the ECB is not in a good area. Injury they've already established that. I don't know if they'll bring it up again, but they've established that in testimony. When she came back from Australia, there were a lot of, like, little red marks on her arms that look like freshly healing things. Skin, like red marks on her skin, sorry. Um, on her arms that I saw. Um, and that's consistent and then with everything else. subsequently I would see like bruises that look like arms being grabbed or wrists. Um, then I saw that all towards the end. Did there come a time when you accompanied uh, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp to Hicksville, California. Wait, she was yes, in Hicksville? I went to Hicksville uh, for Johnny's birthday celebration with them. Where did our closed captioning go? And there we go. Um, in your own words, can you tell me about that trip and what happened chronologically? We arrived at Hicksville and we had made kind of like a barbecue and drinks. Um, I as, want a barbecue and drinks. Uh, and we were tacos. having a lovely time. I, Johnny was playing guitar and singing. Um, and then as the night went on, uh, today's it, like around sundown, they started passing around a bag of mushrooms and a bag of white powder. Um, I, I didn't even partake in the alcohol because I had had surgery a few months before. So I was 
the only one stone cold sober. Yes. Um, that must have been I, interesting. Then I went to bed early and while my friend and I were in our trailer and we, we heard the fighting happening, um, Johnny screaming and a commotion, um, we didn't come out of our trailer. Uh, and then the quieting down and everyone being like, oh, it's okay. The Christopher, I'll summarize these on them social over there. later today or um, early tomorrow. I will. And then the next morning when we got up, the group was talking about what struggling. had happened that night. And then I kind of left that conversation and went to the trailer to check on Amber. And um, I saw the completely torn apart trailer. Um, Johnny was apologizing for what he had done and he was instructing his bodyguards to just pay it off. Let's just take care of it. And- um, Well, I mean, I isn't that Amber, what you do when there's damage? She was really shaken up. The next day, can you describe for me what the trailer where Amber and Johnny were staying looked like? Um, the oh, inside was in shambles. I remember seeing a light hanging off the wall. There was broken stuff everywhere. Um, dishes, it looked like, or not dishes, like the wood was broken. Things were hanging off the wall. Um, it was in shambles on the inside. And that next day, uh, I think you said that you had occasion to see Mr. Depp, is that correct? Yeah. How did he look that next day uh, when, you were, when you saw the trailer? He looked very worried. He was apologizing. He was saying he would take care of it. He was trying, he, he was like, don't worry about it, babe. We're going to get this taken care of. And Amber was uh, really like closed off and quiet. And he just kept kind of apologizing to her over and over again and then telling his bodyguards to just take care of it, just get it done, whatever it is, just pay for it. Um, and then he went off to go have and that, that conversation with them. Doesn't surprise me. What was Mr. Depp saying that next day when he was apologizing? I just remember him saying, I'm so sorry, babe, I'll take care of it. I, I know, I know this is bad, but I can take care of it. I'm sorry I did this, that kind of thing. I think you said, uh, testified in survey, but I want to make sure the record is clear. Did you recall Mr. Depp using the word monster? Okay. I heard him on different times making apologies that he said, I'm sorry, I turned into a monster. I just remember a profuse amount of apologies. I don't know if that time in particular had that verbiage. Anything else about Hicksville that you remember that you haven't told me about? I mean, the only thing I stated that I did see him eat the mushrooms. I saw him holding the white bag. I don't know what he did with that, the bag of white powder. Um, uh, every, everyone except for me was drinking and different people were partaking in different drugs at that time. It's been super um, fucking awkward. So I, I didn't keep track of that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know anything else that I can recall. It does look like she's reading something down on the desk. Um, it does. I want to go forward to another incident. Um, and that uh, is the day of um, April 21, 2016. That's consistent with the um, makeup artist. Basically saying she burned you, out. Uh, was Amber it was a consuming birthday. Consuming friendship. Um, you have occasion to see Amber her birthday. Now we're moving to the birthday. Yes, I attended the party. Um, and again, All right, birthday party. Um, you, you say you attended the party. Can you describe the party you attended? Who was there? The party was happening in one of the penthouses, the one that they didn't live in. It's where they did yes, most of their attorneys will go next. Did most of our coaching. Um, and I don't remember the number of that one. Uh, and there were several friends of Amber's there. Um, and it does look like she's spent reading the first couple hours waiting for Johnny. Um, and then eventually Amber said, just let's not stop waiting for him. Let's just start. So we went out to the balcony no. to start dinner and that's when Johnny group, yes. finally came down and, um, he was severely inebriated when he came down. Um, and they, uh, 
uh, Brandon, <coughs> I don't remember his last name, it starts with an M, escorted him, kind of helped him stay stable. Um, and we went to the table and we started dinner. I think the lawyer and is on Mars. Johnny and I was That's sitting why. two seats. The audio is Johnny, Johnny and Amber clearly were very tense and had been. The witnesses I today what they'd been doing, but they were very tense. are better witnesses than we've seen. He would try to kind of touch her and she would shy away. Um, and then Rocky was trying to change the tone of the party because it had really gotten very somber at that point. And we're in Amber's and she face. asked everyone to kind of say their favorite story about Amber. And as we went around the table, everyone shared their stories. And um, when we got to Johnny, uh, he started talking about uh, that he remembered when he first met her the imprint of Amber's ass on his couch were his words. And um, it just all kind of took a turn from there. She was clearly embarrassed. She asked him to stop and he kept telling the story. And it just, it got really awkward and uncomfortable at that point and never really recovered any sort of jovial energy. Um, we ate and then um, I left shortly thereafter. I, I forgot to ask you this question about Hicksville. Uh, the day after uh, when you saw um, Mr. Jeff and Ms. Hearn in the, uh, the rack trailer. Because uh, it's not come up there? in court. No one's asked. Yeah, no as witnesses. I said, Amber was very closed off. It she just hasn't very come up. Quiet. She, she had said, don't come in. I don't want you to see this. Um, so, yeah, she seemed very embarrassed. Now, Switching forward to uh, Amber's 30th birthday party, I think you testified that, that Mr. Um, Depp seemed inebriated when he arrived. What, what's your basis for saying that? She does look like she's reading. He was slurring his words and wobbly on his feet. He ran into a couple things, which is when uh, Brandon came over and kind of locked arms with him to kind of help him stand up. You said you saw her later with a healing bruise. Um, what do you recall seeing that healing bruise? On her cheek. It was on her right cheek. I think I think it was right. Yeah. Do you know how long after the incident that you just discussed with the cell phone, uh, you saw the turd in her face? It was a few days later, but I don't, I couldn't tell you exactly when. I mean, everyone heels a different way, right? I could still see kind of the yellow and stuff in there, so. Lolo, that's now, the experience I'm used to as well. But mm -hmm. abusers don't tend to apologize. Um, though I've seen addicts apologize. How did you, when was the last time you spoke to her? Generally not abusers. Specifically, did um, you remember? In my experience. We went over to have, I went over, it was sometime in August, I can narrow it down to August, to have wine, yeah, but she's uh, to have wine and catch up. Cause like I said, I think it had been two years since we'd physically seen each other. Both times when you met with Ms. Heard in August of this year, did you meet with her at her I house? I don't know. Yes. Again, I like this attorney did for Ms. Heard Heard's side from 2019 more. Did Heard mention the allegations that Mr. Depp is making against her in relation to this case when you met with her? Only to say, to talk to the attorneys about it. Uh, she reached out to her. When you say only to say to talk to the attorneys about it, what uh, specifically did Ms. Hurd tell you? Uh, like she said, would you be willing to sit down and talk to my attorneys about everything that you witnessed? Um, and then afterwards, I, after I kind of talked about it all, it felt really intense to me and I felt incredibly guilty. Was it during one of these two times that you met with Ms. Heard in August of this year that Ms. Heard told you for the first time that Mr. Depp had allegedly raped her with a bottle in Australia? Oh. Yeah, she did talk about the bottle then, yeah. Was it the first meeting that you had with Ms. Heard in August of this year that she mentioned that? No, it was, it was after, like, I... I had come to see her and had a wine night and catch up. And then I, after I had talked to the attorneys, after we had a good cry, she, we were talking more about what had happened. And she was saying how she didn't even tell me any, everything. And yeah, that's when it So came. she told her things. She rekindled their friendship and told her things. And just to confirm, 
before the deposition? I told you about the bottle incident in Australia where she claims Mr. Depp penetrated her with it. Before your deposition, your first deposition in the state in August of 2019? Uh-huh. So you had spoken to the attorney informally, correct, at her house? Yeah. But it was before you were formally deposed in this case. Um, on, I believe it was August 30th, 2019. Yes. I'll rewatch that part. And just to confirm and make the record really clear, this was the first time Ms. Hearn had told you that Mr. Depp had allegedly penetrated her with a bottle in Australia, correct? Yeah, she had told me about the assault with the bottle, being hit with the bottle and the broken glass and everything. Um, hit with the bottle. It, she had told me about all that many times before and then this time she started crying and sobbing and started telling me about the assault the <coughs> assault and when Ms. Heard told you about this alleged rape that occurred did she know that you were going to be deposed by her attorney uh no because they were all in the other room they didn't even tell me that they like they were like we may have you for a deposition and that's when I had said to them if you're going to do that I would appreciate huh. it if you did it before I left the states um, and they said we may or may not need you and it was a couple days later that they so then sent me the contact and said we are going to so see you did you she know you were going to be heard. deposed yes she did how many times you spent maybe a significant amount of time with I would say probably around like 10 or 20 times. And that's like 10 or 20 times that you saw Mr. Death and spent maybe more significant time than him just passing through a room. Um, how many times would you say he was or appeared to be sober? Not many. <laughs> I, he would, if he was coming down to have a conversation, he was pouring a glass of whiskey or rolling a joint or having wine. Um, it always seemed to me that uh, he's not a social <coughs> animal, if you will, um, and he would have a drink or a smoke in order to go talk to people, is what it felt like. But, um, so most of the time I saw him, it was that. You would agree with me, though, Ms. Sexton, that someone getting a drink is different than someone appearing This drunk, sounds like it's correct? Camille Vasquez now. Yeah, this sounds drink. like Camille now. They didn't. Of the day. They didn't say so when it switched. A bit more the my question is a little more specific. as Camille. Mr. Depp, how many times did he appear inebriated? Not, you know, holding a glass of whiskey or smoking a joint, but how many times did he appear inebriated to you? I would say at least half, if not more. How would you describe Mr. Depp's personality when he was or appeared sober versus when he appeared inebriated? He was very quiet when he was sober and before he would start drinking, he was very quiet. Um, very quiet when he was sober? Almost a whisper mumble most of the time. And then you would get very loud. Ah, no, sorry. I was trying to move and the- And then you would get very loud when he was inebriated and I was trying to move he those. would go to like boisterous first and telling like cool stories and stuff, that kind of happy drunk. And then it would move into the loud angry drunk well they could all use the same wording if she had conversations with them shortly before their did you witness we're going to talk about that angry when he was drunk? a couple of times yeah yeah it's crazy that that's what that the connection on this depot is awful Mr. Death, uh, appeared to be sober angry drunk and that was the first time you saw him appear angry drunk i couldn't tell you the first time per se i like i have images in my head I remember him like yelling and screaming and the bodyguard coming over and being like, hey boss, let's let's take this to another room. Can you tell me as much as you can remember of that incident? I remember being in the kitchen of that house um, and he came down and he was yelling about something. Amber and I were having a conversation um, and we were going to I think we were going to work on something that day. It was later in the evening where it was really dark in there. Like I said, sometimes they drew all the curtains. Um, it, in my memory, it's very dark. Um, and 
he was yelling and that older guy came and like scooped his arm so around Jerry him judge it's like all right boss let's let's take this to another place um because he was inebriated i could tell from the way he was talking and he was just kind of yelling and i i don't recall what was that it all kind of happened very quickly i don't recall what he was yelling about or if it was even at anybody he was just kind of down there and drunk and, <laughs> and scooped him up you anticipated mike's question questions, which were, who was he yelling at and what was he yelling about? So you don't recall, is that correct? No, I don't. And you said the other instance that you remember of Mr. Depp appearing inebriated and dating, we was at one of his penthouses in downtown this, LA. Oh, they're correct? packing up for the mm -hmm. day. This is um, Camille Vasquez's what questioning. What were the circumstances that you remember about that instance? I remember one time he was mad um, that we'll talk about that. people were in the house because I had just done. gotten there. I don't even remember. There might have been like two people there or something. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, he was storming up those stairs to his office bedroom area. Um, and then Amber and I went to the other penthouse to work. When you saw Mr. Death, he appeared inebriated and was angry and yelling. Did you see him hit his first? Point? No, I did not see him hit her. Did you see him kick the truck? I did not see him kick her. Did you see him throw something at her? I saw him coming at her, and that's when the bodyguard stepped in, like coming towards her. But I did not, like, it, so throwing himself at, like, but I was not witness to him throwing objects at her. When you say he, he was coming at her, are you describing the incident at Sweet Sir or at the penthouse? Sweet Sir, he came in through that hallway and we were sitting at, it was kind of like an island there, like right in front of the fridge and I was in front of the fridge and he came in from there, was like coming at her and then the guy, the bodyguard like came in and scooped him up. Remember what Mr. Depp was yelling about, or yeah, what? yes. But it appeared to you. So this is her second deposition. That Mr. Depp was coming at Mr. Depp. Yeah, what? she was shaking and upset. It felt like something that had been going on for a while. And all the time that you've known Miss Heard and Mr. Depp, did you ever? Mr. Depp be violent towards her. I never saw him hit her. I heard him use terminology, as I said before, and as I said, come at her, but I never saw him hit her. If I had, I would have called the cops, to be honest. You never saw Mr. Depp throw anything at her, any objects at her, correct? No, the only thing I saw was the aftermath like I would see things broken afterwards. Um, and like I said, in Hicksville, I heard the yelling and then saw the breaking and saw him apologizing for it. But I, with my own two eyes, did not see him That's physically fair. break the stuff or throw the stuff. When Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard went to Australia, did she tell you that she threw a bottle of vodka at him and that that would sever his finger? No, no, she had told me that he had broken the bottle and cut himself with the bottle that he had broken. He broke the bottle and cut his finger off with the bottle? When That's a different that he had version. Cut himself with the bottle he had broken, did she say that he had taken the bottle and cut off his finger? Or that <coughs> it was an accident and that his finger was severed from the broken bottle? Do you understand the distinction? Yeah, I, she didn't say that he, she didn't indicate that he cut off, like went purposely to cut it. it. What it seemed to me is that he had broken the bottle against something and then he was doing things with the bottle, like shaking it around and that he had cut himself from that. It didn't indicate that he had in any way purposely cut himself. Ah, uh, he... He accidentally did it with the bottle. Saying something to you Not a, a phone. With him later about his Not a to phone at all. Sure 
Amber I remember told a specific her time when Amber her. still lived at she was Orange, like fucking and Amber was out with her girlfriends, and I had come over too early for the party, so it was just Johnny and I sitting there having some whiskey, and he was smoking cigars, um, and he was talking about that it was. I said something about. He said he had to get up early to do a test, and I was like, "Oh, don't you have any sort of like?" concern about that and he's like it's easy to fake insurance tests that's why we do what we do oh. i was talking to him because another client of mine had had to do an insurance test and he was like oh you can fake a piss test you can do this um and he just kind of went over a few different ways that it's easy to fake insurance tests and made a joke of it i was wondering if the insurance tests were going to come up oh are we done all right, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the, the day today, so have a good evening, and we'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, again, did not discuss the case with anybody, and don't do any outside research, okay? Have Let's a good see evening. if they talk about what witnesses they expect tomorrow. That's what I'm going to be looking for here is the judge asking what to expect tomorrow for the witnesses. Oh, Runkle, yeah, Runkle's like, I'm ready to go. Runkle's probably exhausted. And then I'll answer questions. That was interesting at the end there. The judge is closing her laptop. Do you I'm have any remote witnesses tomorrow that you need to access for? Uh, do you need a WebEx? You don't need a WebEx link? Deposition designations and live witnesses. Deposition and live witnesses. Okay. All right. That sounds good. All right. Everybody knows their homework, right? Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll see you in the morning. It's Wednesday. Everybody has to get their jury instructions in to the judge. ASAP. Wow, that courtroom sure cleared out. A lot of people waited in line and a lot of people aren't in court this afternoon. Very, very interesting. Uh, who was that last witness? That was the uh, acting coach, Amber Heard's acting coach. And that is the screen that the jurors can watch the depositions on. You see it turning and it looks like it goes down in there. I look LA, LA courts were not this high tech. I'll tell you what. So that's the screen that the jurors have been watching it on. I'm going to wait and see if we get a camera pan. So that's going on back down. I love seeing what goes on at the end of the court day here in the courtroom. Who's talking to who? Amber's just standing there by herself waiting to leave, it seems. And we are going to do Q&A and go from there. So with that, um, wow, that was some interesting, interesting testimony. So it looks like everybody's leaving. We are going to just leave that up. I'm going to start with questions. Again, these were um, these were depositions. Depositions are kind of boring. I'm surprised how fast we went through this. Um, just Kevin, things. Thank you so much. I've got the other one pulled. Um, my PO box is down in the descriptions, and it gets linked periodically through the mods. But it's in the descriptions of all of my videos, so it is it is it is there. It is there, and it's in my channel description too. No, Siri, I can't say that again. You said. I'm sorry that you couldn't hear what I said, Siri. Reckon, reckon the flow here. All right, let's go see if anybody else has any other angles of leaving court. I'm going to go check real quick um, to that thou how, who shall not be named and see if they are still live with any more exiting court for the day. And I'm not seeing any um, other live coverage on them. Is there anybody else that's live with that covered right now because i don't see it um oh well i see us live let's see let's go right here nope um everybody's court feeds are dark but on the on the youtube live page i saw us so hi youtube live page um the one thing we do need to peek in on since we've been checking in on this periodically today i i i don't i don't even know where we're at so elaine didn't i didn't hear elaine say five witnesses I heard Elaine say we have depositions and live witnesses. That's what I heard Elaine say at the end there. Um, so let us get to let us get to questions. What are some of the inconsistencies you thought were odd from this witness? Um, well, it looked like this witness was reading, which was not good. But the way that Depp's finger got injured was very, very interesting um because amber heard said he smashed it with the phone and then she went to bed and she's not quite sure well closer in time because that was a 2019 deposition closer in time she told her acting coach that um <laughs> 
it got smashed with the bottle. He did something with the broken bottle and, and cut it. There were a lot of inconsistencies in today. I think one of the most interesting things we saw is her saying, you know, Amber was crying out of, you know, when she was together, but oddly enough, she has a very hard or she has a hard time when crying, when acting. And I thought that that was a very interesting distinction. So that was interesting for me. Um, all right. I'm going to get to as many questions as I can. It is 4.15. Um, off to sleep. Love it. Off to sleep. The Kim K chick was reading too. Um, it's hard, you know, before COVID, and this was 2019, so this wouldn't have been COVID, which is interesting that this depot seems to be remote. But before 2015, before 2020, um, these depots were mostly done in a big conference room. So that couldn't really happen, but it's a lot harder when we get to the place where these are being done remotely and you can't really see what they have in the room. I mean, you can ask them about it, but if they say no, what can you do about it? I mean, there's not really much that can be done. So depositions are sloggy. Depositions are sloggy. They just are. They're, they're kind of boring to either. They're hard. Just finished watching the posted live day 16 and 17. I was not able to do two exams. It's 5 a.m. in the morning now. Good thing I was able to update myself. Thanks a lot. Those were better than today. Love your live streams and insight. Hello from the Philippines. Uh, Marcius, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I thank you. And you're welcome. And we will we will get into this. Can you interview Runkle only if he accepts and comes in and says hi? I'm going to make sure he has the afternoon stream again and I will do that. So it's, again, he is also probably exhausted, and this is a long afternoon to try to stay awake in. He's also trying to stream from a, from a phone um, that is that is out of country. So it is, it is a, a, a feat. Um, so I'm just going to let him know that he can come in. And if not, we'll, we'll take a look at his Twitter feed to see what the jurors, uh, to see if anybody perked up with those last few witnesses. It, it's fair that they might have, right? It's fair that they might have per perked up. YouTube, all I want to do is watch a video. Stop making me update. <laughs> the skeletal pronunciation was a dead giveaway for this being read. I can't think of an accent that would pronounce it as that. I can't do it. But yes, the skeletal pronunciation was very, very odd. And again, I mispronounce things because I misread things. I'm dyslexic and I misread things all the time. So, man. Man, 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 man. So, all right, let us get to questions. Bear Cotta, thank you so much. That's a very kind super chat. Um, this is too perfect. Abusers don't apologize, and it could have been Amber causing fights and arguments. I don't believe all this. I mean, she could be upset after a verbal argument, even if she started the argument. I think a lot of this testimony rang true. What was very interesting, though, is the testimony about the not being able to cry and the difference in the bottle story is a big difference. Like that, for me, that's a big difference because it completely contradicts Amber Heard's testimony on the stand. And that is Amber told me this. And now the story is completely different. And the story is different with a lot of I don't remember. So I think it's odd. Question, do you think it's odd that she would have people over often when she knew Johnny would become upset and perhaps lose it? Most DV victims tend to isolate from their community. I don't hear this from her. I don't either. And everybody had keys. People had keys. People lived there. It seemed like lots of people were around. I think that what we're seeing is a very toxic relationship. I think we are seeing um, struggles with addiction. I think we are seeing two people that pushed each other's buttons. Um, and I don't doubt that there was a lot of toxicity in this relationship. As I said at the beginning of this case, I think the testimony about all the fights and the verbal fights mirror exactly what we're hearing in the audio. But what doesn't match and that is difficult for me is the um, the descriptions of violence and the photos that we've seen. They are inconsistent and it's hard for me to get over that. But um, that doesn't mean that it won't sway the jury. So um, we will get to the witnesses. I meant to do this one first. Has today testimonies changed who wins? We're not even at the end of Amber Heard's case yet. And I am very careful. I don't give percentages. Um, I don't even like to do more likely than not. It should be the case that Johnny Depp's side seems much stronger at the beginning of the case. And then you get the other side and you're like, oh, there's other stuff to consider. 
at the end is when you put it all together. So it is very difficult to decide where we're at. I still think with all the testimony in that when I started this case, I thought, I don't know how Johnny Depp's going to win this. This is a difficult, difficult defamation case. And it's not just defamation, it's defamation by implication. And we've got, you know, at least some photos that seem to indicate something. Difficult case. Today, I think he has a better chance of winning than I thought at the beginning of this case. And that's because Amber Heard's testimony was so bad. Do I think some of this testimony has been very helpful for her? Absolutely. Do I think the jurors could be like, yes, this was a toxic relationship? Absolutely. I do. I think it looks very, very bad for her that she rekindled relationships with a lot of the numerous witnesses before they needed to do their depositions. I do not think that looks good for her. I don't know how much Johnny Depp's team will point that out in closing, but they have to. They have to make sure that the jury connects those dots, that she rekindled friendships and relationships with people before this. But now we're getting to a place in this case where it's either um, are Amber's yes men lying or are Johnny's yes men lying, or is the truth somewhere in the middle? And again, I think the jury is going to go to what do the photos show? What do the records show? What do we see? What do we hear? And what does the audio say? And I think from all of that evidence, they can conclude that this was an abusive relationship, maybe not physically, but this was an abusive relationship in ways. Both of them, you know, we know the toes incident. We know that Depp admits that they bumped heads in some way when he was trying to stop her in a fight. We know that she says that that was a headbutt. So, they might be able to conclude that, and that absolutely rules against the print article defamation. But we've still got those two headlines on the um, on the online version. And so does the jury find the online version with those headlines alleging sexual violence to be proven or not? Do they believe that or not? Do they think that those are new allegations? The thing that's hardest for me with that testimony still is Amber Heard's testimony was, um, I wanted to protect this. I didn't want that information to come out. I didn't want that information public. Well, and then saying, well, I didn't even notice the headline. If there's information that you are trying to keep secret, like trying to keep secret, I can only imagine that if you saw the headline, your response would be with a chill that can't be out there. I'm trying to protect that. I mean, the way you would feel if like your address or phone number ended up on the internet, right? It's like, this is information I want to protect. And now it's in a headline. I don't find it credible at all that she said, I didn't even notice the headline when I did the retweet. No, no, not for me. It's a no for me. If you are trying to hide something and that gets out there, that the response is, I didn't even see the headline. I can't. So I think that that is still the strongest cause of action for Depp. I think that um, these witnesses have been good for her. She needed good witnesses. We expected her to have some good witnesses. There had to be. And I think that these witnesses, again, show that she uh, was charming and brought them in and that this was a very dramatic up and down relationship, which again, supports everything in the audio, te- uh, the audio. All of these witnesses, to me, support everything we've heard in these audio testimony. They would get into fights. They would call each other names. And I don't think any of that's new. So I'm not looking at these witnesses going, oh, this is awful. I'm looking at these witnesses going, this seems pretty consistent, but then there's moments. It's a moment for me that a professional makeup artist is like, there was a little swelling. She generally had a natural look. That's not what Amber Heard's side has said. Amber Heard's side has said, you can't tell how much makeup she's wearing. The makeup artist that was her friend said she went for a very natural light look. She wore Benetton and some foundation, not foundation. She wore Benetton and some you know, high-end um, concealer. And she didn't say, I had to bust out a color correcting kit. She said, I used a different tone of concealer to cover um, the blue in the under eye. Okay. Um, but she didn't talk about doing like, Hey, this is heavy, heavy duty makeup that we needed. This is heavy, heavy duty, this and that. Um, she said, you know, it was just, her lip was a bit swollen. I can't under, I can't still wrap my head around a split lip with a matte lipstick. And that doesn't sink into the crevices. I'm in my (laughs) forties. I'm very aware of how lipstick sinks into the crevices of my mouth. I don't wear a matte lipstick because it looks like little lines. So I just don't, hence the gloss, by the way, hence the gloss. But I can't, um, 
you know, I can't, I, I can't unhear some of that testimony. I think though, that some of the later witnesses didn't come across as biased. And I appreciate that. Yes, they are Amber Heard's friends, but they didn't come across as pushing. And I appreciated that because I don't think that Depp's team came out as pushing either. So if all of Depp's team are yes men, then what are Amber's, what are Amber's people? You know, it's, I can understand using a red lip to cover redness. Like if you bit your lip or you had like redness in your lip, but I can't understand um, trying to cover up a split with a mat lip. I just can't, I can't wrap my head around it, but this is a jury of young men. So who knows? Who knows? All right. Let us continue on to, um, on to the questions. And I'm trying to get, um, I'm trying to get the different, the different things. What I saw a question and then everything jumped. Um, eh. which lawyer on JD's side questioned Elizabeth Mars? I don't remember the year of it. I don't remember the year of it. Um, it might've been Camille. I think it sticks out that she doesn't have a ton of witnesses like JD. The ones she has don't like her anymore. And all, and all JDs like him, it seemed it does. And I don't know if that will, I don't know how that will, um, how that will play. And we'll see. I mean, it might leave people feeling sorry for Amber. Um, Leticia, does your lip gloss literally light up? Uh, it does. It also has a mirror. So you can see it when you put it on. <laughs> it's also linked. This is uh, my friend Jen Gerard's company. So Gerard Cosmetic. It does. It lights up and you can use the little. So if you're at a restaurant or a karaoke bar where it's dark, you can you can see it. You can see it all. Every time I start considering Amber Heard's side, something about JD's story triggers a bad childhood memory. And I end up in tears and sympathizing with him. And, and at which time it's okay to take a step away from this case. It's fair. Um, if Amber Heard has a hard time crying when acting, explains why she didn't have any visible tears while testifying. I think that might come up in closing. I can't imagine. Thoughts on the depots being from 2019 and not in person. I don't know if it will matter to the jury or if they will catch it, but I think that those are closer in time. So I think it's actually not, I don't think it hurts uh, because they're closer in time to the instances. So I don't. Um, Colleen, I talked about this on the morning stream and I'll just address it again. I will listen to these things from, um, from outside of the case after the case, I've got a lot of them tagged and I will go listen to them. You guys are welcome to go do whatever research you're like. I am trying to keep my brain as full of information that the jury will know as I can, not the outside information. And when I, when I name the stream, like lawyer reacts, it's because I want to react to this evidence as it's coming out day by day. I don't, I went through the UK case, but I didn't really go down rabbit holes on the outside edge of, of this case that's not in court. So I'm waiting for things to come up. I'm aware that things exist, but I'm not like sunk in with knowledge from outside this four walls of the um, courthouse and neither is the jury. The jury is not privy to what the internet knows. And the internet knows a lot more than the jurors do at this point. So we, um, we will see, we will just see as this continues to come out, which is why I'm going to give you my day by day, um, where, where we are. So, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to, what, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm going to continue to do is the day by day of what we see in, in, um, in court. I just saw the question and I couldn't grab it close enough. I couldn't grab it quick enough. Closing will be on May 27th is what we are told. Is this witness tampering calling them? Well, not specifically in the way of like criminal witness tampering, but it could go to prove bias. It could go to prove that she's tried to sway their testimony and they're allowed to argue it to the jury. I just still don't see why that Johnny loses this up to this point. I just don't see a way that Johnny loses. Um, winning is harder for him. In this case, winning has always been harder for him. It's defamation. The statements are broad. The jury gets to decide. So it it is not a slam dunk for him. But if the jury does not like her, there is a path to victory. I didn't see a path for him to win before this. I don't think there's any path that she wins on the counterclaims. I just don't see it. Please forgive my elderly ignorance, Sheila. Can you explain the rainbow glasses mean on my iPad screen? I told my husband I'm in court this afternoon for my recovery from having my root canal this morning. You're the best. Thank you. The glasses up on the screen are the logo for the channel. I think there's a pair down below. I used to have like my swoop initials one place and then it ended up with glasses both places. So it's just the 
logo of my channel. Does it look bad? It's mostly depositions. It depends on how the jury likes the depositions. I don't think looks bad is the right framing for me. Um, the jury might not get the juicy bits of the testimony because they're bored AF and they're not listening. When it's not engaging and that audio, that last witness what had good moments for both sides, but the audio on the questions was so bad and the context is in the questions. For the mods, you guys need a beer after the last several weeks. Uh, sorry, get one on me. Sorry, I can't give you more. Don't, we will, we will absolutely take care of our mods. Our mods have been amazing. So the bodyguards say he was 20 feet from her at the apartment. IO said the same, but this lady said he was going after her and yelling when the other said Amber was yelling. Um, unless the timeline's different because I'm super confused sometimes what date they're talking about. So yes, it's possible. I wonder how this witness can be so composed and answer so straightforward without hesitation. Is that possible? It is possible when people know what they're talking about and they've been asked about it before. And that's what we're seeing here too, is this is this last witness, the, um, the acting coach, this was not her first, uh, deposition. She had talked about, was this before this deposition or your previous deposition? They've gone through this before and they will generally tell the attorneys the whole story, but it also sounded from the questions and I marked the time so I can go back and watch it. Um, it also sounded from the questions that Amber Heard sat down and told this person everything. And I wonder how much that impacted their story. So uh, it looks like Runkle is out of court and tweeting. So we're going to go to the Twitter. We're going to go to the Twitter and see. Also, did you notice that Amber Heard's acting coach said she had trouble making tears when she acting cries? Yes. And it's different from her regular crying. Yes. Because they did. Boom, Runkle. That's what we wanted to know. Boom. That's what we wanted to know. Um. I think that little, that little, uh, that little note is going to be the thing that social media takes away from all of the testimony today. I think that snippet from 2019, the voices of the past, dead men tell no tales. I think that clip is going to be what carries today on social media. I really do. Because if Runkle's saying the jury perked up at that, um, then, you know, we all perked up. I perked up. All of us perked up. Juror one is just done with Amber Heard's team, and I don't think they're getting them back. And this is the thing. Once you lose a juror, you're at risk for a hung jury. If there's one juror that's like, I believe Amber, this is all fucked. And the other jurors are like, no, you don't get a verdict. Because if a person believes either of these parties strongly, if you believe strongly Amber's side, can you imagine agreeing with someone that she defamed Johnny Depp? You would be like, that's disgusting and preposterous and there's no way. But if you strongly believe Johnny Depp, can you imagine agreeing that he wasn't defamed? You'd be like, that's disgusting and preposterous. And I will not put my name on doing that. So you run the risk of this jury not being able to decide if you have one on either side or a handful on either side. Ooh. So, um, it should be noted that Elaine seemed happier with Whitney. Okay. We got that. So Runkle's just starting to tweet. That is the tweet. That's the tweet. Did you notice that the acting coach said, cause that's the tweet. That's the one that matters. Um, Emily, you should officiate a mass laundered wedding. What do you say? Well, Elena, we will see. We will try to figure it out. If people want weddings officiated, I'm sure we can, we can make it happen. I don't know. We'll figure it out. A massive wedding, I don't know about, but we can figure it out. I don't want people's individual days to have to be like a group day. Um, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. We've got live witnesses. Is tomorrow the day they just call Johnny Depp? Who knows? They've got more video depots. They've got Johnny Depp. I can pull up their witness list and take a look at who might be left in just a minute. Can the judge share her thoughts after the verdict? She won't. They won't. It's not. It's not for them. If the judge did share her thoughts on this trial, it would likely only be also, I just wanted to, we had to take a peek at this because damn y'all. Thank you. We weren't even at 400,000 this morning. I don't know what's happening. These are just the things are happening. We've now like things are happening. Um, if the judge does share her thoughts, I don't know where I put that super chat. I apologize. If the judge does share her thoughts, it might be on what it's like running a a case like this. Like I could see this judge speaking at a conference and being like, this is what it's like to run a case 
with cameras, um, with celebrity, with dealing with the courthouse and security and stuff like that. I cannot see her. God, you guys, I cannot see her giving comments on what she thought of either side and things like that. I can't see it. But the how you go through this, I can. Um, Judge Ito would talk about it on occasion, like what it was like having cameras in the courtroom and stuff after the OJ case. It was always weird appearing before Judge Ito when I was a DA, like going into Judge Ito's courtroom and being like, I saw you on TV when I was in high school. It's weird that I'm in your court right now. Do Depp's side have to declare what rebuttal witnesses they are bringing in? And can Amber Heard's team object? If um, I would need to look at the Virginia rules. Generally, the rebuttal witnesses could be on the witness list. It depends if there's door opening and impeachment. But I would ask Rob. I will ask Rob Law and Lumber. Ah! Sorry, my husband just walked into my office and absolutely scared the ever living, living shit out of me. Um, I don't know where we're at with water. Um, we're, we're kind of okay. So you scared the crap out of me and I'm sure I just scared a bunch of people and their pets. You, you were definitely here. You scared me so badly. You scared me so badly. Um, so I will, I will ask Rob from lawn lumber, um, because that can also go by local rules. So, it could be witnesses on the witness list, um, but if it's impeachment witnesses, when they decide to use them is when they have to turn them over. So that um, is Jennifer Howell going to be called in rebuttal. I I would think that the door is open for that. They laid a foundation for that to happen. They laid a foundation for that to happen. So question, what happens if they are caught doing outside research for the jurors? They get yeeted off of the jury. I'm going to have nightmares of Umber chasing me around, Hogwarts badgering me with what if any questions or making you right. It's like, I will not tell lies. It's like, what if any, what if any, what if any? <laughs> um, I was in a car accident, busted my lip around the holidays. And when I wore red lipstick, my lips looked super uneven, especially in photos. I think they have exaggerated this. I think the, I think the split lip ex is exaggerated too. Um, everyone keeps saying split lip. I think split lip goes outside the margins of your lips and stuff. Uh, it looks it to me, and this is just me. It looks like her lip was dry and she peeled a bit of skin off the lip. And so it's like maybe two layers of skin missing. And that's what my kid looks like when he peels his lip in the winter. Have the witnesses today changed your perspective? I think there were good moments for Amber Heard that were consistent, though too consistent to be a thing. I think Josh Drew was the most powerful, but I think I've always had the perspective that this was a really toxic relationship and this kind of solidified that this went both ways. Um, but again, with the witnesses today, they're like, no, it was, it was a lot of injury. The pic, I can't get around the pictures. I just can't. I just can't. I also, the timing, uh, the Kim Kardashian witness, the timing of when the wine was spilled and when things were damaged is now in question because she's like, this is not what I saw, you know, after the police were here. And that goes to Johnny Depp's side's theory that the police came out and were like, you know, it doesn't look like this or that. And then, and then when the second set came out, then there were stuff was kind of tossed and then there were pictures taken after it called that timing into question. So far, I'm seeing a coached witness with no authenticity. That's from earlier today. And I think that was as to not the acting coach, but the one before. Question, um, are you still going to grow with a video conference? Nikki, I am not going to grow with video this year, unfortunately. I love Sean Cannell. I wanted to go to grow with video. It's next week. Um, the date I was speaking at grow with video ended up conflicting in a way that I could not fix with my kiddo's graduation because ADHD and I put his graduation in the calendar wrong. And I'm literally mortally embarrassed by that. Um, so I had to send Sean my apologies um, to with grow with video. So I'm not going to be able to be on uh, speaking in, in some of the panel discussions because of graduation being in my calendar the wrong day. So bummed. Has anyone pointed out that the bruising could be due to Botox? Uh, it's not, it's, at, well, yes, the internet has pointed it out. It has not come up in court. Did anyone besides Amber's sister say that Johnny hit Amber's sister? No, not even Amber. So no, not even Amber, um, which is also interesting. Uh, which is very interesting. Did you see Kat Tenbarg's tweet? No, I've not been on Twitter while I've been streaming much other than to pop in and look at what's coming out of court. I've watched two days of this trial and it doesn't look good for Johnny. Well, this trial didn't look good for Johnny before trial started. Um, I think, so it depends on the perspective, I guess. If you come into this trial thinking, oh, this is solid for Johnny Depp, then maybe 
But I came into this trial with, how do you get here? Like, how do you do this? How do you win this case on defamation per se? And then, you know, after her testimony and stuff, I'm like, oh, there's a path. So I still think there's a path. Um, Simi, thank you so much. That's incredibly sweet. I appreciate it. Thank Oh, Canada. Thank you. Question. Do you think Amber Heard's team showing good tactic with stronger witnesses now to help the jury forget Amber Heard's testimony? Mel? Yes, it is a very good idea. Um, can't afford another super chat to ask. No worries to afford another super chat. I try my best to get to all. Um, and it's, it's, I'm trying to learn to balance having this many people on stream. It's new to me, but I think it's absolutely a winning strategy. And I think that was, I think they knew what we would see from Amber. And I think that this is probably a better strategy to bring in the people who are less um, emotionally heightened about it to give this testimony that does back up a lot of what Amber said. The thing is where they're consistent, like the stuff in Hicksville, they're not just consistent with Amber's side because Amber had a lot more, um, uh, injury around that time, but they're consistent with like the, the property damage that Depp described too. Um, I think we learned why her crying doesn't look real on the stand. Is it possible no matter how good these testimonies are, them being video depots will hurt Amber Heard's team in a way because the jury can check out? Yes. And the audio was so hard that it's hard to pick up those key moments. Um, does it look like things are in Johnny Depp's favor? I, as I, well, I think I went through it thoroughly where I'm sitting right now. Um, he's moved the needle more than I expected him to. And Amber Heard's team has had less good days than I expected them to. So overall for me, I think this trial has gone better than I expected for Depp and worse than I expected for Heard. That does not necessarily mean the jury is going to, I still think it's a real probability that everyone loses and no one defamed each other. I think the headline is the strongest. I think the jury could just be like, no, she did exaggerate, but she also didn't defame you. I think that's a very real possibility here. Um, do all these people on Amber Heard's witness list have to testify? No, they choose who they call. They have to notify who they might call. They get to choose who they call. They don't have to call anyone, even if they're on the witness list. What happens if the jury believes mutual abuse happened and not just one party abusing the other? They get to decide then if the article is defamatory. They get to decide if that is Amber Heard properly being the face of domestic abuse, or if it's not fair to call yourself the face of domestic abuse, if you are also an abuser. The jury gets to decide that. Did anyone else notice Amber Heard opened and displayed a charm that was not visible until her sister took the stand? This was the first time Amber Heard fully faced the witness stand. Uh, the, uh, the necklace was noticeable when her sister took the stand. I don't remember seeing it earlier in the day. Do you think they didn't bring up the physical fight between Amber and her sister? Why do I think? Um, it might have been ruled irrelevant. It might have not had a door open for it. They might have been evidentially barred from getting it in. I would love to know the answer to that question, but I don't know why it's not coming in. Um, and if her, if they asked her sister and her sister said no, how do you fix that? Who is the other witness that you ask? And you need someone else to bring it up. How much could the jury's dislike of Amber affect the verdict? A lot. I think they have shown Johnny might be verbally abusive and not ergo defamatory, but Amber comes across as fake and awful. Again, this is where I think the headline is the hardest part. Um, the jury, the, this is where I think the jury could also split it saying, I think that this was a toxic, abusive relationship physically or not. I think this was a toxic, abusive relationship. So discount the photos, listen to the audio. And we think the jury could think this audio is enough. The throwing things is enough. The smashing stuff up is enough. It's enough. But also she's exaggerated. So she's not defamed. He's not defamed. No one is defamed. All of you go away. Still very much possibility. Very much a possibility. Uh, who told Johnny Depp to bring this case to court was a good idea. I don't know if anyone told him it was a good idea. I think he said, I am done. I am suing for defamation. This is it. Because also, I think we've seen clear evidence that Amber was abusive to him. And so he's like, it's not fair to characterize me this way. And just like Nike suing mischief over the Satan shoes, I think this case is possibly more about having this all aired out in public to clear his name in a way to show, look, this is not the story you've been told. And we're even seeing the headlines that are still kind of, he binged. 
still kind of anti-DEP. We're still seeing those headlines um, now. And I think everyone who's watching the trial, I'm now seeing on social media going, but I watched the trial though. This isn't as, this isn't exactly what you said it is. Um, it's more specific than that. And I think that might've been his goal. Just like Nike sued mischief over the freaking Satan shoes because it was their goal to have the headlines saying, hey, <laughs> these aren't our shoes. Depp has accomplished that, I think. People have seen his side of the story and that might be all he wanted. Um, if Jennifer Howell is posting on IG about the UK trial and Whitney, does that mean she can't be a live rebuttal witness anymore or Depo? Thanks. I have not seen that. I would have to look. She shouldn't be watching the trial. Um, she shouldn't be watching this trial. So if she's going to be a witness, um, if she's a deposition witness, though, that testimony is already done and that wouldn't be a problem. Question, would these witnesses be more believable if they were still her current friends and showed up in person? I don't know. It could cut both ways. Truly. It really depends on the jury. It, the jury might hear their testimony better if they're in person and kind of keep it in mind. But if they're all still friends, it's like, oh, okay. So it's his employees and her friends. Great. Them not being friends might actually, um, might actually help, you know, it's like, ugh, I don't really love it, but we rekindled like that. I don't know. That might help, but also her then trying to rekindle testimony looks bad, looks bad. So it could really be looked at a lot of different ways for the jury. How much time does Amber side have left? The court hasn't told us, or the court hasn't said the court's probably told them, but the court has not said on the record yet and probably will tomorrow at the end of the day, her description of him and his art being dark reminds me of my aunt that suffers from battered woman syndrome. And I think a lot of people with depression might also recognize the wanting to close up away from the world. Um, so thank you. David does. Should the jury pick that all of the good witnesses are from 2019 or should the jury pick up and they don't talk to Amber Heard anymore? How much of a damage they can do after Amber Heard wrecking herself? I think they can undo some of the damage. I don't know if they're going to undo all of the damage, but also I think the jury will pick up on the dates of the depositions. Can you give me a point of view that Amber Heard supporters would have feel so obviously Johnny Depp's side? I think it's good to see you care travel. I think that you can absolutely, well, you can even look at the media saying, you know, Johnny Depp might be saying he's a victim, but Amber Heard is a victim of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard being a victim of Johnny Depp, um, being a victim of Johnny Depp, it shows that she's also a victim and people aren't believing her. And why is everyone calling her all these names? And what she's been through is horrific. I think there are people that absolutely believe her, believe her friends. And they're like, this is what he did. He is, you know, when he is using, he is a monster and that's what it is. I think there are people that believe that. So I think it's uh, more nuanced than that. When depositions are played, each side submits what they want to be redacted or shown. The judge makes a ruling and then they have to edit the video of the ruling. Yes, Adam Campbell. Thank you for answering the chat. When a deposition is played, oh, we got to we got to the answer to that earlier. Um, question with peace and love. It seems like English may be her second language and she may be using the words like gash it, it, to possibly describe a scrape. It's possible. Do you think her testimony could be twisted? I ask with respect. Mia, no, that's totally fair to ask about the makeup artist that the way she's using words, um, might not mean, you know, a gash to me is like a, a bigger deal than like a scrape or a scratch. So yes. And the jury gets to evaluate that and evaluate the witness. So no, it's, it's, it's totally fair. It's completely fair. It just feels again, the photos don't match for me. Um, Shama said, currently going through undergrad degree and off to law school next. Hopefully any advice tips for the LSAT and dealing with nerves. Um, do a lot of practice, uh, get a lot of rest, take care of yourself. Self-care when you're studying is critical and don't forget to eat. Going through sugar and caffeine detox for medical stuff. Thank you for giving me something to focus on. Apple pie, that sounds awful. You are welcome. This trial has captivated all of us. Any reason that the possibility of Botox has not been mentioned yet? There's no witnesses that have brought it up. There needs to be a witness. Um, Philly D mentioned you today. Oh, that's very kind of him. He is, he has been a very generous supporter of the channel. Um, Kay Bragg, will the journal entries be entered into evidence? They already were. If so, do you think the jury will be sharp enough to do a side-by-side -side of her handwriting in the lipstick? If they're curious, they might, it might not matter. Some of that stuff that we're curious about might not matter to them. Truthfully might not matter to them. So, but they'll have it, or at least the digital things that were admitted. 
Just Kevin things. Just had time to ask. Uh, didn't Rocky's boyfriend, ex-husband, say Rocky took the same pictures that Amber's sister said she took and sent to the property manager? I think so. There was a lot of contradiction about the pictures. And he said he might have taken some too. There was a lot of contradiction about the pictures. Um, what kills me is that there are multiple photos of Amber before the Corden show, but no pictures of herself after Australia. You take picture, you take photos in different lighting with light bruising, but not after the brutal event in Australia. I think it's a very good question. I am just seeing this for the first time. <laughs> what if anything? <laughs> You're going to haunt all of our dreams. Thank you for being cheeky. Where's Bailey Sarian when we need her? I think she was on a plane today. She had tweeted about being at the airport. Um, why aren't these people, especially her other friends, testifying in court? Don't know. Can credibility be thrown out? I don't think the video depot, like the nature of the evidence gets thrown out just because of the manner of the evidence. I just think it's harder to get into a flow and I think it's harder for the jury to absorb. Grateful for awesome coverage. You're welcome. Thanks for sharing your expertise. Of course, it makes it more interesting. Today was something else. Why have we not seen Samantha McMillan, her stylist, who saw her the same day with no black eyes? Um, I don't know. Could be a rebuttal witness. Could be a tomorrow witness. Love your stream. I was abused by my ex. I'm sorry for that. Um, she had a way of getting into my head, made me feel like the worst person in the world. I could be so upset with myself that I slammed doors, et cetera. And, and I, I hear you. I mean, this relationship was not good. Just became an official law nerd. Welcome, Jillian. I mean, if you guys are here and you're subscribed and this is nerding you out, you're law nerds. So no, welcome. Thanks so much for sharing. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, have you subscribed? I mean, if you haven't subscribed, we're just, we're doing the things. Um, Emily, thank you. Do you feel that Johnny Depp has redeemed himself in the public eye? Yes. Do you think he should have lost roles over all of this? I understand why he did. It's not really for me to determine should, because that's what the movie studios are doing. And I don't know where that line is between proof in court and accusations. I don't know where it's appropriate to draw that line. I think it's something that needs a lot more discussion. Um, and when, when, when is it enough? Like when is it a Harvey Weinstein situation and when is it one accusation and should one accusation not be treated the same as many? And what is that boundary when it comes to work and things that haven't been proven out in court yet? I think the discussion needs to be had. And I think the conversation needs to be had. Um, I think it doesn't matter if he should have lost roles or not. He did. And that's why he's part of why he's in court. So um, overall, which side is this testimony better for all day to day had had points that were for both sides, which is fair from these third party witnesses that there should be things for both sides. If Depp wins this, will he be in a position to sue Disney for firing him? Um, I don't think so. I imagine that his, um, I imagine that there was some kind of a clause in his contract that allowed them to do it. Um, so, and it seemed like there were also creative differences, which is probably what they'll lean into and say. Um, so true lesson to all victims of DV from the testimony is next time when you'll be assaulted by your abuser, don't bother with getting a report from the ER, just consult your cosmetologist. I, I read that with, with cheek because I think it is meant with sarcasm, but yeah, there's the meta, the lack of medical reports I think are maybe more powerful than some of this other testimony, but we'll see. Can both sides win? No. Johnny Depp on the headline and Amber Heard on the DV stuff wasn't a hoax. No, because a lot of it was the sexual assault stuff. Um, I mean, I think it'd be really hard for both to win one with they defame the other. Is it theoretically possible? I just think it's intellectually uh, a mess to be like, oh, um, it's defamatory to him, but she didn't hoax it. I just don't, I don't see how those two would square. Um, because again, when they're finding defamation on the article, they can rely on the headline, but it's not broken down quote by quote. It's the entirety of the article or her tweet regarding the article. So I think it would be hard to win on both sides. Thank you. Thank you. I have a BA in game and art development. Number one thing we learn is that human skin has natural blue tones on, especially under the eyes. Just saying very cool. Um, AH was obsessed with JD needed to control him became more erratic as she lost control. JD's spiral into darkness and substances seemed like depression. I mean, maybe I don't doubt that. Um, no one can attest to seeing destruction and violence occur except possibly Rocky who seemed like a very weak witness. Um, I mean, nobody really saw it occur. People saw some of the aftermath and Johnny Depp testified to the aftermath 
And I think that's notable. I think the police body cam will go a long way with that. I think she was scared because she was in the wrong. I think this goes to Whitney. Why else would she be scared if she knew uh, she wasn't supposed to be? Oh, this goes to the Kim Kardashian witness. That was weird to me. It was weird that she was so terrified. It was just odd. Her testimony was a bit odd. What, what is the better way for Umber to ask questions replacing what, if anything, um, could she do yes or no? She can't always do yes or no. If she's, um, on direct examination in March, blah, blah, blah. You showed up to Sweetser. What did you see? What happened next? Who was there? Who, what, where? It doesn't have, I mean, what if anything, what if anything, what if anything, it is clearly her style of questioning, but it doesn't help. And it's what if anything, did someone say, um, still hearsay, what if anything happened? What if anything is the reason that you, you know, did this or did this or did that it, she's trying to use what if anything to fix leading questions and that's not helping. Why is everyone more emotional than Amber? I think it's something that the jury needs to consider with regard to Dr. Curry's testimony. I think her friends believed her. I think her friends were very wrapped up into this and I think her friends were scared for her. I don't think she felt the same way for herself possibly. I don't know. Or she's detached because she's in court and she's been doing this for six years and she's fucking over it. I don't know, but they were more emotional. Uh, they were, but they also weren't sitting in court. This was obviously a toxic relationship. Yep. Yeah, but why would Amber lie about the level of abuse? Do you think she just wanted to cause damage to Johnny? And again, if I had to speculate, I think there's an aspect of control here. And Johnny Depp's team has alluded to, you know, I will tell them I was abused if you try to leave me or going to get the TRO to force a divorce settlement, a monetary divorce settlement is also what they've, what they've intimated. She's saying she didn't want any money, but if she didn't want any money, why not actually donate it all? Do you think we'll see Dr. Curry returning? I hope so. I very much hope so. Please shout out my friend, Jaramillo. Jaramillo, shout out. She introduced me to your channel and I lost a week of my life catching up. Never a dull moment. Thank you. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And um, thank you, Melissa, for the super chat to shout out your friend. Amazing uh, to me, just how many people are in and out of their bedrooms. Yep. Almost like she paraded them around on purpose to show them the stage damage. I don't know. Or they were there when they were doing it together. Or she said, look at what he did. Look at all of this. Look at my life. Um, what wouldn't JD have been very stupid to want to go through all this again if his team doesn't have some sort of ace up their sleeve, I think they've had very good evidence, but he has to know this is a tough case. I think the cameras in the courtroom were the win for him. Hands down. Is anyone in the jury in the medical profession? We don't know because we haven't seen Vaudier. So we don't know. I imagine that they, the defense wouldn't want somebody in the medical profession. Why is Amber bringing every guest upstairs to their bedroom? I mean, uh, yeah. I'm from Norway. The bedroom is private. I think, I don't remember which was the, which was the one where they slept in. Were some of these in the one where they slept in three? I don't know. It's odd. I'm going to be honest. We've seen Amber biting her lip in the same spot a lot. So it's not far to jump to conclude she might've done it herself. I mean, and the jury might, uh, please don't be mad, but you said this is a young jury. This generation has mostly been raised without God in school, no Bible in courtrooms. I can't imagine they will be able to resist looking at the internet. I don't know what the, Bible and courtrooms and God in school. Carrie, I'm not mad. I just don't know what that has to do with them not being able to stay off of social media. They have a ruling from the judge. So if they appreciate the order of law, I think they should be able to stay off of social media. And I find jurors take their duty very, very seriously. Uh, does that mean everybody? No. Hey, Emily, I know these are long, hard trials for a little light. Please check Brittany's Insta post about her dad. I will. I will. I will. Um, why have they not asked any of Amber witnesses if they were afraid of eviction, if Amber got a divorce? I don't know. I think they knew that was coming question on rebuttal. Can they introduce new witnesses? Oh, we got to that one. Yes, we did. Um, your Bing face makes me happy. <laughs> should we play a Bing? Have we, we've already played one today, but should we play a Bing? Um, let's see, please. Keep, I mean, I don't know why God came into it. I just, I don't know. I think Johnny was telling her not to, not to 
telling her not to wear and roles to be in because she asked for help not to get just sex roles or not just um, sexy, vixen-y types of roles. And that's what Johnny Depp testified to. That's not what she said, but that's what Johnny said is she asked me to not not be narrowed down to this. And we heard her mocking him about, oh yeah, Mr. 21 Jump Street, sex icon, blah, 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 blah. It came up between both of them. It came up between both of them, this all like, oh, you're a sex symbol, because she mocked him about it in the audio too. And I think she didn't want to be that. She wanted to be more than a pretty face. And I think they very much taunted each other about that. How funny would it be if Dr. Curry brings muffins when she comes back? It would be fucking epic. Um, Amber may have shingles on her head and in her hairline. When my grandma had shingles, she had large open weeping sores on her scalp and some blood too. Unless they get medical evidence about that, they're not going to get to do it. The nose injury came from the time JD was uh, retaining Amber and they bumped heads. He said it didn't though. So in audio, he said, your nose isn't going to get hurt by us bumping foreheads. And he made very clear in audio and testimony that um, they bumped foreheads and that's not going to hurt her nose. So I, I, she's saying the nose came after that. He said they bumped foreheads and that doesn't make sense. Does closing come after rebuttal? Yes. Also, will Amber Heard's team be able to call witnesses for rebuttal? No, just Johnny Depp. He sued first. We need to do a bing. Phil DeFranco sent me to learn more. You're Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Uh, we're wrapping up shortly for today, but we will be, oh, we're going to try to get through some more super chats, but we will be um, back tomorrow at 9 a.m. Well, a little bit before 9 a.m. Eastern to cover tomorrow's full day of testimony. But I promised us a bing, didn't I? I said we were going to bing. We binged. We're at, where are we? We are at, gosh, we're now over 417. Y'all, law nerds, come through. Today has been unprecedented and I appreciate you. So we should celebrate. We're just gonna. Oh, it binged. Move your head. What happens to the divorce NDAs now that everything's public? I don't know. I would need to look at the specific language of the divorce NDAs. I'm sorry if this has been asked and answered. Well, Stephanie, the framing of that question is just simply delightful. But my boss expects me to work. How dare they? Have you uh, covered morals clauses and how they might make JD unhirable despite the op-ed? Um, there might be issues. I think there would be more issues with substance going forward than with morals clauses. I think there might be, I think there might be. So um, let's see, how does rebuttal work? Johnny Depp gets to call other witnesses to try to refute the evidence that came out during Amber Heard's case in chief, but only to try to refute things that came out during Amber Heard's case in chief. That who is sitting next to me in the Bing clip? The Bing clip is my husband, Dr. B, and the Bing clip is from when we hit 100K. So I see you guys asking if Runkle's going to come on. I don't know. I messaged him and let him know he was welcome. Rocky said that she, he might also be exhausted. Rocky said that she wanted to spend more time with other friends, and that's why she's not friends with Amber anymore. Makes me wonder if Amber felt abandoned um, when she got new friends. I don't know. It's possible. But also we heard from the makeup artist that this was a consuming friendship and the makeup artist kind of echoed what Dr. Curry said about the all consuming need for support. And that's kind of what they leaned into with, uh, with um, James Franco coming over. It's I needed support. And if you've known people that need to be around people all the time, it makes sense that she had all her friends living all over. I am not necessarily that person. Um, I'm okay with a little bit of alone time. Have you been looking into becoming, uh, have been looking into becoming a paralegal? What advice can you give? What type of degree or schooling is required from Tay? Um, Tay, I am not familiar, especially depending on the jurisdiction, what is required for a paralegal degree. There might be a, there might be a particular paralegal schools. I bet you the chat can help more um, than I can with that. I get asked a lot though, so I should probably look at some point, but thank you for the super chat and asking the chat. I know we've got paralegal law nerds who can probably give you some great advice. Um, Hamley, hi, RN Tyra. You're a rock star. Um, I hope I pronounced that right. Also as a medical professional and expert in my area, uh, RNCEN, I also am of the opinion that none of her images match the injuries she's testifying to have. I mean, you're definitely more educated than I am on the subject. I, um, 
I mean, I went through EMT training and worked a little bit as an EMT, uh, mostly in lifeguarding, and I played water polo. I've seen injuries and split lips and broken noses and have had injuries and all the things, but um, uh, it just doesn't match my life experience. Can you explain the tears with the acting coach? The acting coach said that Amber Heard was crying for real, which was interesting because she has trouble crying. Write it down. She has trouble crying when acting. I wrote down exactly what she said because I was fascinated by it. I need to go find where it was in which notes because we're pages and pages into my own notes. Um, Let's see. That is that. That is that. Did I highlight it? Um, I did not, it's in here somewhere. So I'm going to have to go back and find it. But she talked about, um, she said, essentially Amber Heard was crying a lot, which was interesting. Oh, ha! I do have it quoted. I'm going to highlight it too. Ironically, this is ironically, she has a little difficulty crying acting wise. Um, she is not a method actor. So her acting coach said that she has difficulty crying when she's acting, but does not have difficulty crying in, in real life. I'm an MUA and a split lip would cause lipstick to be crusty. I thought so too. Also the brand Clé de Pew has never sold a color wheel found MUA sauce. She said that she had a bruise kit and a honey colored concealer. That's what I thought. Um, Question, is metadata a must in order to prove the photos or Photoshop? I think so. Can they bring in an expert? They can, and they might bring in an expert in rebuttal. Um, as a civil litigator, I will say juries can be crazy. Yes, they will. I would never bet on an outcome. Neither would I. And I also don't like to give probabilities. I like to give what I see as strength and witnesses, but you never know. Um, you never know. You never know what people are going to do. Um, thank you. Missed my super chat question further up. I, Annie, I will get to get to it. I jumped down, but I will go look and I will Miguelina, if you will look and start, cause I'm trying to get through some of the older ones and the newer ones. I'm trying to get to both. Um, Amber's sister said that Johnny carries a pen knife in his pocket. I didn't hear pen knife. I heard pocket knife. Are they trying to say that the pen knife on the broken bed belongs to him? Love your channel. Pen knives are illegal in California. I think she said pocket knife. I don't know why that came up, but also, um, it's again, it's odd to me to describe this level of abuse and be comfortable with him having knives around odd to me. Is an attorney allowed to ask someone on the stand about someone else's testimony, i.e. how about Whitney's story? I think it was a clever question from her because it could have caught her in if she had watched the testimony and she's like, no, I didn't know that, but she knew that Isaac called her that. So, you know, Isaac called you this, but it was a cleverly phrased question, I think, to try to catch her in it. Jody, thank you so much. I subscribed just when you had 50K and now over 400K. Congrats. Where can I get this watermelon whiskey? Sending love from the Caribbean. You've got great rum in the Caribbean. Watermelon whiskey that I drink is from, oh my goodness, I'm going to be blank on names, is from Old Smoky. I don't know where you can get it. I mean, I don't know if you can get it online, but it's Old Smoky whiskey. How long do you think the depositions will take? All oh, damn day. We'll have some live testimony tomorrow. We now know that we will. Um, Annie, okay, said question. Um, would you question a witness differently on cross? First, Firstly, on how you perceive the witness, genuine or lying, or how the jury is reading the witness. That is a great question, Annie. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't grab it, but I would, it would depend on how they testify on direct. I make contemporaneous decisions. I also have a style, and I think a lot of attorneys have a style where you start your cross a certain way, and if the witness gets feisty, you might have to change your style of cross, but yes, I would also look at how the jury is reacting to the witness. If the jury very much likes a witness, I would try to make sure, even if the witness got snarky, that I didn't because the jury likes them, um, but but if not, I would, um, I would... I would be able to go a little bit harder. Sorry, my brain is actually actively working slower now. Question, will rebuttal be tomorrow? No, we're still not done with Amber Heard's case yet. Did you notice that IO didn't mention anything about JD yelling um, LGBTQ things at him? Amber Heard testified Johnny used every bad thing he could say at him over the phone. Um, I remember him bringing it. I don't remember him talking about that phone call. That phone call, he said it was about 
the poop on the bed. But I would need to go back and look at Amber's testimony juxtaposed because I just don't remember specifically. And Io, I know Io talked about it a little bit, but I don't know if he said Johnny Depp said those things to him or if he heard Depp say things like that. I don't remember. Does the jury get to take notes? Yes. Do they get to, to reference the transcripts and evidence? Yes. Or just remember everything? No. Is rejoinder the same as rebuttal? Um, I don't know how different jurisdictions use rejoinder. Rebuttal is being allowed to present other witnesses. And I would have to rack my brain for rejoinder because I have not heard anyone talk about rejoinder in so long. So rebuttal is your witnesses that come at the end of the trial. Where is the peanut butter whiskey? In my kitchen. <laughs> It's in my kitchen. So that's where the peanut butter whiskey is. Um, let's see. Did anyone see the smirk that Amber gave her team and Johnny's team when the makeup artist mentioned bruise wheel? I wish they'd proven that she had, she's had. she been coached about Milani. I mean, I, I don't I don't know if it would help. Um, as a paramedic, I always get dismissed when I get to jury duty letter. I always wonder why. Thanks for the great coverage. Because you have too much information about medical stuff. So if it's any kind of a case involving medical things, you have too much independent information. Too much information. And if it's criminal, a lot of attorneys assume that paramedics would automatically be aligned with other first responders. And so they think that they might, they might give other first responders more um, deference than others because they know how hard the job is, et cetera, or because they're friends with them, blah, blah, blah. Gross generalizations. Uh, Drew said his testimony would be different if he knew the pics had been edited. Shouldn't it be the same either way? No. Um, what was interesting to me about that, I think it was kind of a clapback where Drew was like, no, if I thought the if I thought these pics had, if these pics had been edited, I would be saying something very different. He said the pics accurately represented what he saw. So well, that's what that is. Um, did Depp admit to trashing the trailer and then apologizing for it? Yeah, he did. He talked about ripping like a light off the wall. I don't think trashing was the word he used. So can you please address the stigmatizing um, BPD in the chat is damaging? I don't think I, well, we always tell the chat not to name call, not to diagnose and all of that. So it is, oh, there's a giant turkey outside. It is regularly um, talked about. This doesn't feel like a safe space for people with BPD and PDs. We do our absolute best and the mods, I mean, I regularly get criticized for the mods regularly reminding people that we do not diagnose, we do not name call, we do not disparage or besmirch. Um, but also when we get into the hundreds of thousands of people in the chat, it becomes very hard, but we do our best because this chat is a safe space. So yes, I cried when you cried because I'm that kind of person, but Amber heard dry eyes. I can hear, I can understand that. Can Amber Heard's counsel cross during rebuttal? Yes. Uh, the normal witness procedure applies. It's just when you, when you talk about it. Um, can you bring Dr. B in to talk about being punched in the mouth like that? Another time I can. Dr. B is a maxillofacial prosthodontist. So he has seen all kinds of mouth injuries. So um, question 385, this AM 416 plus now. I mean, okay. So Dr. B has seen all kinds of mouth injuries. Um, the face and the mouth bleed and swell quite a lot. And that he would say that too. He would talk about lips being lacerated on the inside and teeth getting chipped when you get punched and things like that. Um, how can you tell a jury likes a witness? It's how do you read people that in a conversation or feel comfortable in a room? It is being able to see if they're, you know, somebody sitting like this when you're talking. It's different than somebody sitting like this when you're talking. Somebody taking notes and looking interested is different than this. So it's just interpreting different body language. Um, catching up earlier, fun fact, Laura Prepon's sister is a big law attorney. I didn't know that. I worked with her at Sidley. Sidley is big, big law back in 2004, 2005. Cool. Amber's appearance was in um, the winter. Her lip was probably cracked. Maybe. Um, both Heard and the MUA used the term bruise kit. They did. Um, that's not what bruise kits do. They're used to create bruises. It was interesting. Here, I pledge the entirety of my patient. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, thank you for the pledges. I'll take all of the pledges, all of the pledges. I'm going to get to a few more. Um, apparently Camille took pictures with the alpacas. What? That would be epic. For those of you that are like girl WTF, the alpacas had been outside that have been outside the courtroom. Um, I will absolutely go look for that. The alpacas, alpacas have been outside the courtroom. I love that Camille went and took pictures with the alpacas. That's, that's boss. Um, 
Question, why would Rocky tell her boyfriend to leave when she is entering a dangerous situation and not sure if what's going on? It was odd testimony, but I think it was true testimony. It was just odd. Um, in video depositions, are there redirects? Kind of, the sides will go back and forth. It's not as it's not as clear cut, obviously, as in court. Do you think Johnny Depp's team was happy about the Kate Moss thing because it would open the door for them to talk about Amber's ex? Maybe, and we haven't gotten to rebuttal yet. Um, what's an insurance test, Evelyn? Great question. This, I believe, was referencing a drug test to get insurance to be on Pirates 5 filming in Australia. That had come up on cross-examination. The check boxes for the drug for the insurance form where it said, I haven't used this or I haven't used that or I haven't done that. That's what came up um, in cross-examination. And so I believe they are referencing getting tested for getting drug tested so that you can get insurance to be in the movie. Um, these are large insurance policies. Did Amber Heard say if Johnny Depp removed his rings before punching her face? No. Delicate facial skin would be torn if rings hit it. It's come up a lot about the rings. It's come up a lot about the rings. So um, thank you guys for the super chats. I'm going to do a little bit of a speed run. I feel like I'm conditioned to stop listening when I hear Elaine. I wonder if the jury feels the same. They might. Could Depp's side be easy on Whitney because Depp didn't want to punish her? No. Um, that generally wouldn't be a consideration. He seemed to have a very close relationship with her. He did. I think there was a limited amount of cross and that, um, that witness wasn't being aggressive with them. It, it, there wasn't that much to catch her in. So it, it doesn't make sense to not just, not just have a conversation. Um, my GF brought me here. Shout out to Vivian. Hey, Vivian, what's up? Not Vivian Kensington, other Vivian. Will um, join the replay crew later at work listening now, but have some listeners fatigue all of us. Question M, did you see this on TMZ? It's audio from the court appearance after she was arrested in the Seattle airport, which Amber Heard um, said was not true and essentially made up by JD. Charlotte, I haven't, again, it hasn't come up in court. So reference previous answer about seeking out things that haven't come into court. What if any... <laughs> what if any words do you never want to hear again? What if any, and turd right now, um, love Emily ESQ. You are saying what the rest of us are screaming in our heads. How much damage are these depots doing? I don't, I don't see anything today as a, oh, that's bad. Everything today seemed fairly consistent with what we already know. And the punch has been taken out of these because we've already heard that testimony by Amber Heard. And I don't know if they're going to kind of change that. I think they've shifted the ball back a little bit, but again, like a tug of war, we're going back and forth over this line of, of more likely than not who of who's telling the truth. Um, so we talked about that. Does that, Oh, we talked about that. I forgot to unmark some of these so we could get to them. There were actually nine one one calls that night. Um, there were two sets of officers, Aki and Ryo. Io both called Amber Heard's team only used Io's calls. I don't know why we didn't hear Rocky's call. We didn't hear any of the audio from the calls, but the second set of officers said they didn't know if it was a second call, but they thought it was related to the first call. Who goes first in closing? Depp heard Depp. Unless the court doesn't let them do a rebuttal in closing, but they should be able to. Why no recreations? Physics, uncommon sense. There, I mean, you get recreations in some cases, accident reconstruction and things like that. It doesn't, there's nothing to recreate really in this case, except maybe the layout of the penthouses, but we're seeing those on diagrams. With some of the depots being over two and a half years old, why use them? I think more recent depots would get better info. Bonnie, I love this question. That turkey is just, sorry, I'm so distracted by the turkey outside my window. I still can't get over there's wild turkeys where I live and I'm, I, you know, I'm still fairly a Tennessee noob, but um, no, I don't think recent depots would be better because they're farther away in time from the incident. So I actually like that we have these closer in time to when things happen. We're talking about things from 2015, 2016. So I rather have a 2019 depot than a 2022 depot. And I don't think there's any reason to update it. Um, heck, not a good party unless something gets spilled. That's fair. Magnums of wine, apparently. Um, so let's see. I'm sorry if this has been asked. Can you, oh, tell the jury, we talked about that. Third attempt. I'm sorry if they bring in Jennifer during rebuttal. Could she testify about what Whitney told her about Amber Heard or is that hearsay? Um, it is specific impeachment of a prior inconsistent statement. 
So if Whitney said, I'm lying, it's an inconsistent statement. But if it's like what Whitney said that Amber said is going to get a little trickier legally. But if it's Whitney said, oh, I didn't see this, it's a prior inconsistent statement. If there's something that she knows that's a prior inconsistent statement of um, a prior inconsistent statement of Amber's, she can testify to that too. But it's the multiple levels of hearsay that might be a problem. But if there's an exception for all of them, it might come in as prior inconsistent statements. Can't wait for your next Nashville meetup, me neither. Um, with the depositions, obviously there's no cross. How does counsel cross-examine them? There is there is cross. So it depends on the side that the both sides do questioning. So in all those depots, there were two different attorneys doing questioning. Whoever calls the depot does the more open-ended questions and whoever doesn't does the more closed-ended questions, but it's not as drastic in court. So there is cross-examination. Both sides get to question. Earlier, you mentioned that JD's team may not have taken steps to protect, may have taken steps to protect his kids from being subpoenaed. How can you protect someone from being subpoenaed? Well, if nobody can subpoena them, if they don't know where they are, if they can't physically serve them, they can't be subpoenaed, or they might have agreed that that evidence isn't coming in um, with the other side. They may have made agreements so that they would not be subpoenaed. Do you think she separated from friends in order to make their testimonies more credible? I don't know. Like they're no longer loyal, but still telling the truth. Um, Anything's possible. That'd be thinking very far ahead. I would think she would want support, but it's uh, anything is possible. Um, so we talked about that. Wouldn't a sibling do everything they can to get their sister away from sexual violence? I think they're going to argue that in, they set up the groundwork to argue that in closing. And that's why they didn't get into it much more. Um, if I owned all of these, I would go through any door how I wanted. Do you notice Whitney couldn't even look at her sister, yet she was fine to look at Johnny? It's true, and I don't know if the jury will notice that much. It was the only live witness today. Ah, oh, thank you, Twitter. The Twitters. The Twitters have shown things. Uh, Camille Cross Boss Vasquez is apparently out here with the alpacas outside of court. So it looks like the alpacas were brought to court. Um, this is one of the other lawyers on the team. This is a lot of people that want to take photos with Camille Vasquez as she's trying to leave work. That must be a very surreal day leaving work. Um, is, is she on FaceTime? That must be a very surreal day leaving work. Um, when you have that many people outside a courthouse that looked like Ben Chu out there too, right there. Um, that's a very surreal day leaving work. The I've left courthouses with press, not press for me, but like when Lindsay Lohan was at my courthouse and stuff like that, it's, it's very surreal. It's very, it's, it's surreal. Question, what do you think is the statistical probability? I already answered why I don't answer. <laughs> oh, this is from way earlier in the day. Lindsay Nesbitt Emily, can you please give a shout out to my lady crew, the Cheese Destroyers? Lindsay, this is the greatest lady crew ever. I'm jealous. I need my friends to get at it because we also are cheese destroyers. We are all watching you from different cities and chatting about it. Congrats on the subs today. You deserve it, girl. Y'all, I will let you know I have cheese for after this. And it is, I've got like a, oh, is it a truffle Gouda? I think the truffle Gouda is in there. It's so delicious. So also a cheese destroyer. Hopefully I can be honorary. I'm I'm asking for that to happen. Does the defense have this depot edited? They take, whoever offers it has to do the physical editing. The court decides the objections. Do you think Whitney was an obligatory witness? Um, would have looked horrible if her own sister didn't come, especially after she mentioned her so much. I think so. I don't know if it helped though, because Whitney's account of the staircase incident was so different. It was so different. Can Amber Heard's team control how the depots are cut? I addressed that earlier. Um, the court rules on the objections and the sides have to agree on how the depots get edited. So that's how that gets handled. Um... Have you ever seen a victim of abuse being sarcastic and laughing at the abuser? It's not something that I've seen. Um, a, the, some of the audios are tough and they go, I think uh, some of the audios are tough. In your opinion, is there a difference between quality of legal representation? Are we seeing a lot of money gets you versus a lot of money gets you or what a lot of money gets you versus what a lot of, I think these are both highly paid legal teams. I think we're seeing what a client that's cooperative Maybe it's different than a client who wants you to do things. I think some of this might be a client issue. I also think it's styles. Uh, Elaine has seemed very disorganized and that might be all because of client. I really didn't like seeing Elaine going, you don't look amazing again. It really pissed me the fuck off. I thought it was, I thought it was kind of appalling. Isn't MRSA contagious? I am not a medical expert. It was in his finger. He had surgery. 
Didn't someone say wine wasn't his drink of choice? Uh, all the people that know him said wine wasn't his drink of choice. That's all the people who knew him said wine was not his drink that he drank like whiskey and liquor. Everyone who knew. Can Vasquez ask a straight question? Like if the op-ed, is it about Mr. Depp? Who's it about? She asked and it was about Depp and others. We saw that. Let's see. Chanley Painter from Court TV has told us what's coming tomorrow. Thank you, Chanley Painter from Court TV. Um, Amber Heard's next witnesses in no particular order will include police expert Adam, uh, social media forensic expert Ron. That's going to go to damages. Amber's former attorney, Michelle, um, by deposition, Ellen Barkin. There we go. Um, Johnny Depp's former agent, Tracy Jacobs. Depp's former business manager, Bruce Whitman. Adam Waldman. What? The video deposition of Adam Waldman will be coming in. So they might not need to call Depp. I, I'm. This is an interesting lineup for tomorrow. Y'all stay tuned. Tomorrow's going to be feisty. The police expert, I expect, based on opening, opening statement, will say that these police should have made an arrest, that it's ridiculous that they didn't. You know how I feel about that. I'm not going to get back into it, but I'll be interested to see what the police expert has to say. And if this is someone who is an expert in policing or a former officer, social media forensic expert is going to talk, I think, about this smear campaign that we've heard about and about this media campaign and about the damage to Amber Heard's reputation because she has a counterclaim. Amber's former attorney is the one who said Johnny Depp was screaming at her and calling her a bitch. That's what we heard in opening statement. Ellen Barkin is a former um, former partner of Depp's, um, former agent. I don't know what they're going to testify to. Former business manager, I think, was present at some of these things. Adam Waldman, with regard to the statements, I don't know about Bruce Whitkin. So there we go. Thanks, Court TV. Um so also with all of this, you guys, I am, uh, I'm going to have to wrap up soon. So just so you know, if, if you chat now, I don't know if I will get to it because A, my voice is starting to go and B, I'm going to have to go check in. I want to see all the things and do a wrap up. Rebuttal May 27th. No, closing arguments are May 27th. It's going to be my favorite day. Closing is my favorite. I have got to throat sweat. My throat is killing me. I, I hate opening my giant mouth. It's like, ah, ah, do you think Camille is aware of how crazy the internet is about her? Um, I'm sure people, I, if you're like Camille's mom or sister or dad or bestie or husband or whatever, aren't you texting her being like, OMFG, Twitter fucking loves you. I mean, I think the people in her life are probably telling her that. I think she probably celebrated having some really boss days at work. I still like calling her Camille cross boss Vasquez. Um, she was great. And I can't imagine that the people that she interacts with are not telling her. And I imagine, um, I imagine that we will see, uh, that we will see, no, not that we will see. I imagine that people will be telling her. I imagine that the amount of people that are coming up to her after court will indicate to her. And I imagine that there is someone on their legal team monitoring social media about all of this. If that's you, hello, we're a big fan of Camille cross boss Vasquez over here what if any attorneys on Amber Heard's team are we fans of? I mean, Rottenborn has had some moments and baby Rottenborn did ask about his cat searching for Google trends. And that was a moment question from the AM. When Drew said that he was a domestic abuse survivor, does he mean from Rocky? He did not say he did not say at all. He did not say question. Did you see Bailey Sarian congratulated you on Twitter? I did. And I fangirl died. And I'm trying to like keep my cool. Every time I see the chat, true story. Every time I see the chat, um, every time I see the chat, I see, you know, people saying hi to Bailey. It always makes me a little nervous because I enjoy her videos so much. I'm such a fangirl and it kills me. Um, Sarah said, why ignore me as BPD? We shouldn't. Um, we are valid, have lots of insight just as lawyers for the law side. We're the inside track to accuracy and breaking stigmas, not trying to be confrontational, but we have a voice. I think you do too. Um, I'm not sure what it is regarding Sarah. I don't think you should be ignored. Um, I know there was a super chat earlier saying don't stigmatize BPD, but I don't also think that means don't discuss it. We asked the chat not to speculate, not to um, diagnose, not to do things like that. We've never told people they can't share their own experiences. Possible outcomes if there's a hung jury. I can't imagine they would do this again. I can't imagine they would do this again. So yes, tomorrow looks more like a counterclaim day. Regarding money for different teams, divorce attorney I know says part of a good client control is weeding out uncontrollable potential clients. Toss, that's true. I imagine that's harder when they're celebrities. 
We saw it in like Michael Jackson's case with his doctor. There, it can be hard to say no to celebrities. And, 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 um, I imagine like we saw Dr. Curry say, and like we saw in the James Corden clip, I imagine that Amber Heard can be amazingly charming and sweet and beautiful. And I imagine that her legal team could have been taken in as well with, this is a powerful man doing this to me. I don't have an island. I don't have all the money in the world. All I have is my reputation, which are the talking points we have heard from multiple witnesses. I don't have everything he has. He is lying about me. I need you to help me. I am a victim. Will you help me? I imagine that her team got very much involved. It's interesting, though, where that then goes, um, because once you get into trial, things can be different. Um, so do you think Johnny's fans in and outside the courtroom will be considered by the jury with respect to their verdict? It shouldn't be. And I imagine I wonder if the jury's leaving out of underground or things like that. It shouldn't it shouldn't be. But if the jury sees them reacting in court, it can be a problem, either good or bad. Because if they believe Amber Heard, it's like, see, this is exactly what Amber Heard said, society protecting him and siding with him. If they don't believe Amber Heard, then it's like, see, people are seeing what's happening here. So I think it cuts both ways. The longer this goes on, the more it seems like Amber is gaslighting and playing victim. I, I mean, we're going to see what the jury thinks. Although I find Amber's version of events questionable, I really feel awful for victims that have to face this kind of cross. Anyone that has to face this kind of cross, it is not easy. Um, though if her statements, it if her statements were consistent, the cross wouldn't have been quite the same. Watching from France, great job, merci, thank you. Um, the the TMZ moment for me, it was just like it was just Dakota Johnson to play Camille. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not good at casting. Shelly saves the day. Hey friend, thank you so much. Good to see you. Why is Waldman a witness? Didn't Amber not like him? Waldman's a witness because he's the one that made the statements in the counterclaim, so he has to come in. Enough support for Vega Cecilia. Enough support for Vega Cecilia with your truffle cheese. New Zealand grows great truffles. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I, I, could I get New Zealand truffle cheese at, at my local store? LB, they nicknamed her Camille Goddess of Thunder. I only go bites. They nicknamed her Camille Goddess of Thunder. I think that's fair. I called her cross boss, but apparently Disney's dropping She Hulk. I talked about it yesterday on Instagram. I'm like, we just had like the She Hulkiest moment um, in in court, and then Disney is dropping ads for She Hulk yesterday. It's crazy. Um, is it true David Chain is being accused of SA? This is the PR guy that mysteriously deleted all of his Twitter account or all of his social media accounts. His website went mostly down his LinkedIn was gone and he's no longer in court but I saw that on house and habit so I have seen these things rolling around social media and then I saw his response to the things rolling around social media it wasn't it it wasn't a flood of things but the response was very large question sorry if you've answered it but I read Amber Heard's lawyers can't quit now no, they can't quit now don't stop me now. No, there's nowhere they can go. How so? Can't they claim she lied to them? Uh, <laughs> they needed to sort that out before they entered the trial. Even if they tried to quit, they need the judge's permission to be allowed to recuse themselves or remove themselves from the case. And that's not going to happen. Question, did you see popcorn? What? No, I've been doing this all day. Um, also, CEG earlier answer about things that are shown to the jury and things that are not shown to the jury. Um, why are they allowed to use depots from 2019? Couldn't they have redone them? Maybe not. Not if the witnesses are unavailable. Also, it's closer in time. I don't have a problem with it. Where did you get your coffee mega pint? It is listed in my Amazon Amazon shop. One like it. The one I actually have is a um, is a collab with Starbucks and Stanley. But I have some listed in my Amazon shop. It's listed down below. Adam, can I be your co-host? Well, you know, I don't. I haven't co-hosted, but I feel like you're my co-host in the chat. You're welcome to continue doing that. But thank you. Um, I Do I play well with others? It depends. But if we do, like a judge duty of influencer court, we will be looking for people to bring in. Your legal coverage has always been my go-to even before Depp v. Heard, but now I'm watching you 24-7. Thanks for what you do. We're all going to miss each other very much when this trial's over and I'm not streaming every single day. Either that or you're going to push me to streaming every day and then I don't know what we're going to do. We will have no time to do anything else. What did Judge A mean with what, if anything, is not 
is not a cure-all when responding to Elaine. Also, why do you call her Umbridge? Well, if you've seen Harry Potter, she feels like Umbridge to me. Um, what if anything is not a cure-all? Meaning you can't just ask a question, get an objection, get it sustained, meaning that's not the right question, and then say, what if anything, and ask the same fucking question again. It doesn't fix it. Um, oh, Zendaya for Camille. I like that. Uh, Clay to Pew, honey, would be way too dark for Amber's skin tone. Karen, thank you. That's what the makeup artist said. Is Johnny Depp's team able to bring in a behavioral expert to testify why Johnny Depp's action may be reactionary DV? Um, at this point, I don't think they will. They had Dr. Hughes, and they might rely on some of Dr. Hughes' testimony about reactionary DV. It's intimidating to be on the stand with your abuser right there in front of you. Yes, it is. Um, and oftentimes, you will see people testify with their heads down because of that. Can a judge accept a majority verdict? Oh, no, it's it can't be. Um, Virginia needs a, a unanimous verdict for this. Um, think this will lead to a retrial in the UK? No, all the appeals have already been denied. It doesn't mean there can't be investigations into whether she lied about the donations, but all of the appeals are exhausted. It is done. Couldn't Depp's lawyers bring forward the letter that she wrote after Whitney's testimony in the UK? Um, a letter is not subject to cross-examination, so not easily. I think they would need her as a witness or her with a depot. I wanted to say thanks for being supportive of people who may be triggered. Your presence is comforting and helps me calm down. You're welcome. Things trigger me too. And there ha these are important topics, but also it shouldn't be at the expense of your own well-being. If you check out the end of the court stream again, you can see part of the jury box at the left. The jurors have their own screens to review evidence. Cool. I served as a juror in FFX County. Awesome. I didn't see it, but great. Thank you for the info. Because if you served there, you would know. I just hadn't seen that. We don't see the jury box often, but I'll look. Can Amber Heard be called back to the stand by Johnny Depp's lawyers during rebuttal? I don't know why they would. Hello from Oregon. Uh, you're my 6 a.m. wake up call because court starts early. I don't know why they would. I mean, could they in theory? Yes. I don't know why they would. You see the cut. Uh, Josh testifies of Amber. No, because it's not in court yet. So I haven't. Emily G. Baker, full-time law streamer. I, we'll see. We'll see. How will the trial outcome affect Amber Heard's countersuit? It's happening right now. So the jury will decide her countersuit in court now. Um, when Elaine mocked John, when Elaine mocked Johnny, that may have revealed why Amber chose her. It very well might have. Oh, and Jay. Hey, friend. Thank you. Today's been today's been busy. Question: Is the jury sequestered? No. Um, third attempt. I haven't watched the entire trial, but why aren't the bulk of the witnesses from production companies who fired JD post op ed? Um, because they brought in their experts to do it and that's how they're choosing to present the evidence. I don't know. I imagine that the companies would distance themselves and bring in a lot of other reasons and muddy the waters. That's what I imagine. So Megan, I'm sorry if I didn't get to that earlier. I have absolutely tried. TBH, these ladies are on fire. The genius and wit from Camille, Dr. Curry, and you. Oh, thank you. Um, even damn Elaine for comic relief. She Yesterday, Elaine was all of us when she was sitting there going, I'm trying, Your Honor. It's like, oh, girl. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. Um, oh, girl. Um, JCT, I am not casting anyone, but I liked the suggestion of Zendaya. So, yes, I think she should be played by... Um, by someone who who is a POC because that would be appropriate. Did you notice the stylist said exactly what Amber's sister said about EH's birthday roundtable talk? It was exact. I did notice. It was exact. Um, I got a Fairfax County jury summons a couple of months ago but wasn't called in. What are the odds it was for this case? I mean, they would have gone out a few months ago for this case. So it's possible. They would have called out a lot of juries. A lot of jurors. Why do you think Whitney seemed more comfortable on cross? I don't know. She did seem more comfortable on cross. I just don't know why. Um, they are using his substance abuse as the reason he allegedly abused her. But my father was stone cold sober every time he hit my mother. And I think that is a common experience. They are trying to use, they are trying to say that the substance is the problem. But when he was good, he was good. And that's why she didn't leave there. That is the narrative going on. Have you ever had a client lie to you and, um, do not find out until court. <sighs> no. Um, and I had, because I was a DA for my trial work, it was not clients. It was victims and witnesses. 
I had people leave things out that came out well in court. And you're just like, it's funny you didn't mention any of that, but um, you don't have depots. You have witness statements and that is it. So, all right, I'm going to do two more super chats and then we are going to bounce by two. I mean, a few more. Will they ever question Amber Heard on the bruise Elon Musk had? No, they won't. It's not relevant to this case and it's not relevant to the defamation. So no, they won't. Honest question. So what is a contemporaneous matter of fact statement on the video deposition with the man on November 19th, 2019? Um, it sounded like collusion. What does that mean? I, I, Jonathan, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know what happened through those time periods. Um, but a, um, a spontaneous statement of fact or a spontaneous utterance is one thing, but these are all different exceptions to hearsay. But I don't know what happened at that particular timestamp, so I cannot answer. It has been a very long day. Um, can we send some purple hearts to the people here with PP? Of course you can. Of course you can. How come no one asked Whitney about teaching Johnny to snort coke with a tampon applicator? I think it was probably best they left that alone and argue it and cross. It was odd. Um, I protected my abuser. So complicated. I don't believe Amber heard, and my heart breaks that this may stop other real victims from speaking out. Tango, tango. I hope not. Um, domestic SA is a very, very hard thing to prosecute. It is hard to educate jurors about. And I hope the conversations around this case help open people up to the possibility that even though what we're seeing here might not be um, accurate and there's conversations, that this is something that happens. And hopefully it just brings awareness that this happens, that it's not okay, that sexual violence can happen between spouses and it's not okay. Um, Shared watching your cover with my daughter the other day. She asked for the link to your channel. Well, fantastic. Thank you. I love seeing all the purple hearts. Um, from your future co-host, what are your hair colors so we can color coordinate? <laughs> purple right now with some blue and some pink, but it needs to be redone. We're getting we're getting a little faded. Question, have you seen Jennifer Howell? Um, no. And I answered, I answered why earlier, but we'll see if that comes in. I'm going to do two of our earlier super chats that I missed. I tried to get to you guys. I'm never going to get to all of them. I try. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Amber's team scared of what she might say, rushing her off possible, or they can only get into that little bit. Um, will she get questioned by depth team today? We got into all of that question. Been keeping up to date with all your coverage. Does Elaine fumbling hurt Amber Heard's case with the jury? It could hurt her. It could help. The jury could feel bad for her. So it could hurt her. It could help. Um, it really, 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 really just depends. So with that, let Jury may have been more attentive because they forgot how the body cap showed because his words do contradict. Oh, the body cam, the words contradict the body cam. Yeah. And that'll come out in closing. Why is there a double standard that Johnny is the monster when he drinks on drugs, but when Amber drinks two bottles of wine a day, it's okay. I think that is for the jury to decide. And it goes along with some of the other things that we've seen in this case, doesn't it? With um, what Dr. Curry said. And, or it's going to be like, well, she's going to say, I don't have a substance abuse problem. He does. He changes when he does these things. And I don't, which is possible too, that that is her, um, her position. Long time listener, first time caller, love your stream and channel with my husband, who is an attorney editor at Reuters. I've told him I'll basically, I've basically gone to law school now without the debt. I feel that way for all of us. I feel that way for all of us. All right, y'all. I am a at the end of my voice, but B at the end of the day. Tracy, thank you for the super chat. Amber Heard tore up the house, scratched her own face, and took pictures only of your abuse when it was clear that Johnny Depp was um, divorcing her. No witnesses to anything, just her word. We will see. Again, we will see what the jury believes. I will be doing a summary on social media um, at the Emily D. Baker, and we will absolutely, uh, I will try to do my, I try to do my quick summaries over on TikTok and on Instagram. I will be back here tomorrow morning at 7.50 a.m. It looks like we have a busy, busy day. Replay crew, love you. Appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Chat, thank you for being here. Lawnards, thank you for being here. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And like Judge A says at the end of the day, be sure to get some rest. We've got a busy day tomorrow. And with that, I will see you in the morning. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.